Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts. Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference. Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. Chapter 111, Chapter 111 The party of four set out to investigate and traverse the cave now flooded with seawater. Harry noticed the cave had changed a bit over the years as it seemed bigger and there were even more tunnels around. He did wonder how those tunnels came to be but in the end, he supposed that it must have been a monster trying to burrow or make some sort of home for itself. Still, all of these new tunnels could compromise the structure of the cave so he kept a close eye as he followed both Harry and Lily deeper into the cave along with Jessica. Lily was at the front with Era behind her as they both walked a bit ahead of both adults of their party. Lily kept a close eye on everything happening around her and the sea monster roaming about. Eventually, they reached a big chamber and Lily noticed right away a bunch of chests spread around the place. She smiled knowing that there was probably something useful in them. Though she tilted her head and seemed lost in thought for a few seconds, the group waited for her to get her thoughts together which she did a few seconds later. The little princess of Drodane turned her head towards Harry Papa Harry. Do you know where the treasure that we find in chests comes from? I asked mommy and daddy before but they didn't know. Harry chuckled and smiled at Lilia. Ah, your mom asked the same question before and to be honest at the time I didn't have a clue. I even searched all over the world once for answers to that question but I've never found it. Lily frowned and sighed but Harry patted her head causing her to look up at her godfather who continued speaking but that was then. Now that I have far more abilities I can see divine power coming from those chests. I think the goddess of this world creates those chests and leaves things inside them to help heroes though some are human-made and only have things that were stored in them. Jessica hummed and crossed her arms I see. I've always wondered where some of these chests came from but it makes sense that the goddess is the one putting them there, especially how we found some in some places where there's no way other humans got there. Era brightly smiled ah. The goddess of this world must be really nice I even heard that it's thanks to her power that the church can do everything it does I wanted to meet her. Dash. In heaven. A young-looking goddess was looking down towards the mortal realm, and having heard Era's praises made her blush though she still had a happy smile on her face. She had been surprised when one of her heroes had returned and even more so when he had reached a realm of power and station way above hers but she was glad to see that her little dragon hero was still as kind as ever he's a little rough around the edges but the little dragon has grown into a fine man. The goddess smiled happily to see how much that small and skinny boy she saw traveling her world had grown. Dash. Lily scratched her head and awkwardly giggled I guess I should visit the church more often and say thank you to the goddess. Mom is never going to let me live it down though. Harry chuckled in amusement, after that little talk both girls continue forward, a bunch of Kalamari kids attacked the girls but they quickly took them down with physical strength alone. Punching and whacking over their heads with a staff seemed very effective ways to deal with such monsters, though the girls did have to be careful when fighting the man no wars. Despite looking like they belong to the slime family of monsters the fact is that they're sea monsters and very dangerous one that have a habit of breathing a paralyzing breath attack. Despite being very agile the close space and the fact that these monsters attacked in hordes made it a bit difficult for the girls to fully dodge their attacks. Lily in fact was hit and paralyzed a couple of times and left floating in the water unable to move forcing Eric to stop attacking and chase Lily's floating body before it drifted away. Though Harry and Jessica found it funny how Lily would be yelling at the monsters for being cheaters as her paralyzed body slowly floated away in the water. But eventually, the girls were able to reach the chests and look inside, Harry and Lily obtained some very basic but useful items like a chimera wing, an item that can teleport you to the last town you visited, a great item to have in case of emergency. Some herbs that Lily was planning to take to her granny Tsunade and even a leather hat that Lily put on with a smile on her face since it was the first piece of gear she ever found. Harry smiled at the girls as they had fun and eventually reached the second level of the cave where the whole area was completely flooded. Lily looked down at the water with a frown how can we continue on? The water is too deep and we can't really fight monsters underwater. Jessica grinned don't worry, there are magic spells that can help with situations like these. 
just give me a second Jessica closed her eyes and began to chant a long spell. Once she was done everyone's body glowed blue for a few seconds, Lily looked around her body in awe. What was that Auntie Jessica? Jessica grinned it's a spell that helps with water exploration, it allows you to breath underwater and move around as if you were on the surface. Era was already taking notes so she could go look for this spell in the library and learn it later, Lily was awed at such a useful spell that's amazing. I don't think I've ever heard of such a useful spell before. Harry smiled at his goddaughter that's because it's a magic spell from my world, yokai use it when they have to do something underwater though it is a very common spell that it's used by other races. Lily looked very excited about the notion of a spell from another world, she had of course heard about it before but it was still amazing for her nonetheless do you think I can learn magic from another world too? Harry nodded sure you can, after our little trip around the world of light I'll give you a few useful perks and skills and take you to the Potter household. There you can use the library and learn anything you want plus if you need instructions all you have to do is ask someone and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to teach you. Lily looked rather excited and happily nodded. She then suddenly jumped into the water, Harry sweat dripped but then chuckled geez. She's like my dear, no sense of danger or caution whatsoever. Dash. In Castle Trodane, my dear was happily humming a tune while writing something for her next book, Hiro was with her smiling as he watched her work. Suddenly my dear sneezed surprising Hiro, my dear looked up and her eyebrows twitched in annoyance I don't know why but I feel like Harry said something rude about me. Hiro grinned, even now Harry is the only one who can make the prim and proper Medea act like her kid's self and he wasn't even in the castle anymore, still, it was funny to see his wife act like that. Dash. Everyone followed Lily's lead and jumped into the water and found Lily fighting two big abyss divers, which surprised Harry and Jessica quite a bit. Air immediately took off to join Lily in her fight, the little princess of Trodane blocked a swipe from the marine dragon's clawed flipper with her shield but the force of the attack pushed her back. Lily grunted and stabbed her sword into the ground to stop herself from sliding back, suddenly the abyss divers were blasted away a bit by a blast of mana coming from Era's staff. Era walked up to Lily's side are you okay Lily? Lily nodded and stood up straight yeah. They just caught me off guard a bit, I really didn't expect to find dragon type monsters in this cave. Era turned her head towards the monsters who roared in anger I can't use fire or lighting magic underwater much less ice or explosion magic since they would be dampened by the water or we might hurt ourselves. Lily nodded already having thought about that what are you going to do? Those are the only elemental magics that we can use. Era smiled at Lily from this world that is, don't worry I can use other types of magic just be careful, we both know that dragons cannot be underestimated. Lily nodded in agreement okay. The princess of Trodane took her off running while Lara swung her staff above her head and then slammed the tip on the ground as she began to chant her roar of the earth, bring forth the fangs of the mighty dragon. Ground Dasher. The abyss dragons were suddenly assaulted by a big number of sharp rock stalagmites that burst out from underneath them, the spell caused massive damage to the marine dragons and distracted them so that Lily could finish them off. Lily reached the abyss divers with her sword glowing orange, she jumped up and came down in front of one of the abyss divers with a strong downward slash while yelling out her attack dragon slash. The attack was very effective against the abyss dragon and was cut in half, the monster vanished in wisps of light a few seconds later while Lily immediately launched herself towards the other abyss diver, her sword once again lit up with orange energy. She reached the Abyss Dragon who was reeling in pain from Era's Earth spell in a matter of seconds and before it could even blink Lily lashed out with her attack dragon slash. This time she swung her attack at the neck of the Abyss Diver whose head was instantly cut off and sent flying, the monster vanished in wisps of light before its head could even touch the ground. Lily landed on her feet and stood at the ready while looking around for more monsters, once she made sure that there were none left she relaxed, Era walked up to her and fist pump in victory. Lily grinned and also fist pumped as well, Harry and Jessica smiled at them happy that they were working as a team despite having just met a few days ago. Harry however frowned and looked around I didn't expect high level monsters and dragon types much less to be roaming around in here. Jessica nodded something very serious is going on in this cave, you didn't notice anything weird back when you first came here? Harry shook his head no, not really. But even if there was anything weird going on back then I don't think I would have noticed. I wasn't as powerful nor did I have the many skill I do now though, I always thought it was weird a merman found its way in here. Jessica frowned a merman? Oh. You mean that merman that got hit by Calder Asher's magic crystal ball right? Harry nodded back then I didn't think much about it but how did a sea monster like a merman find its way in here? 
This is a freshwater cave and even more so with a waterfall it's named after in here. Jessica crossed her arms now that you mentioned it does seem strange. You don't think this cave connects to the sea, do you? We're pretty far from any seawater after all. Harry hummed that's the only explanation I can think of and it would explain how monsters like abyss dragons got in here Harry turned his face towards Jessica we can't leave things like this, this could become a bigger problem than we thought. Jessica nodded yeah, no one on this continent is powerful enough to deal with these types of monsters except Hiro and Medea. Harry turned to look at the girls who were excitedly talking with each other and smiled for now let's trust the girls to handle this, we will step in if it gets too crazy. Jessica nodded, sure she was a bit concerned with what was going on right now but she knew she could trust the girls to handle it for now and so the party of four took off to continue to investigate. The group traversed the now underwater cave with relative ease and luckily they didn't find any other monsters like the abyss divers but there were big numbers of other smaller types of monsters. Era's wide area of effect magic spells came in handy and Lily focused on taking out any single monsters that either avoided the spells or weren't reached by them. Though Harry did notice that he would have to teach Lily some more techniques to widen her skill set and some wide area of effect or multi-target skills to help her with big groups. Eventually, the group reached a fork in the tunnel, Harry knowing there was a chest in the tunnel to the left told the girls about it and they excitedly headed down the tunnel right away to the amusement of Harry and Jessica. At the end of the, the tunnel, they found an exit and once they walked out of it they reached a big chamber of sorts that was completely flooded with seawater and in front of them, they found a chest. Lily walked up to it and opened it to see what they can find inside. She giggled when she found the copper sword and showed it to Era who giggled as well. She didn't need the sword anymore but decided to keep it as a souvenir. After that, they walked back into the tunnel and headed to the other side until they found a set of stairs leading down. Both Harry and Jessica felt a dark presence below and frowned. Era felt it as well and stopped Lily from walking down. Wait, there's something strong down there Lily. Lily stopped and turned her head towards Zuri. Really? Lily turned her head back towards the staircase leading down and frowned you think we can handle it, or should we let Papa Harry and Auntie Jessica have at it? Era hummed as she thought about it, Harry and Jessica, however, were really proud that Lily was smart enough to consider her options but then again she is the princess of Drodane so she has to be level headed. Era turned her ruby red eyes towards Lily and smiled I think we can handle it but we need some preparations and a bit of backup as well, just in case. Lily tilted her head and watched as Ari took out her phone and summoned her Digimon partners to her side with it, the Naraman immediately began to hop around, the cheerful Naraman spoke up oh, hey Ari, want some help Tilda? The calm Naraman smiled up at her will be more than happy to help in any way Ari. Ari smiled and nodded at her partners yes, down these stairs Ari pointed down towards the bottom of the stairs and the Naraman looked down as she continued speaking there's a strong monster so I need you to fight in the front lines with Lily and help her. The Naraman nodded and then turned towards Lily to give her a big smile. Lily smiled back at them I'm counting on you guys. The Digimon hopped around while cheering. Era giggled alright, alright settle down guys. Now let me get us prepared before we jumped in. Both Naraman stood to Lily's sides and nodded. Era then pointed her staff towards Lily and the Naraman Shalaga, Protekka, Hastiga, Bravery, Faith apostrophe tilde. Lily and the Naraman's bodies lit up in different colors for a few seconds, Era smiled and nodded okay this will give you 3 a boost but it's temporary so keep that in mind, this is only a precaution just in case we get ambushed or something like that okay? Lily and the Naraman nodded, after that everyone then walked down the stairs while being fully alert for anything that might be waiting for them at the end of this cave. Dash. Once they reached the bottom of the flooded cavern and walked forwards they found a massive chamber and inside they witnessed how some sort of barrier was creating some sort of air bubble inside. They sensed an evil and dark presence nearby as well, they could barely sense it before but they can clearly feel it now and it was very obvious that some very powerful and evil was waiting for the party but this didn't deter Lily nor Eric. Both wanted to resolve this and even though they just found out about this situation by chance they still wanted to help. It was obvious that if things were left as they were the town of Felbury would eventually be flooded not only by seawater but by also very powerful monsters and that's something the girls couldn't ignore. So Lily and the Naraman walked forward and through the barrier that was creating an air bubble followed next by Eric, Harry, and Jessica. As soon as Lily walked through the barrier she saw a very big and muscular merman sitting on a throne made of stone. The monster had its eyes closed and was holding some sort of bladed staff weapon in its hands. Era frowned the moment she saw the monster and instantly knew that this one wasn't like the other monsters they faced before, 
In fact to her this monster felt like a floor boss from the natural dungeon back at Neo Kyoto and that made this situation a rather dangerous one. Jessica tilted her head in confusion, she'd never seen a monster like the one before them and she was pretty sure she had seen them all, she turned her head towards Harry I don't think we've seen a monster like this one before right? It even feels different. Harry nodded yeah. This monster is known as Gracos, a very ancient and powerful monster, in terms of power I would say he's high end ultimate rank, or in this world, he's at least a rank A monster. Jessica raised an eyebrow that's a rank below Dilmagus in his demon form. How did a monster this dangerous arrive here unnoticed? The monster suddenly spoke surprising everyone the dark power of the one known as Raftorn awakened me but by the time I recovered from my slumber he had already been slayed. So I hid in here and patiently began to flood this cave, soon my influence and power will grow and flood this world. I will become the next demon lord and plunge this world into despair. Gracos opened his eyes and glared at the party, Lily frowned and pointed her Dragovian god sword at him we won't let you. We'll stop you and end your plans here and now. The Gracos frowned and what could a small child possibly hope to be able to do to me? I've been alive since before even your great grandfathers were born. Gracos then stood up from his throne and began to float in the air with its magic alone, Lily glared at the monster I'm Lily. The princess of Trodane. And I won't let you destroy my world. Lily then took off running towards the Gracos as fast as she could, the monster's eyes widen in surprise at the speed Lily used but it was still able to react fast enough to parry the downward slash sent his way by Lily. The Gracos twirled its bladed bow limb around Lily's sword as he parried her slash and then flung her to the side using her momentum, but Lily twirled in midair and landed on her feet. Before the Gracos could continue its attack he was suddenly attacked by the cheerful Naraman who jumped and whipped her tail at the monster's face atomic bomber tail. But the Gracos dodged it quickly by moving its head away as the cheerful Naraman's tail cracked in the air. Gracos swung its massive fist to punch the cheerful Naraman, but her sister, the serious Naraman, jumped and whipped her tail at the Gracos's wrist just in time. Atomic bomber tail. The monster's arm was slapped away from the cheerful Naraman with a loud crack from the serious Naraman's attack. Eri took advantage of the opening and pointed her staff at the Gracos' Kazwushin. A blast of sharp wind emerged from beneath the Gracos, the monster growled in pain but then swung its bladed pole and dissipated the wind, only to be slashed in the back by Lily who had taken advantage of Gracos being distracted. The monster grunted but then began to twirl its bladed pole above its head and created a sandstorm forcing Lily and the Naraman to jump away and cover their faces to avoid getting blinded by the sand. Era frowned and then took out her wand, she then waved it and then flicked it in the direction of the sand turning it into flower petals, Gracos growled in confusion while Era called out to Lily and her Digimon partners guys, go. Lily and the Naraman uncovered their eyes and saw that there was no more sand, Lily raised her sword above her head and it began to glow with light while the Naraman launched themselves toward Gracos. The sea monster was forced to block a barrage of tail whip attacks with his bladed pole while Lily then ran forward as fast as she could until she arrived in front of Gracos and unleashed her holy light attack bright splitter. Lily swung her Dragovian god sword in a wide duck and hit Gracos with a light elemental energy wave in the chest pushing it back a bit. The Naraman then jumped up and lashed out with a twin atomic bomber tail that hit Graco in the face since he was still reeling from Lily's attack but Gracos recovered quickly and swung at the Naraman with its weapon. Lily appeared in front of them with her shield and blocked the attack. But the attack itself was strong enough to send Lily and the Naraman flying back, Era's eyes widened in worry guys. She was about to run and attack the Gracos while they recovered but her daddy's voice stopped her mind step Eri, you can help Lily and the Naraman but you have to trust them and believe in them, remember sweetie a Digimon can only show its true power when its partnered human synchronizes with them. Era turned her head towards her daddy and stared into his eyes while Harry smiled at her. She then took out her phone and stared at the Digivis app, all right. Naraman. We can do it, come on. The Naraman who were on the floor quickly rolled upwards and as they heard Era's voice both of their eyes widen as they felt Era's trust and love for them. Lily sat up and rubbed her head in pain while the Gracos got ready to attack them. But the Naraman's body suddenly exploded with light forcing both Gracos and Lily to cover their eyes though Lily gasped having heard of this from her mom and dad. Her godfather's Digimon partner Doyuman was pretty famous around the kingdom of Trodane so everyone knew about Digivolution so Lily grinned in excitement yeah. Go guys. Play Digimon Ghost Game Evolution theme song, First Riders. Both Naraman suddenly called out from within of light Naraman Dig Evolved to. Era's smartphone began to vibrate with energy as zeros and ones began to flow out of it. Meanwhile, both Naraman were suddenly engulfed in an egg of energy which pulsated once before cracking and then shattering. 
Once the eggs of energy exploded outwards they revealed both Digimon to everyone but they now looked completely different from their previous forms. One was now a white green puppy with a golden holy ring on its neck while the other looked like a guinea pig with bat-like ears, the puppy Digimon let out a cute bark lemon. The purple guinea pig-like Digimon mischievously giggled and flapped its bat-like ears Tsuka Iman. Both Digimon stood proudly in front of Lily and stared down at Krakos who uncovered his eyes and looked rather confused at what happened, Tsuka Iman grinned and decided to go on the offensive let's you block this you big oaf, purple haze. Tsuka Iman took a big breath and then breathed out a deep purple colored poisonous fog towards Gracos who swung his bladed pole to disperse it but it was too thick and the poisonous fog ended up hitting Gracos who began to hack and gasp for air. Suleiman then smiled and nodded good job sister it's my turn now. Gracos growled and launched itself toward the Digimon in fury but Suleiman took a big breath and let out a loud howl puppy howling. Gracos stopped moving halfway from reaching the Digimon and seemed to be struggling to move, Tsuka Iman turned her head towards Lily hurry. It won't hold him down for long so give him a good wallop. Lily grinned and then jumped to her feet and raised her sword up which lit up with flames, the little princess then jumped up towards Gracos and came down while slashing her sword in a wide duck down towards the paralyzed monster flame slash. Unable to move or dodge, Grago took the attack full on, and as soon as Lily's sword slashed his entire body, the monster was then engulfed in a spiraling pillar of flames. Grago let out a roar of pain, Lily, Tsuka Iman, and Suleiman jumped back while Lera pointed her staff at the now flailing and screaming monster Kafrizzle. Mana coalesced on the tip of Era's staff into a massive fireball that fired forward soon after toward Grago's. The massive fireball sailed through the air until it crashed against Gracos and violently exploded engulfing the sea monster in even more flames, Gracos was even sent flying back and crashing against his stone throne. Lily wasted no time and took off running at full speed with her sword pointing forward, Gracos groaned and sat up but before he could even do anything Lily appeared in front of him in a blur and stabbed her Dragovian god sword straight into his chest. Gracos let out a shocked gasp of pain and then glared at Lily, he then tried to reach over and claw her face but Suleiman appeared out of nowhere and head butted Gracos's claw away from Lily. Tsuka Iman then appeared above Lily's head flying with her bat wing ears and fired a small fireball at Gracos's face causing the monster to growl in pain, Tsuka Iman then yelled out at Lily quickly finish the oaf off. Lily growled and then gathered her mana and transferred it into her sword, the blade lit up with energy and Gracos roared in pain as the energy began to destroy him from the inside out. Lily then twisted her Dragovian god sword causing Gracos to roar again but then he froze mid-roar and twitched once before exploding in a massive storm of light wisps signaling its defeat. Lily sighed and then fell on her butt breathing hard, Suleiman sat on her hunches and sighed well. He was tough, that's for sure. Tsuka Iman grinned and floated down into the ground ha 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 take that. It didn't have a chance against Torsamas. Lily giggled at Tsuka Iman while Suleiman sighed and shook her head sister. That was intense, not fun. Tsuka Iman just widely smiled at her sister, Era suddenly ran towards her friends and hugged all three of them we did it. Lily, Tsuka Iman, and Suleiman smiled and hugged Era back while the party of four cheered for their victory but suddenly the ground began to shake alerting the girls and Digimon. Then they saw all the water begin to drop and leave the cave until it finally lowered all the way down the massive chamber, Lily and Dara looked around in awe not knowing what was happening. Until Harry's voice called out from behind them without Gracos's evil influence the seawater couldn't maintain its rise and so everything went back as it should be, good job girls you saved the continent from a boss type monster, one that was known as the fiend of the seas in ancient times. Harry smiled at the girls as they blushed from his praises, the dragon god then turned his head and smiled at the Digimon and congratulations on reaching your rookie forms. Both Digimon smiled at Harry proud that they had reached a new level of power, Jessica walked up to Harry's side and smiled at the girls now that all of this is resolved how about we go back outside and re. But she was suddenly cut off when Ari and Lily's bellies growled causing both girls to blush in embarrassment while Harry chuckled, Jessica grinned and then put her hands on her hips but first let's have dinner shall we? But the girls groaned in embarrassment as the Digimon, Harry, and Jessica laughed a bit much to their dismay. Dash. In February watching the whole thing was a smiling Valentina, her father sighed and shook his head causing Valentina to giggle see? I told you we didn't have to worry. Called a Russia huffed right, right you were correct with your prediction, still you have to admit that things could have gone sideways with a monster of that caliber out and about. Valentina nodded yeah but I saw in my vision how a little witch, a little princess knight. A light, and a darkness would save us all and defeat Gracos and as you saw, it happened as I predicted. 
called her Asha grinned and nodded well you certainly have become an extraordinary fortune teller Valentina. Valentina smiled just like my father Tilda. Both father and daughter shared a laugh and then decided to go to sleep, tomorrow was another busy day in February after all. Dash. By the time everyone made it out of the cave, it was already getting dark so they decided to camp out and so everyone worked together to get everything ready. Harry set up the magic tent he had brought with him while Jessica was preparing dinner, Lily was digging a hole for the campfire while Larry went to look for firewood with Tsuka Iman and Suleiman. After about half an hour or so they had everything ready and as Jessica cooked Harry, Lily, and Ariel on with Tsuka Iman and Suleiman talked about their fight with Gracos. According to her daddy, Era came to learn that Gracos had the potential to reach a level of power a demon lord of this world can obtain and that made it extremely dangerous. Lily scratched her head confused as to why her godfather would trust them to handle it when he could have dealt with it himself and probably very easily especially since it was a very dangerous situation, to begin with. Harry smiled at Lily and explained how he wanted to give them a chance to grow and learn, Gracos was powerful but he knew that she and Dera were more than enough to handle him. In fact, he confessed that Lily was already more powerful than her dad Hiro was by the end of their adventures and that what she needed the most right now was experience. Of course, the little princess of Trodane was shocked to learn this but was also excited about the fact that she had gotten so strong on her own, her godfather smiled and nodded at her. He then told her that she should be proud of the strength she had obtained from her hard word, that even if she was a dragon knight she still had to have put in the effort to learn and train. Hearing that from her godfather made Lily very happy, after their little talk Jessica began to serve the stew she had made and everyone enjoyed a family dinner among the stars. Chapter 112 Chapter 112 Harry woke up early in the morning and got off his bed in the magical tent they had brought with them for this trip, he looked to his side and saw Jessica still sleeping so he grabbed his smartphone from his inventory and checked the time. It was almost time for dawn so he decided to get up and prepare breakfast for everyone since they would be waking up soon enough and so he gently got up from the bed, careful not to awaken Jessica, and walked out of their room. He first went to check on the girls and went to Era's room first. He found her still soundly asleep with both Suleiman and Tsuka Iman peacefully sleeping with her. He found it funny to see Tsuka Iman sleeping on top of Vera's face while Suleiman was on top of Vera's belly, Harry smiled and shook his head in amusement and then left to check on Lily. He found his goddaughter sleeping sideways on her bed with her head hanging off the edge of her mattress, Harry raised an eyebrow in amusement but still walked up to her and gently moved her so she could be comfortable in her bed. He wasn't surprised both girls were still sleeping, yesterday was a very exciting day for them and Lily had used a lot of energy, she's still not used to prolonged fights and Krakos was definitely a tough opponent. So Harry left the little princess of Trodane to her sleep and rest and headed out of the magical tent to start with breakfast, not feeling like cooking he decided to make some sandwiches for everyone, and by the time he was almost done Jessica had already come out of the tent. She saw Harry making breakfast outside and smiled morning love. You woke up pretty early today, huh? Harry turned his head towards Jessica and gave her a smile. He then nodded I figured we could start heading towards Alexandria early and reach it by noon though I figure we should let the girls sleep a little bit more. Jessica nodded and walked up to Harry's side they must be tired with all the fighting and walking they did or at least Lily is, I'm sure Air is already used to all of this. Harry nodded true but since she helped both Suleiman and Tsuka Iman dig evolve yesterday she must be a little tired as well. Jessica tilted her head they're progressing rather quickly huh? It's completely different from Doruman back when we met, she took quite a while to dig evolve. Harry hummed and nodded well I didn't have a digivus back then and was still pretty new to the whole Digimon tamer thing, apparently Digimon do grow that fast as long as the conditions are met. Jessica nodded in understanding while she took a sandwich and began to eat, do you know how Gracos was able to do all that? I don't think anyone would have noticed, it was lucky that Lily wanted to check the waterfall cave. Harry sighed I've been thinking about it since last night, you remember how Raftorn would fly around in his massive form all over the place before we defeated him? Jessica frowned and looked down yeah I remember. It was rather annoying to chase him all over the place, it was only thanks to Impira that we were able to catch up to Raftorn. Harry sighed and scratched his head while he was letting out massive amounts of dark energy all over the place so whenever Gracos must have been hibernating must have gotten a blast of that dark energy and revived him. Still I read stories about him in the Dragovian archives and the fact that he was alive all of this time is quite disconcerting. Jessica frowned as she chewed on her sandwich you don't think there could be more of these ancient monsters hiding or roaming about right? 
I honestly don't know, I haven't sensed anything so far but then again I didn't sense Krakos until we were really close to Waterfall Cave so they might be able to cloak themselves. I already sent a Shadow Clone back to Drodane to let Hyro know about this. I'm sure he'll spread the word around the rest of the kingdoms and our friends to keep an eye open. Jessica nodded I guess all we can do for now is wait. You don't think there's anything to worry about right? Otherwise you would have been trying harder to find them if they're out there. Harry smiled at Jessica the goddess in this world is very active so if there was something to really worry about she would have already begun to do something about it besides we're now connected to this world so we can come help anytime it's needed plus if there are any more ancient monsters like Gracos they'll provide very good experience for our demigod children and the girls plus my students need a challenge once in a while. Jessica grinned at Harry in amusement I see, you're already thinking ahead then but are there any real powerful monsters? Gracos was tough sure but he was at best ultimate rank in power, any of your students could have defeated him. Harry hummed well Gracos at best was just a general in the army of demon lord Zoma so he wasn't exactly the toughest but there were some very powerful monsters in ancient times, some even reached super devil or god ranks, and don't get me started on the demon lords as well, some of those guys were truly terrifying. Jessica nodded and then tiled her head makes you wonder how they were taken down. To think humans fought them and defeated them, I still remember our fight against Raftorn and it was single-handedly the toughest fight we had back then. We almost didn't make it. I remember as well, we only defeated him because we had each other, all of us fought with everything we had at the time, Yangus, Red, Angelo, Hiro, you, and I went past our limits and fought with everything we had and more, that's how I think those ancient heroes defeated the demon lords of old. They must have had help and friends that fought with them. Jessica looked up at the sky and hummed I see. That does make sense, what were those demon lords you keep talking about? Harry closed his eyes, Zoma, Dragonlord, Malroth. Those are some of the most known and powerful demon lords in this world, each one engulfed the world with darkness and brought nothing but destruction and death. They also almost succeeded in fulfilling their desires for destroying humanity. Jessica turned her head towards Harry I see, and I bet there's even more too. Could they return somehow? Harry opened his eyes and stared into Jessica's I want to say no but we both have seen how absurd the world can be, so who knows but. Harry turned his gaze toward the entrance of their magical tent and smiled as soon as both a smiling Eri and a still sleepy Lily stepped out of the tent, Jessica followed Harry's gaze and smiled when she saw the girls walk up to them while Harry then finished his sentence but we can trust the future to the next generation, after all, they will soon be far more powerful than any hero to have ever lived. Jessica nodded and brightly smiled at Harry as Lily who was still sleepy demanded a hug and to be picked up to eat which Harry happily did for her, it was amusing to see Lily act like a spoiled princess and even funnier when it only happens when she's sleepy. And so the party of four and two Digimon had breakfast and began to talk about their upcoming trip to Alexandria and after finishing eating they all cleaned up and packed everything to continue on their way. Dash. The trip to Alexandria was easy compared with what the girls experienced yesterday and was actually pretty fun for them as they were able to run around and explore as much as they wanted. Er even found some chests in the meadows and plains of the Fairbury region. They only had gold and a cypress stick but it was free loot nonetheless and Derry thought it was fun, eventually. They reached the bridge connecting the Fairbury region to Alexandria's. The monsters in this area were definitely different and it came as a surprise to Lily who had never seen these types of monsters, she eagerly fought them to learn more about them along with Eri. Monsters like the Drachmage were annoying since these green bat-like monsters were very nimble and could easily dodge physical attacks plus they could also use magic. Not that they were a threat to the girls but it did force them to change tactics a bit. So Lily switched to using offensive magic while Lara made sure to cover her since the Dragmages conceal one's magic for a while but these new types of monsters weren't the only ones that forced the girls to switch tactics. The fencing foxes caught them completely off guard with their dancing like skills, skills that had all kinds of effects that not even Era was immune to, they often found themselves forcibly dancing much to their embarrassment. However, the fencing foxes learned that it was not a good idea to embarrass a lady the hard way because Eri and Lily went on a rampage on the poor monsters. The only other type of monster that had the girls being more careful were the hammerhoods. These little guys had a habit of increasing their power so the girls had to switch to high-speed attacks and techniques to quickly deal with them. But other than that they didn't have any difficulties and they learned a very valuable lesson on not underestimating an enemy no matter how silly and weak they might seem. Eventually. The party reached Alexandria and both Harry and Jessica seemed very happy to finally reach their old home, many of the townspeople recognized him and Jessica and immediately rushed to talk to them. 
Harry and Jessica spent some time speaking and saying hi to everyone but eventually had to move on since they still had one person to see, one that was due some explanations and so Harry, Jessica, Eric and Lily headed to Jessica's home. They didn't even have to reach the door because Jessica's mom Rosalind was already waiting for them outside her home, she still looked stern as always but had a small soft smile on her face. Jessica brightly smiled and took off running, once she was in front of her mom she hugged her causing Rosalind to smile and hug her daughter back Jessica it's good to have you back home. Jessica nodded on her mother's shoulder it's good to be home and I'm sorry I disappeared on you mom. Rosalind smiled and shook her head it's okay, I knew that you were with Harry the moment you disappeared, now let me have a look at you. Jessica let go of her mother and then took a step back, Rosalind grabbed her daughter's face and gave her a warm smile you look younger and very happy. Jessica happily nodded, Rosalind then looked to her side and raised an eyebrow at Harry there you are, it seems like I have to thank you for kidnapping my daughter rather than scold you, Harry. Harry sheepishly smiled and then walked up to Rosalind who let go of Jessica and gave him a hug welcome home Harry, it's very nice to see you here again. Harry chuckled and hugged Rosalind tightly since this woman had taken care of him when he lived in Alexandria for a few years a long time ago it's good to be back. Rosalind then looked behind Harry and noticed Harry and Lily, she recognized the young princess of Trodane of course since she had met her a while ago when she and her daughter went to visit the young king and queen of Trodane and it seems like Lily recognized her because she was waving at her. But the other little girl beside her who is wearing an adorable red witch's hat looked at her with a tilted head and a confused expression, Rosalind raised an eyebrow and the little girl suddenly smiled at her and waved as well. Harry noticed who Rosalind was staring at and decided to introduce her Rosalind. This is Ara Potter she's my daughter and your granddaughter as well. Rosalind's eyes widen in surprise she then turned her head towards Jessica who only grinned and nodded at her yup that's my daughter too. Rosalind looked so lost and confused that it made both Harry and Jessica laugh at her expression. Rosalind sighed and shook her head alright you hooligans let's go inside so you can explain yourselves. Rosalind then turned to Ari and gave her a warm and kind smile please don't turn out like your daddy and mommy sweetie. I can barely handle the both of them. Era giggled and then walked up to Rosalind and grabbed her hand, Rosalind smiled at her granddaughter and began to walk into the Albert mansion with Eric excitedly speaking to her new grandma. Lily grabbed Harry's hand and with that done Harry and Jessica followed Rosalind into the mansion with grins on their faces since they knew that it was too late since Eric often enough acted as wild as them. Dash. Rosalind took everyone to the living quarters and there Harry told her of everything that had been going on with him, the worlds he's seen and everything else. Rosalind was very surprised and impressed and even though she still had a stern expression on her face there was a glimmer of worry for Harry after everything he had experienced and lived through. Harry of course noticed and let her know that he was okay and very happy now and that despite having lived through a lot he wouldn't change anything about his journey. This calmed Rosalind's worries and thus they continued to talk about anything and everything while Lara enjoyed sitting on her new grandmother's lap, Lily having heard this before opted to take a nap beside Harry. Rosalind sighed and began to run her fingers through Eris white hair what a life you've lived Harry. But at least you're happy. Harry nodded it had its ups and downs but it has been a whole adventure, now though all I care about is protecting my family and loved ones. Rosalind smiled and nodded you've been like this since you were a kid, still I'm surprised Jessica decided to join a harem, she doesn't like to share after all and she had always been very jealous when it comes to you. Jessica blushed and pouted at her mom well the others are so nice and caring that it was hard to say no. Besides it's hard to blame them for falling in love with Harry plus it's apparently normal in the supernatural world. Rosalind giggled as long as you're happy Jessica, you always did want a big family and now you have it. Jessica smiled and nodded to her mother, she can't ever deny that she was very happy with her life and loves everyone in their family which Rosalind noticed. The matriarch of the Albert family could see the happiness in her daughter's eyes and she couldn't be any happier for Jessica. Of course, she knew that Harry would always take care of and love her so she was happy with this entire situation. Plus they made her a grandmother and isn't that a big surprise, Rosalind looked down at the adorable little girl in her lap and she couldn't help but smile, now she couldn't wait to meet the rest of her grandchildren. It made her feel giddy with excitement so what's next? Harry smiled and began to explain his plans we'll stay in Alexandria for a couple of days so you can spend time with Jessica and the girls. Meanwhile, I'll create a portal in this house connect it to our home so you can visit and meet the rest of the family anytime time you want. A soft smile appeared on Rosalind's face as she nodded at Harry who continued to explain then we'll go to Simpleton and visit Angelo see how he's doing after that we'll go to Pickham and see if we can find Yangus and Red before I have to go back, I still have a few things coming up in about a week. 
I'm so lucky I can manipulate time otherwise I wouldn't have time to do all of this. Jessica, Eric, Lily, and Rosalind giggle at Harry's expression while the poor dragon god just sighed and then grins at them and so they all stay talking about many things with Rosalind for the rest of the day. Dash. The next two days had Harry working in the portal while Rosalind spent time with Jessica, Eric, and Lily, they did all kinds of things though most of them weren't of Jessica's liking, she still did them because Eric and Lily seemed to be having fun. Things like going shopping for dresses, having tea parties, or even being taught proper ladylike behavior. Lily as the princess of Drodane was used to stuff like this and didn't mind it much, she might be a very powerful dragon knight capable of fighting powerful monsters but even she liked wearing dresses and looking cute once in a while. For Eric, this was a new experience since she hadn't worn such pretty dresses like the one Rosalind bought for her nor gone to a real tea party before so this was all very fun, and acting like a proper lady was something she seemed to find entertaining. Jessica just deadpanned at it all not believing such adventurous and powerful little girls would like things like this but to each their own she supposed, though she could do without being dragged into all of this. Rosalind was very happy at the moment and had a lot of fun with Eri and Lily despite her daughter being a stick in the mud she even convinced Harry to join the tea parties much to Jessica's confusion. The fact that Harry behaved like a proper gentleman just made her eyebrow twitch, she keeps forgetting that despite everything Harry is still a lord and knows how to behave in events like these. Still, she was glad her mom was happy and smiling as much as she is, hopefully, she'll get to smile even more once she meets the rest of her crazy and chaotic family. Two days after Harry finished the portal and then led Rosalind to the Potter household where she got to meet the family, Harry then left the Albert matriarch there to get to know her new grandchildren and extended family while he, Eric, Lily, and Jessica continued their journey. Harry was glad that Rosalind seemed very happy to meet everyone especially Hope and Morgan who immediately won her heart with their cuteness and friendly demeanor. After Harry came back the party of four immediately set out since they didn't have much time left since Harry had to go back to Kyoto to deal with the Greek gods and Artemis when they arrive. Still, with a little bit of time manipulation, Harry was able to slow the time in his world so he would be able to do everything he wanted in this one, once they returned he'll synchronize the time flow once he goes back to his world. Dash. The first stop in their journey is Port Prospect on the south of Alexandria which was not that far, so they all followed the road leading there while the girls continued to deal with the monsters. Eventually, they reached a place that left the girls in awe, as they were close to the beach hence why they were going to a port, Lily and Dara were happy to have found a big and long beach. Both girls took off running towards the beach and stopped to admire the sea, Lily has never seen the ocean or a beach before so she was in awe at how pretty it all seemed to her. Era brightly smiled as she watched the ocean and closed her eyes as she enjoyed the breeze, this world was so pretty and colorful that it was quickly becoming one of Era's favorites, and was already thinking of coming here someday with Hope and Morgan to have an adventure with Lily. Harry and Jessica walked up to the girls and smiled at how happy and excited they seemed to see the sea, Jessica grinned and stared out into the ocean I never get tired of this part of my continent. Harry nodded we used to come here all the time to practice our spells or to just have fun in the water. Jessica nodded and smiled at the memories of the little adventures she used to have with Harry when they used to be kids, they would always get scolded by her mom but it was very fun to get into trouble with Harry. Wanting to let the girls enjoy the beach the group decided to walk the length of the beach towards Port Prospect something that Harry and Lily were very thankful for and so they all enjoyed a walk on the beach. Not even the many sea monsters could ruin this for Harry and Lily who now that they had faced monsters like these in the waterfall cave didn't have any difficulties defeating them. This is how it went for the small party until they finally reached Port Prospect and once again the girls were filled with excitement at being able to be in a new place. Neither Lily nor Era had ever seen a port before and once inside they ran all over the place looking at everything and everywhere with excitement clear in their eyes, the many people going about their day and the shop clerks smiled at the adorable girls running around and asking questions to everyone. Harry and Jessica let them do whatever they wanted while still keeping an eye on them, they both laughed when Eri and Lily found a young girl selling herbs and then proceeded to buy all her stock with the gold they had gotten from the monsters they have killed. The poor girl was so stunned and surprised when they did so but Harry thinks they felt bad for her because she wasn't selling much and decided to buy all her stock. The herb girl was even more surprised when Eri took off her witch's hat and proceeded to dump all the herbs she just bought inside and then put her hat back on leaving a stunned herb selling girl just standing there gaping. Harry laughed finding all of this funny, the girls then continued their little exploration of the small port town with Jessica and Harry quietly following them. They even jumped down a well on Harry's advice and found a chest and a friendly man o' war who waved a tentacle at them, inside the chest they found a mini medal. 
At first, they were confused about the small coin-like token but Harry explained that these little metals were actually very sought after, that in this world on an island in the middle of the continents there's a castle with a princess inside. This princess collects the many medals and she's always willing to exchange some for items and even weapons and armor, Arya and Lily thought the whole thing fun since it seemed like a scavenger hunt. So Arya took the mini medal and put it in her hat, maybe she'll find some more later but for now, she'll keep a close eye out for them. After that, the girls went to visit the lighthouse and climbed to the top where they were able to see the whole ocean and enjoy the view, both of them were awed and stared at it for quite a while. Eventually, they had to move on and so Harry told the girls that they were taking a ferry to Peregrine Key, and the girls were over the moon with the fact that they get to go on a ferry something that both of them hadn't had a chance to do before. And so the group went to the bay and paid for tickets to take a ferry to Peregrine Key, once on the ferry the girls had fun watching all the sailors do their work. They even went to the captain and bombarded him with questions, it was a good thing the captain is a good and friendly fellow and was more than happy to answer the girls' questions about sailing on a ship and his travels on the seas. The captain eventually had to get to work and the girls happily let him go and then proceed to explore the ship and even climbed all the way up the spot a nest and looked out into the ocean. Everyone on board the ferry was enjoying the girls' antics and just watched them run all over the place, Harry and Jessica just smiled content that the girls were enjoying themselves a lot. But as any sailor who has sailed the seas of this world can tell you, that danger was always at every corner and this proved to be true when monsters suddenly attacked the ship. A massive blue squid emerged from the sea and wrapped its tentacles around the ship causing panic among the passengers and the sailors, the captain growled as he watched the massive monster begin to squeeze the ship. The king squid then growled and monsters began to jump out from the sea into the ship, the sailors got ready for a big fight seeing some very dangerous monsters on the ship. Monsters like Octavian pirates, murkings, and even sirens, truly terrifying monsters that no sailor would ever want to find facing off against. The captain was at a loss on what to do since this attack had come out of nowhere and as he watched the humanoid octopus-like monster known as an Octavian pirate get its harpoon ready to attack the passenger all he could do is close his eye not wanting to see the death of a passenger. But then a voice caught everyone by surprise except Jessica and Harry who just smiled, Everyone looked up toward the voice and watched as Lily was dropped down from the bird's nest with her sword at the ready take this. Thunder slash. Lily's Dragovian god sword lit up with electricity that danced around the blades as she dropped she slashed the Octavian pirate with her technique. The monster was cut in half as a boom and a cracker echoed throughout the ship, the monster instantly exploded into wisps of light and Lily immediately continued her attack. Training with her godfather has taught her many things and among them was to always keep in motion and so the little princess of Trodane twirled her sword and took off running towards a group of murkings, the sirens snapped out their shock and began to cast spells towards Lily. But from the sky they were suddenly bombarded by fireballs, which stopped them mid-casting and killed them off. Meanwhile Lily reached the murkings and immediately attacked. She quickly cut off the head of the closest one and at this point, the murkings snapped out of their stunned states, one of them tried to claw at Lily but she lowered her body, and her being pretty small caused the murkings to miss her entirely. Lily now below and in front of the murking bisected the monster with a quick slash to its belly and before the murking could disappear Lily jumped up and used its head as a platform to kick off and bash another murking with her shield while the one she had bisected exploded in wisps of light. Harry smiled looks like she's improving a lot. Jessica nodded she is, your dynamic style seems to be perfect for her and the fact that she's learning so fast is amazing. By this point, the monsters were now panicking since they were not expecting a fight much less being taken down like flies, but they didn't get to even ponder too much as Arya appeared flying on her broom around the ship and smiling. She then pointed her staff at the massive king squid and began to gather her mana let go will you, Cassidor. On the tip of Arya's staff. A small fireball formed and Eri then waved her staff unleashing a massive wave of flames that hit the massive king squid's face causing it to screech in pain. Lily was running in zigzags around the monsters and cutting them so fast that all they could see is a blur, Lily smiled, happy to see that she was becoming faster and stronger thanks to her godfather's training and all the fighting she has been doing lately. She then saw a group of Octavian pirates rush at her. It looked like they can see her move so Lily took a big breath and then breathed out an orange blast of fog that hit the monsters. The monster twitched and then fell down paralyzed by Lily's new technique, burning breath a dragon technique that causes paralysis, this one is one of the many dragon techniques her godfather taught her. Seeing that the Octavian pirates couldn't move the sailors immediately rushed forward and began to stab and slash at the monsters until they began to burst into wisps of light. Lily smiled at them and the sailors gave her a thumbs up causing her to giggle, 
She then turned to look at the king's squid which was the only monster left on board, and was angrily glaring at everyone in both pain and anger. The massive monster lifted four of its tentacles into the air and then proceeded to try and smash Lily with them but the little princess of Trodane brought her sword close to her hand which began to glow with wind magic. Lily then ran her hand over her sword which began to glow white and let out wind all around her, she then waved her sword towards the incoming tentacles as hard as she could wind sickles. Massive crescent moon shape waves of wind rushed forward from Lily's sword and sliced the tentacles apart into many pieces, this forced the kinsquid to let go of the ship and roar in pain. Era seeing and opening waved her staff and the seawater around the king's squid suddenly exploded outwards and out from its depths massive dragons made out of water wrapped the king's squid tightly preventing it from escaping or attacking while Lily changed the position of her sword into a backward hold and began to charge her magic into her Dragovian god sword. This was the first time she would be using the Avan Strash with her new sword and she immediately felt the difference. The sword let her mana flow so smoother compared to her old copper sword and she wasn't getting hit by the backlash either. So with a smile on her face, she got ready to use her strongest technique take this. Lily took off running and then jumped off the ship towards the king's squid and as soon as she got close to the massive sea monster she let loose her attack of Anstrash. The little princess of Trodane slashed at the king's squid as hard as she could and as soon as she hit the monster with her technique the king's squid was not only cut in half but blasted apart by the mana in the sword. But that wasn't all her technique did. It actually released a massive wave of energy that hit the ocean and split it in half much to Lily and the rest of the people watching the fight's shock. Lily then began to fall towards the sea but Eria arrived just in time and caught her while flying on her broom. Lily excitedly hugged Eria. Did you see that? I cut the sea. Eria looked down and saw the massive cut in the sea begin to get filled with water again and nodded to Lily up I saw that it was amazing Lily. Lily then looked at her hand and happily smiled when she saw that there was no damage or burns. She then closed her hand and tightened her fist time getting stronger. Era smiled at her friend and nodded. She then took them back to the ship where the passengers, the ship's crew, and the captain were gaping at them but the girls ignored that and instead looked at Harry and smiled when they saw the proud look and smile on his face. Their journey is only halfway done and they're already getting into so many adventures and learning a lot, both young girls couldn't wait to see what else they will see in this world. Chapter 113, Chapter 113 the rest of the way to Peregrine Key was a quiet affair with the passengers and the ship's crew was still quite stunned at what the girls were capable of, but both Lily and Dara were in too much of a good mood to notice or even care. Lily especially since she was able to use the advanced rash without her hand and arm taking damage or her sword being destroyed so she was very happy right now. Harry was of course proud of them and happy that what he had taught Lily came in handy so soon, still, he was going to have to help her fully master the advanced rash. She could already do a lot of damage with it and she hasn't even mastered the last step and technique to be able to make full use of the powerful sword technique. According to Lily she has mastered the earth slash and wave slash but has difficulty mastering the last technique known as air slash which is why Harry taught her how to use air sickles with her sword which in principle, the two techniques were similar enough that she would eventually learn how to use the air slash. Still, air slash is the most difficult of the techniques to master, from what he had learned of the technique when he read about it in the Dragovian Sanctuary Archives is that it's a sword coup de grace of the Avant sword style and is the legendary evil repelling air slash, a sword technique that represents aura of light and control that can cut through the unseen and be able to distinguish presences which can destroy an opponent's weak point. This sword technique is more effective against monsters that are created by evil magic-like monsters of the material family such as the Cannabox or living statues. It's the most difficult sword technique to master because they can't see the enemy's evil nature, the only way to do that is to see through the mind's eye and feel the fighting spirit of the surroundings and shoot through this with the fighting spirit of light. Something that Lily has no idea how to even begin to learn, luckily for her Harry has quite a few sensory skills and perks he can teach her, in fact, he had already begun to teach her how to sense ki- But Lily being a young excitable girl has a hard time learning these types of techniques but Harry knew that all he needs is patience and she will eventually learn either by training or by herself in a desperate situation. For now, though he will continue to try and help her get the technique mastered and increase her skill set, she already was learning a lot so far and she keeps on learning at a fast rate as well. Even Jessica was surprised at how fast she was picking up spells and techniques but Harry had the suspicion that it was because Lily is a dragon knight that she was able to pick up skills and magic so fast. Right now Era was teaching her how to fly with magic and Harry was impressed that Lily was already floating around the ship, sure she was wobbly but she was quick to fix her balance while in midair. Eventually, 
The ferry arrived in Peregrine Key and the girls immediately rushed out of the ferry to go around the small port town. The first thing they saw was a market and they decided to check it out with both Harry and Jessica following them close behind. The girls found all kinds of interesting things for sale in the market and used some of the gold they got from killing monsters to buy some things. Hera bought a pair of slime earrings for both herself and Lily. She found them very cute and decided to get them and matching pair for her friends. Both of them put them on right away and seemed to like the earrings quite a bit. They continued for a while checking everything that caught their attention but eventually, Harry told them they had to move on and so the party of four headed to the roads of the Mela region towards Simpleton where Angela has opened an orphanage. So the group left Peregrine Key with smiles on their faces, along the way the girls fought new types of monsters that Lily hadn't seen before, monsters like the she-slime who was an orange-colored smile. Era got curious as to how do people know it say she and picked one up and began to look all over it to see if she can find any indication that it was female. The poor slime was left traumatized and left as fast as she could as soon as Era let it go. Still, some of the monsters the girls faced were funny to them like the Dingarling which is a bell-like monster. The girls liked hitting it with Lily's shield or Era's staff because of the noise it would make when struck. They even fought a dragon-type monster known as Jargon, a heavy-set dragon monster that specializes in sleep magic and blinding its enemies with the sand they carry in the jars. Though those abilities didn't help them much against the girls who had no qualms about blasting them with massive spells or very powerful sword techniques, Harry certainly felt a little bad for his fellow dragons. Still, the road trip towards Simpleton was easy and pretty relaxing and the girls were able to mostly enjoy their walk through the region, eventually, they reached the midpoint which is Mellow Abbey. Harry and Jessica went inside to pay their respects to Abbot Francisca who was a kind and gentle man of the cloth and was well known to Harry and Jessica. So both went and offered a little prayer to him on his grave and moved on, Lily knew about what had happened in Mellow Abbey when her daddy and friends traveled the world and how all of them blamed themselves for not being able to save the kind, old man. So she didn't say anything and just prayed with her godfather and auntie, Era felt the sad atmosphere and didn't say anything but she did grab both of Jessica and Harry's hands in hopes of cheering them up. It worked because her daddy and mommy smiled at her, still, Harry couldn't help but remember Abbot Francisco, back then when they met the abbot had taken a look at Harry's eyes and knew of the pain he carried in his heart. The abbot had taken care of many abandoned orphans and some were abused so he recognized the pain Harry held inside of him and gave him a warm and kind hug. He apologized to him for having to have to go through such a harsh childhood and to Harry who had never had an adult apologize or even care about that time in his life was stunned. Abbot Francisco had won Harry's respect that day which only served to hurt him more when the abbot died at the hands of Dolmagus. He doesn't remember much of that moment but Jessica, Hiro, and Yangus had told him that he went berserk and had attacked Dolmagus so fiercely that he forced him to run away with his tail between his legs. It was also at that time that both of his keyblades evolved into Oath Keeper and Oblivion as well. Harry gazed to his side and grinned when he saw the Templar Knights looking scared of him. When the abbot died they tried to have them arrested and blamed for the abbot's death and Harry took offense to that. He ended up beating the living shit out of every Templar in the abbey until Marcello stopped the fight and ordered him and his friends to leave. Harry and his friends left right after but not without Harry telling Marcello and the Templars how much of a bunch of assholes they were, now remembering all of that caused Harry to chuckle and shake his head. He was certainly a feisty kid but he blames Hiro, Jessica, and Medea for that since he grew up with them. After that, the party of four left the abbey and continued on their way to Simpleton and eventually reached the small town where they found Angelo's orphanage. It was a big building, one built with the donations of friends and allies they had made during their adventures and of course the gold they had collected over their adventures. Harry smiled as he watched a bunch of kids running around outside and bringing life to this small little town. Harry, Jessica and the girls walked over. The kids noticed them and seeing they were new people they all rushed over to meet them which made Harry chuckle in amusement as they all got to them and began to bombard them with questions. Harry got on one knee and greeted the children with a smile on his face which made the kids smile back at him until a voice suddenly caught everyone's attention looks like you're still good with kids old friend, you sure you don't want to work here? I could use your help. Harry chuckled and turned his head towards the voice no way, you wouldn't pay me any good anyways and would probably go get in trouble Angelo. Angela who was wearing a simple red Templar uniform, very different from the one he used to wear during his adventures. His white hair tied in a ponytail and a cocky grin on his face showed that he had not changed much even in his adult age don't say that Harry, I'll let you know that I've changed quite a lot you know. A little girl then pulled on Harry's sleeve and then whispered in his ear old man Angelo is always hitting on girls but he always gets rejected, it's very funny Tilda. 
Angela heard the little girl and looked utterly betrayed while Harry and Jessica laughed at their friend. Harry patted the little girl on her head which made her giggle that's good to know, I'll make sure to not let him live it down. Harry winked at the little girl who brightly smiled and then got up and walked up to Angelo who looked like he had been stabbed in the back making Harry grin it's nice to see you, Angelo, it's been a long time huh? Angelo recovered from his emotional damage and grinned at Harry it sure has old friend but let's talk inside, I'm sure you have a lot of tales to tell me and Jessica. It is so good to see you too. Jessica grinned and lifted a hip while holding a hand over it I bet it is Angelo, you've gotten old but not as smooth as before huh? Angelo chuckled and shook his head damn woman, no mercy as always. How does Harry handle a girl like you? Harry grinned by not talking or acting stupid. All three adults shared a laugh and then Angelo took them and the girls inside the orphanage to his office so they could talk in peace but if you could see the eyes of these three old friends you would be able to see the sheer joy of being together again. Dash. Harry and Jessica spent some time talking to Angelo and letting him know of everything that has been going on in their lives lately, Angelo on his part was pretty much speechless for most of the conversation and no one could really blame him. The scope of Harry's entire life is massive but still, there was one thing in particular that had his curiosity so you're a god now? How does that even work? Harry grinned at his friend well, in the world I come from dragons are a very special type of being, one born from power incarnate, and a dragon from that world even a young one could be as powerful as Rathorn. Angelo gaped, dragons were known as army killers in the world of light, only the strongest and most skillful adventurers can face one and survive, he and his friends faced many types of dragons during their adventures and it was always a tough battle to face one. He still shudders whenever he remembers fighting the Lord of the Dragovians back when they were making their final preparations to face Rathorn but to think that the dragons in Harry's world were even more powerful than the ones in his world was a scary thought great goddess. That sounds terrifying Harry. Harry grinned and nodded it's not that bad, the dragons in our world are sentient and can talk, their rankings are also very clear, dragon, dragon king, heavenly dragon, and then dragon god. Angelo nodded in understanding I see so they can be bargained with to some extent. Harry shrugged well most dragons are content with just being left alone but most of them just care about doing their own thing, luckily for everyone in my world the dragons now have a home away from most of the world and are all under one faction now. Harry then turned his head towards Zeri and smiled Era here is a dragon herself and of the heavenly dragon rank as you can see she's a very kind and gentle girl, when she's not fighting that is. Angelo turned his head towards Zeri who brightly smiled and waved at him causing him to chuckle I see, to think such a small and adorable little girl is a dragon but how does one become a dragon god? Harry hummed for a little bit well a heavenly dragon has to reach a certain level of power and then obtain control over a concept, my daughter Hope was born as dragon god but her concept is cosmic fire, and my niece Morgan is on the verge of becoming a dragon god, more than likely she will gain control over the concept of power or multiplication. Angelo sighed it sounds quite complicated. There are not many dragon gods are there? Harry shook his head no, before me there were only two, Office the dragon god of infinity, and Great Red the dragon god of dreams, it's very rare for a dragon to ascend into a dragon god as it is, I myself became one after many years of training and battles. Angelo nodded I see, no offense but I am glad that there are not many dragon gods around and the few that exist are nice and kind dragons. Harry chuckled well with me and hope there's a total of four dragon gods and office is one of my girlfriends so I can tell you that she's very nice as well, I don't know much about Great Red but according to office he's an idiot who likes to just spend his days doing air tricks in the dimensional gap so as long as no one provokes us there's no need to worry. Angelo nodded but the grin girlfriends huh? First you steal Jessica's heart and now I found out that you're a bigger ladies man than me, how funny. Harry rolled his eyes and shook his head I keep saying that I had no control over my girlfriends they all sort of just decided to form a harem and I had no say in it. Jessica nodded and then grin we all love Harry and we didn't want to fight or hurt the other girls so in the end we all just decided on forming a big family, it has been amazing. Harry smiled at Jessica while Angelo grinned I don't know if you're lucky or not Harry. Harry shrugged and shook his head well at the very least I'm very happy. The three adults shared a laugh for a few minutes while Lily and Derry just stared at them in confusion, Angelo then smiled so what's next, and why is the little princess of Trodane with you? Don't tell me that the big bad dragon finally kidnapped a princess? Dot. Harry chuckled nah nothing like that, my girlfriends don't let me kidnap princesses, pretty mean of them if I say so myself but anyways Lily is with us because Hiro and Medea thought that it would be a great idea for her to see a bit of the world. 
Angelo turned his gaze towards Lily who gave him a grin which made him chuckle in amusement and adventurous one it seems but she looks like she's having a lot of fun and that's what matters, where are you going next? Lily just continued to happily smile since she was really having a lot of fun with this trip. Harry smiled at her while answering Angelo's question we're going to pick them and see if we can find Yangus or Red, maybe even find some information on their whereabouts since I would like to see them before we have to go back to my world. Angelo nodded and leaned back on his chair Yangus and Red huh? I must admit that I haven't heard much about them in a while. Though the last thing I heard was that they were treasure hunting all over the place. Harry nodded yeah, that's what Hiro and Medea said too which is why we went to Felbury and spoke with Calder Asher and his daughter first. Angelo grinned ah the fortune teller I see, so you already have an idea where to go then? I nodded but it was Jessica who answered Angelo's question yes, they told us to go to Pickham and that we would find clues about their whereabouts there. Angelo nodded and then looked out the window while well it getting close to evening so why don't you geese stay the night here and set out early in the morning? Harry nodded that sounds great actually, we were going to camp out but we won't say no to a bed that's for sure. Angelo chuckled only you would let a princess camp in the wilderness Harry, I swear. Lily tilted her head and seemed confused but it's fun to camp out though we even roasted these things called marshmallows and they were really delicious. Angelo just chuckled and shook his head you're definitely Hiro's daughter little princess but for tonight you're my guest so let me host you and my friends okay? Lily smiled and nodded, that night Harry spent his time playing with Lily, Eric and the orphans while Jessica and Angelo watched on with big smiles on their faces. Harry even cooked a big dinner for everyone which everyone enjoyed, that night all the kids went to sleep with smiles on their faces. Dash. The next morning everyone got up early and followed Harry and his group outside after having breakfast, Angelo then decided to ask so how are going to Pigham? Are you walking back to Peregrine Key and getting on a ferry? Harry grinned and shook his head and ah. I don't have the time to take the long route so we're flying there. Something about Harry's grin unnerved Angelo but before he could even voice out his concerns Harry transformed into his dragon form and roared into the sky. Everyone in Simpleton gaped at the massive gold and silver dragon in the middle of the little town while the kids of the orphanage were awed as they looked up. Angelo sweat dripped as he stared at Harry's dragon form dear goddess. He's bigger than before and what's with the gold and silver? Harry lowered his snout towards the kids, Lily and Dare immediately walked towards him and gave him a big hug on the snout all the kids then followed their examples and hugged Harry as well. Jessica giggled and shook her head always with the theatrics with this one she then turned her head towards Angelo and grinned close your mouth or a fly might get inside Angelo. Angelo scoffed and shook his head with a grin on his face right, right just leave already before Harry gets another idea for a much worse prank. Harry actually chuckled which made Angelo's eyebrow twitch, Ari and Lily suddenly took off flying to the amazement of the kids followed right after Jessica. All three then landed on Harry's head who stood on his hind legs and spread his wings and then spoke surprising everyone it was nice seeing you Angelo and playing with all the kids, I'll make sure to visit again but I don't have a lot of time left if you need anything from me go to Trodane or Alexandria, they have ways to contact us. Angelo nodded and Harry then took her off into the sky with one strong flap of his wings, the kids nor the town were affected by the wind of his wings since he had raised a barrier around everything. Which meant the kids were able to cheer and waved Harry and the girls goodbye as they disappeared in the distance, Angelo smiled as he watched two of his friends leave to have even more adventures and if he was younger and didn't have to take care of his kids he might have joined them. Still, he was happy with his life now and he couldn't risk his life anymore knowing that he had kids to take care of after all. Dash. Harry flew through the skies of the world of light while Ari and Lily enjoyed the ride towards their next destination much to Jessica's amusement as she watched the girls cheer. It didn't take Harry long to cross continents and the sea to reach where Pickham is located and soon enough he landed a fair distance away not wanting to cause panic among the townspeople. As soon as he landed the girls jumped down and Harry took on his human form, Lily then looked around the area which was all forest, and she saw some monsters new monsters she found interesting. They looked quite unique to her and she couldn't help to wonder what sort of abilities they have. Harry smiled and noticed what Lily was staring at and decided to speak quite a varied assemble of monsters no? Lily turned her head towards her godfather and nodded yeah, I've never seen monsters so human-like before, what are they? Harry nodded well most belong to the demon family of monsters while others are from the humanoid family. 
Harry then pointed towards the muscular man wielding two axes and an executioner's hood on its face that's a hood and despite their looks, they're monsters of the humanoid family along with those ones Harry then pointed at a group of hairy monsters wearing full armor, shields and wielding an axe who were jumping around those are known as headhunters. Jessica then spoke. These types of monsters are usually physically inclined and don't wield any magic but they are tough and have a lot of stamina which makes them very dangerous. Harry nodded and then pointed at the small green devil-like monster running around that's a minidemon. They can use high-level ice and fire magic, and then we have those Harry pointed at the blue-skinned woman cackling a distance away that's a witch and she likes to confuse her opponent with her beautiful looks while bombarding them with all kinds of spells. Era frowned, I don't think I like that she's called a witch, I think mommy Hermione would have a fit if she finds out. Harry chuckled and nodded knowing how Hermione would not like this monster at all yeah that's for sure. She's also from the demon family of monsters. These types of monsters are heavily magically inclined and are more often than not immune to certain types of magic, Era wouldn't have a problem with that but you have to keep it in mind Lily. Lily nodded in understanding. Harry then continued on besides those, there's a lot of plant and insect family monsters around here as well. Plant type monsters are notorious for always having all kinds of nasty surprises and they are experts in using debuff and buff spells. Insect monsters are usually a gamble because you never know what kind of thing they have in store for you but most have some sort of status effect spell or skill. Lily nodded and then stared at the monsters in silence for a few seconds Eri then walked up to her side so what's the plan Lily? Lily turned her head towards Zeri and gave her a smile I'll handle the demons and humanoids. You take care of the plants and insects make sure you don't let them use their spells or skills. Era smiled and nodded. Lily then turned towards the monsters I'll make sure to stop the demons from casting magic and keep the humanoids busy so you can use your magic. Era took out her staff while Lily drew her sword. The monsters felt the change in the air and immediately turned toward the girls who were ready to fight them all. Harry smiled and watched on as the girls rushed forwards towards the monsters who all pounced to attack the girls. Harry watched as the girls easily took care of the monsters but he also saw when they realized that there was one big problem with these types of monsters. They usually attack in big groups and hordes which forced the girls to jump back and regroup. A few minutes later they jumped back in, this time however they used wide area of attack, spells, and skills plus whatever other skill that would allow them to attack big groups freely. Having been training Lily for a while now, Harry made sure to teach Lily all kinds of dragon skills and among them were some very nifty status effects like poison breath which breaths out a puff of poisonous gas, sweet breath which breaths out a pink and sweet smelling fog that causes enemies to fall asleep and burning breath which breaths out an orange mist that causes paralysis and Lily was using them right now to stop the monsters from dogpiling them. Aria of course took care of her targets quite easily in the few monsters that foolishly thought that she was just another mage and tried to get close to her to attack her up close found out how strong her kicks and punches are. Especially when she charges mana into her martial arts to create all sorts of elemental effects to her physical attacks, it was a massacre of monsters. Now that the girls were able to jump back and organize themselves better after fighting these new types of monsters they were easily able to attack them and defeat them. The girls ended up with a big pile of gold after the big fight, though Lily had a few scratches and cuts all over her body and face though she was still all smiles and laughs. Air immediately began to heal her but not before scolding her a bit about being more careful which just made Lily smile brightly at Hera much to her chagrin. Harry could already see that Hera will be keeping a closer eye on Lily from now on, she really is a kind and caring girl, and when she loves and cares about someone you can bet that she will always take care of them. Lily has quickly become a good friend to Eri and because Eri is Harry's daughter she considers Lily her family. After healing Lily both girls walked back to Harry and Jessica while Eri put all the gold they got into her witch's hat. Harry smiled at them good job girls, Lily be more careful and try to dodge rather than block attacks okay? Lily nodded and then sheepishly scratched the back of her head okay papa Harry, I just forget to keep moving around sometimes. Harry nodded that's fine, the new style you're learning is way different from the one you grew up learning so it's understandable that you sometimes fall into old habits, just keep it in mind okay and remember that you also know healing magic. Lily blushed in embarrassment but nodded to Harry since she always forgets about her healing spells during mid-battle but her godfather was right, she can't keep doing that since it's a very bad habit to have plus she really shouldn't let injuries and wounds pile up on her. Harry patted Lily's head causing her to look up into her godfather's eyes but overall you did good, it seems like you're very comfortable using dragon skills so I'll be teaching you some more of them as well plus Jessica will continue to teach you the magic of this world.
Lily smiled and nodded Auntie Jessica is teaching me how to use fire and wind magic but I need more help with my lightning magic, Dad taught me how to use zap and kazap but that's it. Harry nodded and then hummed and how did you learn thunder slash then? Lily tilted her head well one day I was practicing flame slash and thought how come no one does the same thing with lightning magic? So I decided to do the same thing I do when I use flame slash but with lightning. Though it took me a while to figure it out and getting shocked. A lot. Harry chuckled and then everyone began to walk towards the town of Pickham. Harry then continued on there's actually a lightning based sword technique. It's called Gigaslash but that's a very high level technique and not everyone can learn it. Lily looked up and seemed to be thinking about what her godfather just told her Gigaslash. I think I've seen dad use something called Gigakash. Is it the same thing? Harry shook his head no, Jigagash is Hiro's own variation of Gigaslash so it's not something anyone can learn but I bet if you asked him about it he'll try to teach it to you but you should focus on mastering the advanced rash first and then try mastering Gigaslash, perhaps create your own variation afterward. Lily excitedly smiled at the idea of creating her own variation of the technique called Gigaslash someday. Jessica then suddenly spoke as they approached the town of Pickham OK girls before we arrived in Pickham there are a few things you should know so pay attention. Both Lily and Eric turned their heads towards Jessica and gave her their full attention. Jessica then went on to explain Pickham is a very colorful town but because of that it's full of thugs, thieves, and other unsavory sorts so you both need to be careful and pay attention to your surroundings. Lily frowned while Lara hummed for a few moments and then spoke up but we can hit them if they try anything right? Jessica raised an eyebrow while Harry chuckled and answered her question well in Pickham you can pretty much do anything you want so no one will bat an eye if you beat someone up. Era sweetly smiled while Lily grinned, Jessica giggled and shook her head now I feel bad for anyone stupid enough to start anything with these two girls, menaces the both of them. Lily and Derry just giggled in amusement while Harry just smiled at them and looked toward Pickham, they ran into a lot of trouble the first time he and the rest of the party visited this town during his time in this world. Some thief was actually able to steal Medea when she was cursed into a horse right under their noses which made them all panic something fierce when they found out. Luckily they found the thief and after Harry and Yangus squeeze him a bit they found out who he sold Medea to, this is how they met Red who was the one who bought Medea. In the end, all of this ended up with them having to go dungeon diving into a massive catacomb filled with deadly traps and monsters for a treasure but they succeeded and got Medea back after that whole ordeal. Still, this soured the party's experience in this town but they also learned a very valuable lesson that day and so from then on they were more careful of Medea and their belongings. In any case, they were supposed to find a clue as to where Yangus and Red were in Pickham and Harry was really looking forward to seeing them both. Chapter 114, Chapter 114 Everyone reached and went into Pickham and both Harry and Lily immediately felt the difference between this town and the one they visited before. This place was definitely run down and the atmosphere around here was very solemn but what was more noticeable to both of them was the ever-present feeling that they were being watched. So for the first time since the girls started their little adventure. They didn't take off running all over the place and instead stayed close by to Harry and Jessica who smiled in approval at the fact that the girls were being extra careful within this town. It wasn't a surprise to both adults in the party of four after all Pickham was a town of vagabonds, drunks, and thieves, this town was a haven for gambling and contraband, and if you're not careful around here you might find yourself waking up outside the town buck ass naked and defenseless. It was best to always be alert in this town lest you find yourself in a predicament something both Harry and Lily instinctively knew and so the group of four walked around. First Harry and Jessica wanted to head to the bar up north of the town and ask about Yangus and Red. The girls walked ahead of the group and as soon as they came about an arch leading to a street a big muscular man got in their way and loudly spoke to the group this is my patch, you wanna come through eh, you pay me so dosh, ten gold coins in fact. Lily frowned at the man while Era tilted her head. She then turned her head towards her daddy and Harry just shrugged letting her know that he was leaving it up to her. Eri then turned her head back to the very muscular man and then walked up to him. The muscular man tensed up not expecting a small little girl to actually approach him but he then thought she was going to give him the coin especially since Eri reached out with her hand towards him. But instead of giving the muscular man gold coins, Eri flicked him in the stomach, and to the surprise of everyone watching this going on the muscular man was sent flying back at high speed until he crashed against the wall at the far end of the street. The poor muscular man groaned in pain and then fell down to the ground from the crater his body created when it collided with the wall behind him, the muscular man just twitched and groaned in pain while being on the floor face down. 
Eri then sweetly smiled and everyone watching her began to nervously sweat and vow not to get in the way of the very scary and powerful little girl. Lily grinned in amusement finding the whole thing hilarious while Harry chuckled and Jessica just shook her head in amusement. After that whole ordeal the group then immediately walked down the street and headed to the bar at the end of it. It didn't take long to reach it and all of them ignored the groaning muscular man as they walked past him. Once inside the bar, Harry went to speak with the bartender while Eric, Lily, and Jessica waited by the door not wanting to go inside such a shady place especially when everyone inside the bar was staring at them. It didn't take long for Harry to come back and Jessica immediately began to ask him how it went did he know anything? Harry shook his head not really, other than Yangus stopping by for a barrel of beer about a week ago he hadn't heard anything from him or read since then but he did tell me to ask Dodgy Dave since they have been doing business with him lately. Jessica nodded and hummed Dodgy Dave huh? That means we have to go inside his little lair by the casino. Harry nodded but then he felt someone pull on his sleeve making him turn towards Lily who looked at him in the eyes Papa Harry what's a casino? Harry tilted his head and then hummed for a few moments before deciding to answer Lily's question a casino is a place where one goes to gamble money in some games however people tend to get lost in those games and end up losing a lot of money. Lily nodded are the games fun? Harry looked up and thought I've never been particularly good at them so I hardly ever played games of chance, my friend Naruto is very lucky so he used to gamble once in a while and get a lot of money. Angelo is very good at card games too but honestly I don't see how those games are any fun but that's my opinion anyways. Lily tilted her head and Jessica grinned are you curious Lily? Lily turned her head towards Jessica and nodded yeah, mom and dad went to a place called Baccarat once, mom said that she and dad spent time playing in the casino so I was wondering if it was fun. Jessica nodded in understanding while Harry gave Lily and head pat well do you want to give it to try? Lily looked up at Harry and brightly smiled can we? I just want to try them and see if they're fun. Harry nodded sure, Jessica can take you there while I go talk to Dodgy Dave, how does that sound? Lily cheered and then hugged Derry who also cheered, Harry chuckled and then turned his head towards Jessica who smiled and nodded at him, it was for the best that Lily and Derry didn't go to Dodgy Dave's place since it's not exactly a place for children so they might as well have some fun at the casino. And so the party of four headed towards the right side of Pickham and headed towards the casino. Once there Harry gave a bag of gold to Jessica and the girls who immediately ran inside the casino. Now by himself Harry headed towards the secret location of Dodgy Dave's trade and went inside. The place hasn't changed and neither had the people inside, all of them thieves and shady individuals. But Harry ignored them and immediately headed to where Dodgy Dave stood. This man is a tall and muscular man and as soon as he saw Harry he grinned at him well if it isn't the hero Harry Potter, what can I do for you? Harry sighed and shook his head Dave it's good to see you're doing well, I came for some information that you might know. Dave tilted his head alright, I'm betting you're looking for Yangus and that pretty little bird red aren't ya? Harry nodded and took out a gold bar from his inventory already knowing that information was expensive here and so he passed it to Dave who took it with a grin on his face are good doing business with Yuri. Yangus and Red came by here for information as well, rumors really but lately there's been a wave and air of evil coming from them dark ruins, not sure why but Red and Yangus looked mighty concerned about those rumors and ran off to investigate, something about confirming whether the ruins were destroyed or not before calling the gf. Harry frowned, the dark ruins? That goddess forsaken place should have collapsed after our battle against Dolmagus. Shit I hope Yangus and Red are okay. Harry nodded to Dave thanks Dave, I'll be leaving now don't get into too much trouble and if you do at least don't get caught. Dodgy Dave Gafford mate I make it my business not to get caught ha ha ha. Harry grinned and then left Dodgy Dave's place and went outside but a worried expression marred his face, the dark ruins and the islands where they're located are filled with very powerful undead and demon type monsters. That place is a horrid island filled with darkness and the ground is poisoned to the point that nothing grows there. It is a completely desolate place and one not many would dare to go into unprepared which is why he's worried about Yangus and Red. As Harry walked towards the casino he couldn't help to dread the place, he knew it was absurd to do so now that he was multiple times more powerful than the first time he went there but the place truly was very hard to forget and it had left an impression on not only him but Hiro, Jessica, Yangus and Angelo as well. Which is why he was surprised Yangus went there, that in itself is proof that Yangus truly believed something bad was happening there otherwise you wouldn't catch him going there if his life depended on it. Dave said that they came a week ago so at best they should have been there two days, three tops so we have to hurry, if something like what happened in the waterfall cave is happening there then they might not be fully prepared for it. 
Harry reached the casino and went inside only to stop and watch as Jessica gave to Lily who was sitting in front of a slot machine and being buried in coins while Lara was happily cheering. Harry raised an eyebrow and walked up to the girls, Jessica noticed the look on his face and immediately knew something serious had happened but Harry shook his head letting her know that they will speak of it in a bit. Me and Lily noticed her godfather and brightly smiled Papa Harry. Look I won with my first coin he he. Harry raised an eyebrow your first coin? Wow, that's actually a little scary Lily Harry chuckled in amusement. Jessica smiled and shook her head in disbelief I have never seen anything like it before, first we tried playing bingo but we weren't very lucky but as soon as Lily sat in front of the slot machine, put a coin in, and pulled the lever she hits the jackpot. Harry smiled and with a wave of his hand he lifts all the coins and then takes out an enchanted bag from his inventory and puts all the coins inside, afterward he hands them to Lily who smiled at him and ran with Eric to the exchange counter to see what they can get. Meanwhile, Harry and Jessica decided to talk, Jessica stared into Harry's eyes and saw the worry in them I take that dodgy Dave gave you some bad news. Harry sighed and nodded more or less. Yangus and Red went to the dark ruin to investigate some rumors. Jessica's eyes widened in surprise and concern the dark ruins? Didn't it collapse after we killed Domagus? And why would Yangus and Red go to that goddess forsaken place? Harry frowned and looked down that's the thing, apparently the rumors Yangus and Red went to investigate were about some kind of dark and evil wave coming from it. I remember all we saw that day was the entrance collapse but we don't know if the entire place collapsed from the inside. Jessica frowned and then crossed her arms you're right. And we never went back to investigate after that, no one wanted to go back there for that matter honestly I'm surprised Yangus went there and took Red with him. Harry nodded yeah which means that he was really worried about these rumors, enough that he went to investigate and hasn't come back in about a week. It takes three days by boat to reach the island where the dark ruins are located, and about a day to traverse the desolate island. Jessica began to bite her thumbnail which means Yangus and Red have been in the dark ruins for about two days tch. We need to go there and check on them. Yes I agree. Something is going on and if I'm right then we're dealing with a situation similar to the waterfall cave so who knows what we'll find in those dark ruins. I remember that it was all very strange how it seemed like some sort of ancient temple. Jessica then looked down while still biting her nail yeah you're right, so we might find another one of those resurrected monsters right? Harry nodded yeah. And more than likely it will be a demon lord down there, the thing is. That place is not one I want to take the girls into. Jessica nodded and was about to speak when Lily suddenly spoke from behind them I'm going. Both Harry and Jessica turned their heads toward Lily and stared at her for a few moments. Harry sighed Lily that place is horrible and there are really powerful monsters in there. Your daddy and I barely made it alive the day we had to go there. Are you sure you want to go to such horrid place? Lily nodded yes. I'm not afraid. And I want to help Uncle Yangus. He always visits and plays with me. He always comes on my birthdays and brings me all kinds of cool gifts. I can't just stay somewhere knowing he might be in trouble so I'm going. Era walked up to Lily's side holding a few minutes medals and a bottle of elfin water. Harry instantly knew that those were the prizes they chose in exchange for the coins they got. Era looked up at her daddy we can handle it, daddy, let us go and help. Besides you and mommy Jessica are going too. Harry turned his head towards Jessica who sighed and then turned to look at both girls listen, that place is very dangerous and there are all kinds of powerful monsters so you have to be careful okay? Both Harry and Lily nodded with serious expressions on their little faces, Harry sighed honestly both of you are too young for this. Not even Morgan and Hope got to fight at your age still both of you are dragons and dragons don't show fear so let's go, our friends need us. Lily smiled while Lara put away their prizes into her witch's hat and then fist pumped and a pot and never abandons a friend in need. Lily cheered and fist pumped as well while Harry and Jessica smiled at them. Of course, both were still worried about the girls and the situation but they know they can trust them to take care of themselves. They knew that all of this caution was because of their experience with the dark ruins and that in reality they don't have to worry but they can't really help it, even Harry who is a dragon god and so much more powerful than the first time he went there was worried. Still, they had to deal with what was going and the girls wanted to help, Harry knew that this would be a great experience for them he just wished they would have gotten it when they were a bit older like Hope and Morgan. But he also has to have faith in them and so Harry will believe in these two adorable and quite capable little girls. Besides he will be there and he will be damn if he would ever let them get hurt alright then let's go. I'm taking everyone there in my dragon form, the quicker we get there that faster we can find Yangus and Red, and find out what's going. Jessica, 
Morgan, and Lily nodded and then the party of four left Pickham and headed outside and walked a fair distance away, as soon as they were far enough Harry took on his dragon form and the girls got on his head. Soon after Harry flapped his wings and took off flying towards where the dark ruins lay at high speed hoping to get there to help Yangus and Red in time. Dash. It is only time for Harry to arrive at the island where the dark ruins are located and as soon as he landed and lets the girls get down on the ground he could tell that something was seriously wrong here. Harry immediately took on his human form and looked up only to frown as a swirling mass of darkness on top of the dark ruins was coming down onto the ruin themselves, something is happening here, there's something very old and powerful coming. Jessica frowned and walked up to Harry's side and also looked up how powerful are we talking about? Harry sighed and turned his head towards Jessica at least super devil in rank, damn. We have to find Yangus and Red quickly and stop whatever is going on here. Harry turned towards Lily and Eriera don't hold back, I want you to go full out from the get go and Lily pick your battles carefully, make sure you can take down whatever you choose to fight, and don't hesitate to ask for help. Lily and Eriera sensing the seriousness of the situation in Harry's voice nodded to him, Harry smiled at both girls Jessica and I will be active this time but you're the leader Lily, keep in mind that we need to find Yangus and Red quickly and use light elemental attacks, there's only demons and undead here. Lily nodded while Lara took out both her wand and staff, Eri then looked down in thought for a few moments before looking up at her daddy daddy should I summon Suleiman and Tsuka Iman to help. Harry smiled at her but shook his head not this time sweetie, the monsters here are a little above them plus Jessica and I will be fighting this time and you know how wild we can get. Jessica then spoke up as she brought out her Gringham whip plus there's not a lot of space inside the ruins and a lot of monsters, it's best for both Suleiman and Tsuka Iman to sit this one out. Era nodded and got ready, Lily took out her Dragovian god sword and her goddess shield and got ready herself, Harry nodded at them and then summoned both Oblivion and O Arthkeeper. Lily ordered both legendary weapons, she had heard so much about her godfather's keyblades but this was the first time she had seen them, and not only are they amazing to look at but Lily could feel their power as well. Harry turned to look towards where the dark ruins lay and frowned as he could already see countless undead and demon monsters gather around to get in their way Lily take the lead. Lily snapped out of her awed state and nodded, she then walked to the front with Eri and began to walk towards the ruins, monsters began to immediately get in their way. Monsters Lily has never seen before but has heard of from both her mom and dad, great trolls, gigants, archdemons, foul fighters, dalahans, white priests, and even hell gladiators. These types of monsters weren't only very high level but they possess skills beyond the norm, these were the type of monsters anyone would run away from, ones that no one would not want to ever face. But Lily was the daughter of heroes, a dragon knight but most of all the goddaughter of Harry Potter and she wasn't going to be intimidated by a bunch of monsters. No, she was going to prove herself here, she wanted adventure, she wanted excitement, and she wanted to fight powerful monsters, and she was getting what she wanted. So with a grin on her face, Lily called upon the dragon within her and it immediately answered, her little body exploded with power as blue scales began to appear around her cheeks and forehead. Her green eyes took on a reptilian look and as Lily brandished her Dragovian god sword she suddenly roared and took off running as fast as she could. Which was pretty fast since she became a blue blur that the monsters weren't expecting, suddenly Lily appeared behind a massive great troll that froze and then suddenly fell apart having been cut to pieces. The monsters growled and stepped back from Lily a bit in both shock and fear as she stood up straight and widely grinned at the monsters showing off her fangs. Harry chuckled in amusement and then smile in amusement well then, let's not keep the princess waiting shall we? Jessica grinned and nodded while Larry cheerfully giggled, Harry then disappeared in a flash of light and darkness followed by Jessica who disappeared in a flash of red energy while Larry just operated. Harry appeared beside Lily in a flash of light and darkness and then immediately rushed forwards with both Oblivion and Oathkeeper glowing black and white. Lily there bore witness to her godfather's fighting for the first time and even though she knew he was holding back a lot it was still an amazing thing to see. Harry immediately began to dance around the many monsters in the area who took too long to react to him and most of them were taken out by a single attack from Harry but then they all reacted soon after and attacked back. A Dullahan swung his flail at Harry who batted it away with oblivion with ease and then smacked the Dullahan's body away with Oathkeeper, the Dullahan's body immediately exploded in wisps of light. Harry suddenly jumped up and avoided a thrust attack from three foul fighters' swords, he then landed on top of the swords and swiftly cast a spell Aragor. An orb of powerful and sharp wind engulfed Harry's body and burst outwards blasting the monsters away and destroying them, a gigant suddenly swung its massive club at Harry but he just grinned and didn't move. 
The gigads was then whipped in his blue face by Jessica. She had whipped the massive monster so hard that its head flew off. A group of white priests pointed their dark ones at the group but before they could even gather any mana they were suddenly impaled by multiple spears made out of white holy light. Lily looked back and smiled as she saw Eri standing close by with her staff extended towards where the white priests stood, Eri smiled at Lily and then waved her wand towards the ground. Lily gaped when from the very ground beside Eri massive stone golems rose up and then took her off towards the hell gladiators who suddenly rushed towards the group. Lily watched as the golems began to swather the four armed undead monsters and sent them flying, all of this was amazing to Lily and she grew excited to be able to fight with her godfather, auntie, and now best friend Eri. Not wanting to be left behind she suddenly brought her sword towards herself and ran her hand on the blade, as she did so her Dragovian god sword began to shine with light. She then rushed forward towards a group of gigants that were heading towards the golems to destroy them but Lily jumped and then whirled around in midair until she landed sword first into the head of one of the massive blue monsters. The gigants instantly died and Lily then took off flying with magic, she blurred from the rest of the gigants' sights only to appear in the middle of the group with her shield arm extended towards the sky Kazapal. A massive lightning storm suddenly dropped on top of not only the gigants but also some of the smaller monsters around, the holy lightning shocked the monsters and killed them in seconds. Lily sighed and then turned towards a group of monsters rushing towards her but then two massive fireballs flew past her sides and crashed against the big group of monsters exploding in contact. Lily smiled knowing it was her godfather Harry and Auntie Jessica who did that, something that was confirmed when both Harry and Jessica rushed forward from her side with smiles on their faces. Jessica then cracked her whip on the ground twice and from the ground in front of her a massive snake of flames and molten rock rose, it then shot forward and launched itself towards two great trolls heading her way. The monsters roared in pain as Jessica's serpent spite crashed into them and burned them alive, Jessica then pointed her hand towards a big group of foul fighters Kaznos. The foul fighters suddenly fell asleep as Jessica's spell hit them, Harry appeared above them in a blur of darkness and then dropped to the ground with Oblivion hitting the ground first. As soon as Oblivion touched the ground massive pillars of darkness rose from the ground and began to spin around Harry and destroying any monsters in their way. Harry then raised O Oathkeeper into the air and charged it with light and then slammed it into the ground right where Oblivion had hit before, a massive dome of white light shot outwards from Harry and then exploded into many beams of light that immediately flew out and seeked any monsters nearby. Many of the monsters were struck by the beams of white light from Harry's technique and exploded in showers of white light killing the monsters instantly and so the party of four kept fighting and fighting while moving forward towards the dark ruins. No matter how many monsters got in their way they were immediately defeated, Harry and Jessica were holding back in order to allow the girls to grow not only in power but experience plus this would present a valuable battle experience for them. Both Harry and Lily proved to be very capable of fighting big numbers with these, even Lily who had never gotten the chance to fight big numbers of monsters or fight with all her power was easily mowing down groups of monsters and keeping up with the level of power Harry and Jessica were using at this moment. However, None of them forgot that they needed to hurry nor that they needed to stop whatever is going on in the dark ruins, even now as they drew close to the ruins all four of them could feel the power and darkness gathering around it. Even though both Harry and Jessica had bad memories of this place and much rather never have to go to it again, they knew they needed to do so and so the four of them rushed forward until they reached the entrance to the dark ruins and left nothing but destruction and dead monsters in their wake. Monsters that might have disappeared in wisps of light but their howls and roars of pain still echoed through the area for a while. Dash. The group finally stopped at the entrance of the dark ruins and Harry immediately inspected the entrance looks like we don't need the mirror to get inside nor do we have to worry about that strange darkness. Jessica nodded yeah plus I'm sure both Red and Yangus are already pretty deep into the ruins, there were a lot of monsters but they weren't anything we haven't faced before, still being back here certainly makes me feel uncomfortable. Harry nodded as he frowned, he certainly felt uncomfortable being back here as well but he knew Yangus wouldn't have come in here if the situation wasn't serious, Lily then walked forward anything we should know about these dark ruins Papa Harry? Harry smiled at Lily proud that even now she was being smart and cautious there's probably even more monsters inside which means we have to be careful because of the space, plus these ruins also empower monsters a bit. Lily turned her head towards her godfather the ruins empower monsters? How is that possible? Harry hummed has your father ever told you about this place? Lily shook her head not really, usually when he tells me stories about his adventures he skips a lot about the dark ruins and goes almost immediately to the fight against Olmigus but even then it seems like he skips a lot of details. 
Harry nodded and then snapped his fingers slowing the time flow of this world, something that Lily didn't notice but Jessica and Dara did but they didn't say anything about it. Harry then sighs and shocked his head I don't blame Hiro for not wanting to speak about this place, back then when we arrived here in our pursuit of Domicus we had a difficult time with all the monsters around though back then they weren't as powerful as the ones we fought right now, in fact, this island was inhabited by other types of weaker monsters. Lily listened intently to her godfather's words as he continued on even still we fought as hard as we could. We truly gave everything we had in this place and more, I don't know how many times we came close to dying or worse but things got even worse when we finally faced off against Dolmagus. Harry then turned his head towards the dark ruins there's something very wrong about this place and it was made worse with whatever Dolmagus did here. By the time we got to him he already had forsaken his humanity and become a demon. Lily's eyes widen in surprise there's something here, something that no one noticed before but whatever it is must be the cause of all of this right Papa Harry? Harry smiled proudly at Lily and gave her a head pat which made her smile that's right, you're a very smart princess way smarter than I was back then. Your father and our group desperately fought Domagus here and back then we just didn't have the time nor the need to investigate this place but now that I think about it, it was weird that Domagus choose this place to transform into a demon. Jessica gaped as she came to a sudden realization this isn't some kind of ruins. This is a dark temple isn't it? Dot. Harry smiled at Jessica and nodded I'm afraid so. We didn't notice it back then plus we just didn't have the knowledge of such things before either but yes these so called dark ruins are in fact a dark temple. Jessica frowned and looked down, Era walked up to her side and grabbed her hand to try and cheer her mommy up and got a kind and soft smile in return. Lily however was a bit confused a dark temple? What is that? Harry turned his gaze towards Lily their places where monsters and evil people worship the demon lords of this world, places that gather all the darkness and evil emotions of the world and serve as a place of rebirth to these demon lords. Lily's eyes widen in surprise what? The demon lords? Dot. I read about them in the Dragovian archives, they were known as very powerful monsters and beings, in fact, they were so powerful that a specific rank was created solely for them. Harry nodded already knowing what Lily was referring to that's correct, that rank is known as X and truly powerful and evil monsters belong in this rank, Rathorn even in his lava form had this rank. Lily nodded and then turned towards the dark ruins, so a demon lord is about to be reborn. Harry nodded I think so, the amount of energy and darkness that this place is gathering is massive plus the number of monsters here is too big even by the normal standards of this goddess forsaken place. Lily hummed and seemed to be thinking about something for a few moments do you think I can handle it? I know I'm not anywhere close to any of you in both power and skill. I don't want to get in anyone's way when things are this serious. Harry smiled and then got on one knee right in front of Lily and then caressed her cheeks with both of his hands, he could feel her hard scales on his fingertips your powerful Lily, so much that you don't have a clear idea of the extent of your power yet. You've never gotten a chance to be pushed to your limits so you don't know just what you can really do. Lily stared at her godfather's green eyes and listened intently to his words while Harry went on right now you're at the place where you'll find out what exactly it is you fight for, you will soon realize that and you will raise in power the witch you can never imagine. You're a dragon knight Lily, a dragon and a dragon does not hesitate nor doubts itself so believe in yourself as you have all this time. Lily teared up as Harry smiled at her, she then nodded and Harry let go of her face. She then sniffled a bit but then she nodded at herself and smiled then let's go get Uncle Yangus and Auntie Red, and prevent this so-called demon lord from coming back. Harry stood up straight and nodded to Lily while Jessica and Eris smiled at her and also gave her a nod, whatever might be going inside this dark temple they will face it and stop it together. Chapter 115, Chapter 115. Play Dragon Quest 1 Ost Dungeon Extended. Everyone stepped into the dark temple and once inside the party immediately noticed that something was seriously wrong with this place, Harry looked around with a serious expression on his face there's that feeling of dread and darkness we felt when we came in here the first time but, there's a pressure here that seems rather heavy. Harry turned his head towards the girls who were looking around are you both okay? This place can suffocate anyone with all of this evil floating around. Era frowned but nodded I'm fine daddy. This place reminds me of where you found me. It's unpleasant but I think I've gotten used to places filled with evil like this one. Harry nodded and even though what Eris said was true he wished it wasn't, what had happened to her during her time in the Shihasekai left its mark on his daughter, and the fact that one of her Digimon partners was of the dark and virus type was proof of that. Harry moved his gaze towards Lily who looked up at him I'm okay papa Harry, 
It's a little unnerving in here but I don't seem to be affected by it very much. Harry nodded it must be because of your nature as a dragon knight. You remember what sort of beings they are right? Lily nodded and then looked at both of her hands dragon knights. Beings with the power of a dragon, the magic of a demon, and the heart of a human. Harry smiled at his goddaughter and then gave her a head pat which made her smile and looked up at him. Harry gave her a grin and then turned towards Jessica and you Jessica? How are you holding up? Jessica grinned at Harry and then gave him a nod I'm fine, it certainly feels horrible in here but all of us have experienced places like this dark temple before that makes this place feel insignificant time comparison though I sure wish that the first time we came here I was this powerful. Harry nodded in agreement to Jessica's words yeah me too but at the time we were just working with what we had. In any case let's move on. Lily walked up to the front and looked around watching as some very powerful monsters roamed around the area, hell gladiators and foul fighters were cautiously walking around at the ready to attack any intruders. Lily then turned her head towards everyone okay let's be careful I don't think we should rely on what Papa Harry and Auntie Jessica know about this place, something might have changed so let's move on while being careful. Lily then turns her gaze towards her godfather Papa Harry you said you are trained as a ninja and that you even specialized in assassination right? Harry raised an eyebrow at Lily's question but nodded to confirm what she said to be true that's right, I was a member of Anbu and even went on to become the captain of Konoa's Anbu Corps. Lily smiled and then nodded okay, then can I ask you to use stealth as me, Eric, and Auntie Jessica move forward? That way while the monsters are distracted with us you can take care of most of them with stealth. Harry grinned and nodded to his goddaughter liking her plan sounds good, I'll then move in stealth mode and cover you guys. Lily nodded and her godfather suddenly disappeared in a flurry of leaves, Lily was ordered that's so cool. I wonder if he can teach me that. Arian Jessica giggled at Lily's enthusiasm, Lily then smiled at both of them and turned around towards the inside of the dark temple okay, let's go but keep an eye out even if Papa Harry is covering our back we should still be cautious of this place. Arian Jessica nodded in agreement and then the three girls moved forward into the dark temple ready to face whatever awaits them in this dark and evil place. Dash. On the first level of the Dark Temple, they only found big numbers of monsters but they quickly took care of any that were stupid enough to attack them or get in their way, and as they fought Harry would appear behind monsters and take them down without alerting the rest. Before they could even notice the monsters' numbers decrease rather quickly leaving only small wisps of light from their disappearing bodies, however, the girls and Harry didn't stop and continued to quickly move. Luckily for the group. They didn't have to go around to look for mechanisms or anything like that since everything was still on and open since Harry and the groups of heroes came here to face off against Olmegus a long time ago. So everyone could just head straight down to the first level basement, here is where things had physical change from the last time Harry and Jessica were here. Before there was water all over the place but now only pools of disgusting purple poisonous grime awaited everyone. This became a problem because that meant that they couldn't walk around freely so they opted to take off flying which in hindsight might have been a bad idea since the moment the monsters noticed them in the air they began to try to shoot them down with magic spells. Arian Jessica retaliated by using Reflectarga sending those spells back to the caster and killing them off with their own spell while Lily began to shoot down at the monster with fireballs and lightning magic. Meanwhile. Harry would continue to move undetected while killing monster after monster making Lily wonder just what sort of training her godfather had to go through to learn how to do that flawlessly. Still, right now it wasn't the time for pondering and so Lily continued to launch spells at the monsters who were trying to shoot them down, eventually, they took care of them all and they were free to look around. Era found two chests in an upper corner of the basement and the group immediately went to check them out, inside they found a mini metal and something called Saint Sashes which according to Jessica had the power to purify curses and evil energy. Thinking that it might be useful someday Era put both the mini metal and the Saint Sashes into her witch's hat, after that the party had a quick look around but didn't find anything else useful so they continued onward. They got to the stairs leading down and walked them down to the second level basement which was another big chamber with several floors heading up and down. There were many staircases allowing access to every floor however there were a bunch of new monsters roaming about and they look powerful and downright evil to the girls. Lily frowned and then turned her head towards her auntie Jessica auntie. What are those? Jessica was frowning as she watched this new type of monster those are hellstalkers and hellspawns. Hellstalkers are completely immune to fire and lightning magic and hellspawns are immune to physical attacks. Lily frowned that's a very effective combination to have. This was planned right? Jessica nodded yeah, these monsters were specifically left here to slow anyone down. 
As a matter of fact since we haven't seen Yangus or Red I assume they made it past here and I'm impressed they did so. Lily what are you going to do? Fire and lightning are your main elements and you can't physically attack the hell spawns. Area and I can handle it since we have a lot of perks that help us ignore defenses or resistances. Lily grinned Papa Harry has been teaching me some new things every night, something about not being a one trick pony so I have a few new techniques I've been wanting to try. Lily raised her Dragovian god sword and suddenly it began to let out cold air as frost and ice began to engulf the blade. Jessica raised an eyebrow in surprise Harry taught you ice magic? Lily nodded among all other elements. He said that being ready for anything is always the best course of action, and so he's been teaching me all sorts of sword skills and magic spells. This is the blizzard slash. Lily tapped the floor with her Dragovian god swords engulfed in frost and ice and this technique is the frost wave. As soon as Lily called out the name of her technique a massive wave of icy cold air shot from the tip of her sword into the ground and spread out forward in front of her. The wave spread to the entire chamber and the monsters roaming around were instantly frozen solid. Lily let up her technique and sighed a puff of white mist from her mouth from the sudden drop of temperature her technique brought. The monsters' frozen bodies suddenly cracked and then shattered signaling their deaths. Era cheered and hugged Lily that looked amazing Lily. Lily grinned at her friend and nodded it took me a while to get it down and to be able to resist the cold but thanks to Papa Harry's time manipulation I had all the time in the world to perfect it. Jessica grinned as the girls cheerfully spoke about Lily's new technique. It certainly was impressive and Jessica was even surprised with Lily's control over a volatile element like ice. She certainly has a knack for learning techniques and spells, it's like she adapts at an accelerated pace. Harry came down from somewhere and landed beside everyone surprising the girls a bit well done Lily you destroyed all the monsters in this chamber. Lily nodded and then looked around alright let's look around a bit and see if we can find anything useful in here and then move on. Papa Harry are we close to the end of this dark temple? Harry nodded there are only two more chambers before we get to the inner sanctum of this place. Lily nodded okay then you don't have to keep taking enemies out with stealth but you're going to teach me how to do that later. Harry chuckled and nodded all right but Anbu training isn't easy, you sure you can handle it? Lily nodded I'm sure I can, but for now let's get a move on. Harry smiled at his goddaughter and then everyone quickly took a look around, they found two more chests, and inside they found a mini metal and a recovery ring. Ari and Lily stared at the ring in curiosity since both of them can feel a good amount of magic in it, they both decided to ask Harry what it did and he happily explained. Apparently, this ring is blessed by the goddess and it heals the wearer as they walk around granting them a small healing factor, it was nothing too impressive to Harry, Jessica, and Eris standards. But to Lily, it was one of the most amazing things she's seen and it brought a sense of nostalgia to Harry and Jessica, it reminded them of how they used to react whenever they found a new magical light to more equipment. Er enjoying Lily's happiness decided that she should keep it and use it which surprised the little princess of Drodane, she asked her friend if it was really okay for her to have it. Era just smiled at her and nodded, she then let her know that she had no need for the ring since she had quite the strong healing factor already and that it would be more useful to her right now. Lily understanding Era's words nodded and put on the recovery ring, with that done the group headed towards the staircase leading down and went down to the third basement level. Once they arrived down there what awaited them was a massive empty chamber but they could see that there was a massive battle that went down here not that long ago. There were holes, cut, burns, and destroyed walls and floors all over the place. The two monuments that used to stand in here were also completely destroyed. Harry looked around this seems recent. Whatever went down here it must have happened not so long ago. Jessica stared at the cut on the wall not far from her this was made by a scythe. The cut it's too thin to be from a sword or an axe. Harry raised an eyebrow that means Yangus and Red fought something here and by the looks of it, it was something huge. A trap of sorts or did they just run into some kind of guardian monster? Lily frowned as she looked at the battlefield this was a big fight, I can still feel the tension in the air. What sort of monster could fight this hard against Uncle Yangus and Auntie Red? It was a good question, unlike Hiro and Angelo both Yangus and Red continued exploring the world for treasures and fighting so they only got stronger for it. But what they fought in here obviously fought them hard and the party can only hope that they were okay, since it was just the both of them in here and had no magical support between them luckily Red had some healing techniques but they're not as potent as healing magic is. Harry sighed and shook his head we have to move on, Yangus and Red must be up ahead and they might need some help after the fight they had in here, they might even be injured right now. 
Everyone nodded and decided to rush off to look for their friends hoping to find them close by rather than deeper into the dark temple but hopefully, they decided to rest somewhere for a while. That would allow them to catch up to them and so the party of four walked down the stairs into the fourth basement level. Dash. Once on the lowest floor of the dark temple, the group found themselves looking at a dark and ominous hallway however everyone noticed a light coming off to the side of the corridor where a part of the wall had been destroyed a long time ago. Harry smiled knowing that there was a pool of healing water in that little cave and had the suspicion that both Yangus and Red were there right now, so he walked forward with Eric, Lily, and Jessica following close behind him. As soon as they arrived they all smiled when they saw both Yangus and Red sleeping on the ground by a campfire though both Harry and Jessica frowned when they saw that they were still injured. Harry looked towards the pool of healing water and was disappointed to see that it had become a pool of dirty purple and poisonous water, now worried for his friends Harry quickly walked up to them and then kneeled beside Yangus. Harry poked Yangus on the belly making him groan and then a few moments later he opened his eyes and stared at the smiling face of the dragon god Harry. Mate am I dead or something? The dragon god grinned at Yangus and shook his head in amusement and ah, not yet Yangus but you look like you were one step away from it Yangus soon grinned happily that Harry was really here right now. Meanwhile, Jessica was checking up on Red while Harry helped Yangus sit up while giving him a miracle gel, Yangus stared at the gel in confusion which in hindsight is understandable since at the time Harry didn't have access to them the first time he was in this world. Still, Harry couldn't help but smile at his friend. He hasn't changed in all of these years, still the chubby funny looking guy he always was eat it Yangus, it will heal and restore your energy. Not even doubting his words for a second Yangus immediately chucked the gel into his mouth and ate it, his eyes widened in surprise as he felt all of his wounds disappear and his energy return blimey mate, that hit the spot. Harry nodded and helped Yangus up to his feet, a voice suddenly brought our attention towards where Jessica is they sure do. These might have come in handy a while ago. Harry grinned a red who was now on her feet and grinning at him and Yangus with her arms crossed under her chest red, looking good and tough. Red shook her head and laughed a little Harry, it's good to see you again and I'm certainly glad you're here right now, we didn't know what we were going to do to get back to the surface. Yangus huffed you saved both our butts that's for sure, we were both too injured and tired to go on but what are you both doing here, oh it's good to see you again too Jessica. Jessica grinned at Yangus and nodded while Harry began to explain well we came to visit this world and I wanted to see all of our friends but no one knew where you both were so I went to call Darasha and he told me how to find you guys. Jessica nodded and went on imagine our surprise when we heard that both of you headed here but that raised some very loud alarms in our heads. We both knew that Yangus wouldn't have come back here unless something serious came up. Yangus and Red frowned, Yangus then nodded and you're right. I wouldn't have come here unless something serious was going on. Red and I had been hearing about something strange going on here in these ruins and for some reason, I just couldn't get this feeling of dread that appeared in my heart to disappear so Red and I decided to come and investigate. Red sighed and shook her head and it was a good thing we did too. The amount monsters that are spawning here and the fact that all of them are very high level ones just smelled of something shady going on here. Harry nodded yeah we saw, plus the current of evil and darkness flowing in from the top of the mountains and the dark ruins is a little disturbing but it is a big sign that something very big is going on in here. Yangus and Red narrowed their eyes, Yangus then spoke up current of darkness and evil. That wasn't there when we arrived here a few days ago. Damn whatever is going on must be close to happening. Jessica then spoke up why did you guys come here alone, and why were you that hurt when we found you? Red side in the last room we found a monster we hadn't seen before, not only was it huge but very powerful as well and took everything we had to take it down but we were left in no condition to continue. We were resting and trying to recover a bit so we could leave and get everyone together. Yangus nodded I didn't want to make the gth nervous without at least confirming that something was really going on in here, he's a very busy guy you know? Suddenly Lily who was quietly listening to everything that was being said suddenly spoke but dad would have at least sent someone to check, you didn't have to risk yourselves like this uncle Yangus. Yangus who hadn't noticed Lily nor Era jumped in both surprise and fright core blimey. Lily. What have I told you about sneaking up on old Yangus? Do you want me to die over here wait a minute? Lily. What are you doing here princess? Dot. Harry and Jessica shared a laugh because this reminded them of how King Trode would surprise Yangus all the time, it seems Lily had the same knack for doing that to poor Yangus. Lily grinned at her uncle I've been here all this time, it's your fault you didn't pay attention uncle Yangus and I'm here to help you. Yangus huffed but then grinned at Lily and gave her a head pat which made her giggle, he then turned towards the other little girl who smiled and waved at him and who are you? 
Erit whirled while colorful sparks shot everywhere from her body I am the witch of destruction. Era Potter. Era stopped in a cool pose while smiling. Lily clapped in excitement while Harry and Jessica sweat dripped, red laughed a bit while Yangus just stared at Era Potter. Era nodded. Harry then decided to explain she's my daughter in all but blood Yangus Harry then turned to Eri and you little missy, you have been hanging out with Seraph all too much. Eri giggled but didn't respond to Harry's words practically confirming what he said. Red walked up to Eri and picked her up in her arms well aren't you the cutest twitch I've ever seen Tilda. Eri brightly smiled at Red while Yangus chuckled well, isn't that a surprise? Harry Potter the Dragovian hero has a little daughter? Harry grinned at Yangus and nodded I actually have a lot of kids now but let's catch up later after we deal with whatever is going on here first. Yangus nodded and everyone put on serious faces, Red put Harry down and then turned towards everyone there's another big monster blocking the door to the inner sanctum, and it's very powerful too. Yangus frowned and nodded yeah. It looks similar to a gigant's but it's bigger and orange in color, I've never seen a gigant's like that. Harry raised an eyebrow and hummed an orange in color gigant's. I think I know which monster it is but I have to see it first. Everyone nodded while Harry turned towards Lily confusing Yangus and Red what do you want to do Lily? We can get out of here and inform everyone or we can go ahead and deal with this. Lily frowned and crossed her arms while she thought about her options. Jessica noticing the confused looks on her friends decided to explain Harry decided to bring Lily with us on this trip in order for her to see a bit of the world and have an adventure so she's the leader of our party. Red nodded in understanding and having had to fend for herself since she was a child she can certainly see the benefits to this, Yangus grinned and nodded as so the little princess took the gf's place? Jessica nodded confirming Yangus's statement, he knew that Harry knew what he was doing so he trusted him with this decision so he would follow Lily's orders. Lily then nodded to herself and then looked up to her godfather going by what you said and what uncle Yangus explained, it seems like whatever is going on here is about to happen. I would have gone out and told dad about all this but we might not have time, so I think we should deal with it now. Everyone nodded agreeing with Lily, the little princess of Trodane then nodded okay then let's go see these weird gigant's monsters first. Everyone smiled or grinned at Lily and nodded, then the party of six now followed the corridor and looked around the corner to see the monster. Like Yangus had described the monster is a massive orange gigant's, a cyclops that looked both very powerful and intimidating. Harry frowned at the monster and then turned towards everyone that's an atlas, an S-class monster. Lily who had read the Dragovian archives recognized the name Atlas? That's a fiend and a demon type monster. Harry nodded yes. As you can see this monster is mostly a physical type and a very dangerous one. Any hit that connects might cause massive damage but he also has access to ice and death magic. Yangus huffed great, that overgrown monster is going to be hell to take down. Lily nodded and then looked up to her godfather Papa Harry, what else do you know about it and what would you recommend? Harry smiled at Lily he's highly vulnerable to debuff spells and status conditions so let's weaken it first and then hit him hard. Lily nodded, Eric, Auntie Jessica and you are immune to instant death magic right Papa Harry? Harry nodded and waited to see what his goddaughter had planned, Lily smiled okay, so let's hit him with as many debuff spells as we can. If it starts throwing death magic then Papa Harry, Auntie Jessica, and Eric can block them. The Potter nodded in agreement while Yangus and Red smiled at Lily, after that everyone began to get ready for the upcoming fight. Dash. Atlas was keeping guard at the gate to his master's chamber while he was busy when it was suddenly blasted off his feet by a big explosion. Luckily for the massive monster his back crashed against the big sealed gate behind him and stopped his fall. But before he could even write himself up he was suddenly hit with a bunch of debuff spells, Atlas felt its strength, speed, and defenses lower and that made it angry not appreciating the sneak attack he was hit with so it got up, grabbed his massive oaken club and rushed forward towards the tiny humans that dared attacked him. Dash. The ground shook with every step Atlas took as it approached the party, Yangus suddenly yelled it's on its way towards us. Look alive everyone it's frothing mad at us. The Atlas approached and then swung its oaken club at the party. Everyone quickly jumped out of the way but Yangus, Red, and Lily felt the air blast that was released as the massive club passed them. Red landed on her feet and then looked up at the Atlas. She then began to juggle a few knives before throwing them in rapid succession toward the Atlas's face. The monster protected its face with its free hand but growled in pain as the knives stabbed into his hand. It then raised its club to try and hit Red but Lily appeared flying at his side and kicked the club away from Red. Losing its balance the Atlas couldn't protect itself as Jessica whipped at its face causing it to roar in pain but he wasn't even allowed that because Yangus jumped onto his arm and then kicked off it with his scythe at the ready. 
The Atlas was then slashed in his single eye by Yangus who was sent flying when the massive monster began to flail around in pain but he was caught by Eri who appeared on her boom and caught him by the collar of his vest. Eri then quickly flew down and let go of Yangus as soon as his feet touched the ground she pointed her staff at the massive cyclops while she began to chant gentle winds, gather before me and transform into blades of a cyclone. A massive green cyclone sprouted from beneath Atlas's feet and raised up, the monster began to roar in pain as his entire body began to get cut by Eris' sharp wind spell. Lily then took a big breath and then breathed a big gout of red-hot flames toward the Atlas, the flames mixed with the wind of Eris' spell turning the cyclone into a fire tornado. The monster flailed around as it roared in pain but then it suddenly stomped into the ground releasing a blast of ice outward. Everyone jumped out of the way while the flames were snuffed out by the icy cold air of Atlas's spell. Harry then flashed forward in a burst of darkness and appeared above the massive orange cyclops, the dragon god then raised oblivion while it began to release a big amount of darkness. Harry then stabbed his dark key blade into the atlas's head dark impact. The monster's body was engulfed in an explosion of darkness as soon as oblivion collided with its head. The blast threw the atlas off his feet into the ground as Harry disappeared in a blur only to reappear beside Jessica who had a massive fireball above her head. She then waved her hand towards the downed monster Kefrizzle. The massive fireball suddenly shot forward and landed on top of the atlas's chest causing it to be engulfed in a pillar of swirling flames, the monster roared in pain as it was once again set to blaze. The flames soon dissipated and Lily got ready to finish the monster off while it was struggling to get up, the little princess of Trodane held her Dragovian god sword up which then let out a massive amount of light. Lily then took off running towards the downed monster and jumped up. She then whirled in the air a few moments before dropping sword first on top of the atlas's chest causing the massive monster to gasp in pain. Lily then pushed the sword as deep as she could into the orange cyclops chest and then loudly yelled take this, heaven's blade. The light engulfing Lily's dragovian god sword exploded outwards from within the atlas's chest causing the monster to roar in pain and begin to aggressively squirm underneath Lily until it stopped and growled at her. It then did something that surprised everyone puny humans. You're all too late. Lord Hagen is about to summon the God of Destruction and there's nothing any of you can do about it. Gag. The Atlas twitched once and then dropped dead on the ground where it quickly burst into little wisps of light but no one cheered at their victory right now, now everyone was worried about the dying words of the monster. Especially Harry who recognized the name it just said, Hagen a corrupted cleric monster, a demon lord of the rank X but the fact that this demon lord was known as a religious cultist who worshipped the evil god of destruction Malroth is what had him a bit concerned. The fact that Atlas mentioned the evil god of destruction before dying alerted Harry that he and the rest of the group were about to have a big fight on their hands. But then he turned his head towards Lily and Derry and watched as they willfully stared at the door seemingly ready to deal with anything coming their way and he couldn't help but smile proudly at both of them. No matter what they might find in the chamber Harry knew the girls can handle it. Of course, he will be ready to intervene at any time to show this so-called ancient evil god of destruction how insignificant it is compared to him a dragon god. But for now, he'll leave it to Erie and Lily and keep an eye on everything. Harry then turned his head towards Jessica who smiled and nodded at him already knowing what was going through his head right now. He then looked at Yangus and Red and even though they looked worried both of them smiled and nodded at him, both of them trusted Harry with their lives so they were willing to go along with whatever plan he might have. Harry then called out to the girls Eri. Lily, come here a second, there's something we have to speak about real quick. Both Eri and Lily turned their heads towards Harry and then immediately ran up to him. Lily looked up at her godfather with a worried expression on her face Papa Harry, did you hear what that cyclops said? Harry nodded and patted her head yes which is why I have to explain a little bit of who Hagen and the evil god of destruction Malroth are before we head in to fight them. Lily nodded along with Eric, given how serious Harry is they knew what he was about to tell them was really serious so they will give him all of their attention and got ready for what was to come. Lily already had an idea of who Hagen and Malroth is since she had seen their names in the Dragovian Sanctuary archives and a part of her was very nervous since both of these monsters almost destroyed the world once. But as her godfather told her, she is a dragon, and dragons do not hesitate and don't succumb to fear so she will be ready to do anything to protect her world even if it meant fighting two demon lords. Dash. Inside the inner sanctum a monster who was praying on an altar suddenly and maliciously grinned as it then stood up straight it seems the atlas was taken down but no matter. The preparations are almost complete and soon my god will descend into the world and bring salvation through destruction. The monster chuckled and then turned towards the massive gate leading to his chambers and no one will be able to stop me, 
not even these meddlesome humans that have come here, so come little heroes, and find your deaths. Chapter 116, Chapter 116 After everyone took down the atlas they cautiously approached the gate with concern vivid in their eyes, Lily narrowed her eyes at the gate and then suddenly tapped it with her sword. A transparent barrier pushed her Dragovian god sword away from the gate causing Lily to frown, looks like it's sealed with a powerful spell Lily then turned her head towards her godfather Papa Harry can you open it with your keyblades? Harry smiled and nodded he then lifted O Keeper up towards the gate, and light began to coalesce at its tip until it gathered enough power, and then the gathered light shot forward as a beam until it hit the gate. The barrier protecting the gate glimmered and then shattered like glass while a loud click echoed throughout the hallway. Harry put down his keyblade and nodded to Lily. Lily nodded back to her godfather and then pushed the massive gate open while lifting her shield up, everyone then walked inside and into the inner chamber. Until they reached the innermost area, there standing and seemingly waiting stood a humanoid monster unlike any of them had ever seen but what had everyone except Harry, Eric and Jessica nervous was the darkness and power rolling off the monster. Lily stared at the obviously powerful monster and noticed its appearance, a blue-skinned humanoid being who wields a crystal ball-topped staff in his right hand, on his head, he wears a finned helmet bearing a circular gem at the forehead, around his neck a necklace with a crystal adornment, and has a shroud draped over his body that prominently shows off a stylized bat. Lily recognized that stylized bat as a symbol of a cult of monsters that existed a very long time ago a cult that worshipped a monster known as an evil god of destruction and with this Lily recognized the monster before her. Lily frowned knowing who this monster is from having read about him in the Dragovian Sanctuary Archives Yule. Hagen the devoted head cleric of Malroth's faith and the head priest of the cult known as the Children of Hagen but. You were defeated a long time ago. Hagen maliciously grinned and spread his arms wide a beautiful destructive darkness spurred my soul from whence it rested and breathed life back to it bringing me back to life. Hagen glared at the group and you're right. I was murdered by a trio of meddlesome children a long time ago but now that I'm back and those children and their wretched descendants seem to be gone from this world I'm free to continue with my plans. Everyone frowned while Hagen continued to rant this world has changed a lot but it is still riddled with arrogant and foolish humans. And so I, the benevolent Hagen shall bring salvation to this world, by destroying each and every human living in it. Ha 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 ha. Lily growled and glared at Hagen you're insane. Just how you were described in the archives you're nothing but an obsessed zealot, but you're wrong about one thing. Hagen stopped laughing and glared at Lily oh. And what could I be wrong about child? Just what do you mean? Lily grinned at Hagen which made him raise an eyebrow the descendants of Erdrick might be gone from this world but that doesn't mean there aren't any heroes left to stop you. Hagen stared at Lily for a few moments before beginning to chuckle until he downright began to cackle in amusement ha ha ha. And you're one of those so-called heroes? Don't make me laugh. You're nothing but a child. What can you possibly do? Lily looked down and then took a big breath and softly exhaled. Everyone stared at her curious as to what Lily was going to do but Harry just grinned already knowing what Lily is doing. Lily closed her eyes and looked for the dragon inside of her within her soul and as always it responded to her call. Lily opened her eyes which began to glow as blue energy exploded from her sending an air blast outwards from her body. Yangus and Red covered their faces and braced themselves so they wouldn't be sent flying by the energy bursting out of Lily while Hagen glared at Lily with a sneer. Jessica, Eric and Harry just stood beside Lily unaffected by the energy pouring out of her, and just silently watched Hagen. Lily then roared as even more blue scales began to manifest on her skin. Two massive dragonic wings sprouted from her shoulder as two black horns grew backward from her head. Her hands began to grow black claws and she exhaled a thick white smoke out of her mouth which now had fangs growing in it. Hagen hit the ground with his staff in aggravation what is this? What sort of creature are you child? No monster or human should have this much power unless they're a demon lord. Lily sighed as she felt the full force of her dragon knight power flowing through her body. I'm a dragon knight. And princess of Drodane. And I won't let you do whatever you want in this world Hagen. Lily exploded forward and disappeared in a blur of blue light, Hagen's eyes widened in surprise, and barely had time to block Lily's downward sword slash with his staff. A blast of air blasted off in all directions from the collision while Hagen growled, being a magic user meant his physical strength wasn't very high compared to other demon lords but it wasn't anything to snuff at either, and this little girl before him was actually making him struggle. Lily glared at Hagen and then roared a thunder slash. Lily's sword suddenly lit up with lightning causing Hagen to grunt and actually get violently pushed back by the strength behind Lily's sword technique. As Hagen was pushed back he stopped himself by stabbing his staff on the ground, 
He then looked up and glared at Lily I won't let you get in the way of my plans, foolish child. Hagen pointed his claw towards Lily and loudly cast a spell kaboom. A ray of orange energy shot forward towards Lily who used her shield to block the spell. As soon as Hagen's spell crashed against Lily's shield she was suddenly engulfed in a massive explosion that shook the dark temple, Yangus and Red getting worried for Lily suddenly yelled out in concern at the same time Lily. But Lily suddenly shot out from the smoke of the explosion seemingly unaffected by the spell, Hagen's eyes widen in shock what? Dot. But he didn't have time to ponder anymore because Lily was on him in seconds intending to impale him with her sword but Hagen threw himself to the side to avoid her. He then pointed his claw at Lily who was forced to stop herself Kazumu. A blast of pitch black lightning shot forward from his hand towards Lily but then Eri operated in front of her and hit the ground with her staff reflect. A bright barrier of light spread from around Eri and not only blocked Hagen's dark lightning spell but sent it back at him, the demon lord tilted his body away from his own spell in surprise barely dodging it. But then Harry appeared behind him in a flash of twilight don't forget about us Hagen. Harry swung Oath Keeper towards Hagen's back. Hagen looked back damn it all. He barely had time to block Harry's strike but unlike Lily's attack, he was sent flying and crashing through a stone pillar completely destroying it and making him roll on the ground a couple of times. Hagen then stopped his momentum by stabbing the claws of his free hand into the ground but he was still unable to stop himself for a few seconds leaving five deep and long claw marks on the ground. Hagen then immediately looked up at Harry with eyes wide and full of shock what? That strength is inhuman. Who know what are you? Dot. Harry grinned you have bigger concerns Hagen Harry pointed to the side and Hagen followed his finger until he saw Jessica gathering a large amount of energy. Hagen gaped as Jessica began to chant I, who stand in the full light of the heavens, command thee, who opens the gates of hell. Come forth, divine lightning. This ends now. Indignation. Hagen gasped as a massive magical circle spread from underneath his feet what is that he didn't even get to finish what he was saying when multiple lightning bolts rained down on him until a massive one dropped on him which allowed boom and crackle. Hagen screamed in pain from the obviously powerful spell Jessica just hit him with yuck. Yangus and Red Gabe did the spell Jessica just used, they both knew that she is a very powerful mage but the spell she just dropped on Hagen was something else entirely, it was plainly on a whole other level. Jessica's spell finally subsided leaving a severely charred Hagen but the demon lord quickly raised his star full heal. Hagen's wounds and injuries instantly healed but he was now glaring at the party both warily and with a lot of unadulterated hate you pathetic mongrels. How dare you force me to use my most powerful healing spell. But even though Hagen had said that indignantly he was now very much aware that this group of humans weren't normal, especially the red-headed woman and the black-haired man. Those two were seriously powerful much more than him but they seemed content to just play around with him but then he also had to worry about the white-haired girl and the dragon knight. Even though they are both young they were very powerful as well and that made Hagen worried, I can't believe I will be forced to do this again. But he couldn't yet do what he was planning on doing, he still needed to prepare a bit more negative energy for this to work so he's going to have to continue to play with these humans. That said he wasn't about to let himself be pummeled away by these worms, Hagen raised his staff towards the sky and then swung it hard towards the party Kazwashl. A blast of sharp wind shot forward from Hagen's staff and headed toward the party, Eri then grabbed her wand and pointed at the blast of wind, and began to twirl it around. Hagen felt his control over his spell snap away from him shocking him and making him flinch, Eri then began to direct the blast of wind with her wand and made it head up towards the ceiling where it dissipated. Eri then pointed her wand towards Hagen and brought into her mind the bad and sad memories of her past and the pain the Shihasekai had brought her and fed it into her next spell sectum sempra. She waved her wand and shot forward the deadly dark curse towards Hagen who was caught by surprise by the anger-filled curse heading his way and was unable to avoid it. Hagen wailed in pain as deep lacerations burst open from all over his body while his purple blood splashed all over the place, this is a dark curse that her mommy Hermione found in a potion book while she was in Hogwarts and she had added it to the Potter household library. Era had learned it because it made use of her bad memories and anger and she believed that if she had to live with all of that, might as well turn them into something useful. Hagen growled and wobbled a bit from the damage he received from Era's dark curse, he raised his staff and casted a spell full eel. But the powerful healing spell failed to fully heal Eri's dark curse effects. Hagen looked livid now as the lacerations opened up again and he began to bleed once more what sort of dark spell was that child? You filthy humans dare create such a spell and use it against me? But Lily suddenly appeared in front of him shut up hypocrite. 
Lily lashed out with her sword and Hagen was barely able to parry her slash with his staff but Lily pressed on with her attack forcing Hagen to backpedal while trying to avoid getting bisected by Lily's attacks. Lily was seriously impressed, even though Hagen was seriously hurt and bleeding all over the place he was still strong enough to fight back, it comes to show the tenacity and strength of the demon lords of old, and Lily respected the heroes who fought them in the past even more now. But eventually, Hagen couldn't continue to parry and block Lily's attack especially since with each attack she lashed out with she seemed to be getting stronger and stronger and it was beginning to worry Hagen quite a bit. But he then was too slow to block a raising slash from Lily and Hagen ended up screaming in pain as Lily cut open his chest, the demon lord grabbed hold of his chest in pain and huffed as he began to step away from Lily. Hagen huffed as he glared at Lily, his clothes began to be stained with the purple of his blood to think that I would be bested yet again by a bunch of brats. Lily glared at Hagen as she watched him struggle to even breathe from all the injuries he sustained especially from Era's dark curse that it would not heal, Hagen then maliciously grinned but you're too late. I just finished gathering all the negative energy I needed. Now. I forfeit my life to the great god Malroth. Raise and destroy this world. Hagen began to cackle as blue flames engulfed his body and began to consume what was left of his life force Lily had to actually jump back to avoid being burned by those highly powerful magical flames. The ground began to shake as the air inside the inner sanctum began to, to groan heavy, Lily had never felt anything like it before and she was quite honestly beginning to feel afraid but then her godfather's voice snapped her out of it Lily. Lily turned her head towards her godfather and saw him waving at her to come to him and Lily immediately took off running towards her godfather. Lily arrived at where her godfather and everyone else had gathered Papa Harry. What's going on? What is this pressure I'm feeling? Harry looked around for a few moments and watched as a bunch of blue fireballs began to light up all over the place that Fool sacrificed his life to use as a catalyst to revive the evil god of destruction Malroth. All of the negative energy that was gathered here from the around the world is now being used to resurrect him. Lily narrowed her eyes and looked down, what should we do Papa Harry? Harry smiled at his goddaughter, she still had a lot to learn and hadn't had the chance to experience situations like this so. Of course, she would get a bit afraid and concerned so he patted her head it will be alright Lily don't worry just fight with everything you have. Lily looked up at her godfather and felt at ease seeing his smile, Yangus and Red looked a bit nervous but they also seemed to be ready to fight. Era walked up to Lily and handed her a miracle gel with a big and bright smile eat it so you can recover Lily, that hybrid form of yours must burn a lot of energy. Lily smiled back at her friend and immediately at it. She then felt all of her sore muscles feel better and her energy fill up to the top making her smile I love medical gels. Everyone smiled at Lily, Yangus walked up to Harry sorry mate, Red and I were caught by surprise by Lily's transformation that we weren't any help in the fight but we will fight against this so called Malroth. Harry grinned at Yangus and nodded just be careful, Malroth is above the level of Rapturn so be alert and don't take any unnecessary risk. Yangus grinned at Harry and nodded while Red just smiled and got herself ready for what will be the biggest fight of her life yet. The air began to tremble in the inner sanctum as an evil and heavy presence began to emerge from the deepest parts of the underworld of the world of light and everyone could feel it causing the party of warriors to get ready. Suddenly a massive spiral of blue flames burst out from the very ground, Harry quickly reacted and raised O Keeper above his head and created a barrier of light that engulfed the party just in time. The blue flames were repelled by Harry's light barrier and everyone watched as the pillar of flames began to destroy the dark temple around them, Harry suddenly narrowed his eyes and loudly called out to everyone here he comes. The blue pillar suddenly exploded outwards as a terrifying roar echoed throughout the entire area of the now destroyed inner sanctum, Lily looked up with wide eyes full of shock as Malroth emerged from the blue flames he's enormous. Harry huffed in annoyance damn, Hagen was able to fully complete the ritual. That's Malroth's avatar at full power. Lily gulped a bit as he stared at the rank X monster in front of her, a demon lord known as the god of destruction and master of destruction. This Malroth was different from what he was described by the Dragovian Sanctuary archives, in the archives he was described as a green-scaled monster who was no bigger than an atlas. But Lily understood her godfather's words, in the archives, the three descendants of Erdruk had stopped Hagen from completing the ritual and that forced him to sacrifice what little life he had left to summon Malroth. So the avatar that was summoned at that time might have been a weaker one from the incomplete ritual but this one, this was definitely something else and as Lily gaped at the massive blue scaled, four-armed demon lord she couldn't help but feel a bit nervous. Malroth roared and then shot upwards completely destroying the dark temple now and the mountains above it to reach the surface, Jessica gasped it's going outside. 
we have to stop it before it reaches a populated area. Harry nodded I'm taking on my dragon form. Looks like this will be a flying battle so get ready. Once I lift off there's no going back. Everyone nodded and got themselves ready. Lily took a big breath to calm her heart, and Dara who noticed her friend's nervousness walked up to her and grabbed her hand. Lily turned her head towards Zara who smiled at her it's going to be fine. We can do this Lily. So let's show off a bit. Lily smiled at Harry and nodded, Yangus walked up to Harry mate, I don't think your dragon form is big enough for all of us to take a ride. Harry grinned at Yangus ha 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 you missed a lot Yangus. Don't worry. I have this covered, now watch this. Harry walked away from everyone and took on his dragon form with a loud roar surprising Yangus and Red who gaped at his massive size and dragon form. Yangus then chuckled and shook his head I can't wait to hear the stories you have that explain this massive new dragon form of yours mate. Harry chuckled and then telekinetically brought everyone to him and onto the top of his head don't worry about falling off I'll catch you so just give Malroth everything you have. Everyone nodded and Harry then took off flying up through the hole Malroth had made with his own escape from the Dark Temple, as soon as everyone made it out of the destroyed mountains, the Dark Temple finally and fully collapsed. This time it was fully destroyed and Harry made sure as he used his renegon to look at the entire structure of the temple and watched it crumble and be buried under tons of rock. A loud roar alerted everyone of Malroth's location, Harry turned his head towards where the loud roar came from and watched as Malroth flew above the ocean towards the Bakara region. He immediately took off flying at full speed to intercept the massive demon lord lord from reaching the mainland. Lily watched as her godfather's massive dragon form easily caught up with Malroth and once he was above him, her godfather lashed out with his tail and slapped Malroth away from the mainland and onto a set of deserted islands. Malroth roared in both surprise and pain as he was struck from above and sent crashing into some islands, it quickly righted and turned its massive body towards what had struck him only to be grabbed by Harry who then took a bite into his neck. Harry held on to Malroth who roared in pain and Jessica seeing a chance loudly called out Harry has him held down. Attack him with everything you have and don't worry about Harry nothing can hurt him. Everyone nodded and immediately began to attack, Lily jumped off Harry's head onto Malroth's shoulders and ran towards his head with her sword alight with fire inferno slash. Lily jumped towards Malroth's head and slashed down on the side of his face, half of Malroth's face was engulfed with red hot flames before those flames exploded into a massive spiraling pillar of fire. Malroth roared and tried to pry himself out of Harry's hold but Harry refused to let him go so instead the demon lord lashed out towards Lily with his snake head tail. Lily saw the attack coming and jumped back to avoid it but the snake on Malroth's tail roared and then spat out a massive gout of flames at her, Lily covered herself with her shield and braced herself for pain as the flames travelled to her too fast. But Harry appeared in front of her riding her broom and raised her staff towards the massive blast of flames coming at them, massive barriers of water rose around them and protected both Harry and Lily from the flames. Suddenly whip lashed out towards the snake's head and struck it on the side of its head stopping it from breathing fire on the girls, as the snake's head whipped to the side from the force of Jessica's whip, three knives suddenly came flying and stabbed into one of its eyes causing it to roar and flail around in pain. Yangus then jumped up and spun around while brandishing an axe he swapped for his scythe which began to ominously glow as he began to fall toward the top of Malroth's snake-headed tail helm splitter. Yangus slammed his axe on top of Malroth's snake-headed tail causing it to slam on top of Malroth's shoulder, Ari and Lily seeing an opening immediately moved to take advantage of it. Lily jumped over Ari and took off running while engulfing her Dragovian god sword with her energy, since Lily was still in her hybrid form the speed and force she used to take off running actually created a massive boom. Meanwhile, Era pointed her staff toward Malroth's snake-headed tail and began to chant O Divine Spear, run my enemies through. Holy Lance. Era's holy light spell created a multitude of spears of light that immediately dropped on top of Malroth's snake-headed tail and pinned it to his shoulder, Lily suddenly blur right into the side of the snake's head with her Dragovian god sword glowing with deep blue energy. She then swung her blade as hard as she could light impulse, Lily's sword technique collided with the snake's head and then blue energy exploded outwards into a bunch of light blasts that not only destroyed Malroth's snake-headed tail but also struck Malroth in the face as well. Malroth's howled in pain from both the loss of his tail and being struck by Lily's sword technique, his body flailed around so hard that Harry lost his grip for a second and that allowed Malroth to push Harry off with his massive forearms. Lily, Yangus, and Dara were sent flying off Malroth's shoulder but as promised Harry caught them with his telekinesis and brought them to the top of his head. 
Mal Roth roared at the party that had been able to actually hurt him and spread his forearms wide. Suddenly from the sky black lightning began to lash out and Harry immediately took evasive action to avoid the dark lightning from hitting his passengers hang on. Everyone did as Harry ordered but couldn't help but scream as Harry twirled around and moved at high speed to avoid the pitch black lightning, well except Lily and Eri who were whooping in fun. Harry chuckled as he heard Yangus and Red curse him out as he dodged Malroth's spell. As soon as the black lightning finished raining down Harry then shot forward towards Malroth and tackled him into one of the deserted islands which shook as two massive beings crashed on it. Harry grabbed hold of Malroth's shoulders and then took a massive breath which alerted Malroth of what Harry was planning to do so he began to lash out with his four fists. Malroth punched Harry's body as hard as he could but the dragon god was unaffected by his strikes and proceeded to breathe white flames into Malroth's face causing the evil god of destruction to howl in pain. Lily was awed as she watched her godfather breathe holy fire and hoped he would teach her how to do that later. She also knew he was holding back since he wanted her and Derry to fight and learn from this battle and Lily was glad he was willing to humor her desire to grow strong. It made Lily admire just how much control her godfather must have to be able to fight at the same level of power she has and how he lowers the power behind each of his attacks whether they be magical or physical to make the same amount of damage hers does. It made her respect her godfather that much more and it made her feel safe knowing that if she were to fail her godfather would easily take care of Manroth but she wasn't about to fail. Not when her godfather was putting in all of this effort into helping her grow, so as her papa Harry finished breathing holy fire onto Malroth's face she jumped up into the sky and spread her dragon wings, and began to gather her energy into her sword and body. Air immediately began to chant as she saw Lily get ready for a big spell oh holy one, cast thy purifying light upon these corrupt souls. Light of judgment. Judgment. Harry immediately pushed off Malroth's body and soon after big beams of pink light began to rain from the heavens right on top of Malroth's body causing him to roar in pain as his body was engulfed in explosions of pink light. Lily finished gathering energy into her body and sword and got ready to use a technique her father had shown her once, she looked down and then shot downward toward Malroth who was still reeling in pain from Mera's holy light spell. Lily came down from the sky engulfed in blue energy making her look like a falling star as she roared the name of her technique Dragon Soul. Malroth couldn't do anything but watch on as a blue comet of blue light that suddenly took the form of a roaring dragon came crashing down onto his body engulfing him in a massive explosion of blue energy. Yangus, Red, Jessica, and even Harry's eyes widen in surprise core blimey mate, I didn't know the little princess could use the gf's special attack. Harry chuckled I didn't know either, that Lily. She's just full of surprises. The blue energy explosion subsided and Lily was left on top of Malroth's chest huffing for air since that attack took a lot out of her. Harry immediately picked her up with telekinesis and lifted her up to his head where air immediately gave her a miracle gel. Lily at it right away and gave Aria a smile phew. That took a lot out of me. I wonder how daddy can do it so easily? But before anyone could answer her Malroth shot off from the ground and into the sky where it roared, Lily's eyes widen in surprise what? My dragon soul didn't do anything to him? Harry softly shook his head careful not to send anyone flying off no, he definitely felt that one but now he's angry and wary, it's not every day that someone can hurt a monster of his caliber. Yangus scoffed so now he knows not to underestimate us huh? Malroth's claws suddenly began to glow with darkness and he then swung them at Harry unleashing a multitude of black energy slashes at Harry. Harry immediately covered himself and everyone else with his wings but everyone could feel the explosions caused by the black energy waves gliding against Harry's wings. Lily narrowed her eyes, Papa Harry. Do you think an advanced rash will be enough to finish Malroth off? Harry thought about it for a few moments you're going to have to overcharge the technique but you might need an extra push in order to take him out with one strike. Lily looked down and began to, to think of a way to increase the power of her advanced trash, Eri then suddenly spoke up and if I add my energy into Lily's advanced trash daddy? Dot. Harry hummed as explosions continued to go off a combo attack? It might work but both of you must be in perfect sync or the technique might blow up on you guys. Jessica hummed an advanced trash with Eri's energy added to the mix, energy that has both god slaying and dragon slaying properties? This is going to be big. Harry nodded in agreement yes it will but girls you have to be sure. Both Harry and Lily looked at each other in silence for a few seconds before smiling and nodding at each other. Lily then got her Dragovian god sword in position let's do it Harry. Let's defeat Malroth together. Play Dragon Knight, the adventure of Diost. Lily once again ignited her body with her blue energy as she began to focus all of it onto her Dragovian god sword which began to glow blue and loudly vibrate causing Yangus, red 
and even Jessica's eyes to widen in surprise. Harry however smiled, Lily had come a long way and began to tap into her true power as a dragon knight, the fact that she was able to enter into her hybrid form and sustain it this long was proof of how strong she has become. As Lily prepared her technique Hera pointed her hand towards Lily's Dragovian god sword and began to gather her energy, suddenly her horn grew and began to let out a big amount of golden light as she focused. As Hera mixed her energy with Lily's, the Dragon Knight's blue energy began to mix with the golden light until the Dragovian god sword began to glow golden as well. Lily smiled as she felt Hera's energy fill her body and mix with hers, as she felt the weight of Hera's energy she came to understand that her friend had lived a hard life but even though her energy was heavy and made Lily want to cry for her friend, it also felt warm and kind. So instead of crying Lily smiled and promised herself to be the best friend Hera could ever want Papa Harry I'm ready. I just need an opening. Harry grinned all right. I'll give you one, so give it all you have. Both Harry and Lily nodded and loudly exclaimed the same thing at the same time right. From Harry's back, countless chains made out of chakra shot out at high speed towards Malroth who was too busy attacking Harry in rage to notice them until it was too late, and found himself being tightly wrapped by them stopping him from attacking. Malroth struggled but he began to lose the connection to his power which began to make him panic and confusion. Harry suddenly opened his wings and Malroth was able to see Lily preparing some sort of attack. The demon lord felt the power behind that attack and began to struggle even more. He began to feel dread to his very core as he saw the little human sword lit up with a power he did not understand. Lily glared at Malroth go back to hell where you belong, and never show your face in my world ever again. Lily then shot off from Harry's head as the golden energy from her sword began to now spiral and violently vibrate. Lily flapped her dragon wings to increase her speed and as soon as she came close to Malroth she unleashed her attack of Anstrash. Lily swung her Dragovian god sword as hard as she could unleashing a massive golden energy slash that to everyone's amazement actually cracked the air like glass as it struck Malroth who was unable to move and took on the attack full on with a roar of pain until he twitched and stopped moving. Harry gaped that a Vanstrash actually cut through space and time. Harry then remembered Eris' quirk and what it did, her quirk must have given Lily's Avan Strash time manipulation properties, amazing. Malroth twitched one more time and then shattered like glass signifying his defeat while Harry made his adamantite ceiling chains dissipate. Lily now spent and very tired went back to her human form and smiled finally. Now I'm going to sleep. Night. Night. Lily's eyes closed and fell asleep but before she could even begin to fall Harry caught her with his telekinesis and brought her to him and the rest of the party well done Lily now sleep and rest, you definitely earned it. Lily just snored in response causing everyone to share a laugh while Harry laid her down on his head, Era lay down beside her and decided to also take a nap. Harry and everyone smiled watching both girls sleep, deciding that it was time to go home Harry took off flying towards Drodane so everyone can rest and let Hiro and Medea know what happened. Still, Harry was feeling mighty proud of the girls for taking down not only a demon lord but two however, for now, they earned their rest, and Harry was more than happy to let them do so. Chapter 117 Chapter 117 Lily groaned as she opened her eyes and blinked as the sunlight coming through a window hit her face, she sat up and rubbed her head as she began to look around only to smile when she found Dara sleeping beside her. She then noticed she was in her room back in Castle Trodane, which confused her quite a bit since the last thing she remembers is hitting Malroth with her golden Avan Strash with all of her energy and then falling asleep. Papa Harry must have brought us back home after we defeated Malroth. Lily quietly got out of her bed so she wouldn't wake her up. She smiled as she felt the fluffy rug underneath her bed with her feet, and after enjoying the rug for a bit she quickly grabbed her shoes and put them on. Once she did so. She then immediately left her room in search of her godfather and auntie plus she also wanted to make sure both Yangus and Red were okay so she ran through the halls of Castle Drodane surprising the maids and soldiers roaming around. Though they soon smile happy to see their princess up and about as usual. Dash. Harry had been informing Hiro and Medea of what had happened in the dark ruins and even told them of what they found in the waterfall cave as well. Needless to say, both the king and queen of Drodane were disturbed by everything Harry told them. The fact that such a thing could have happened not only once but twice under their nose was a very legitimate concern now, Hiro sighed and leaned back on the couch of the living quarters where everyone chose to gather to speak. Medea turned her head towards Hiro and worriedly watched her husband sigh, Hiro then spoke up unbelievable. An A-rank monster and two X-rank demon lords were at large and no one knew. 
Everyone frowned upon hearing Hiro's statements and couldn't agree more with his concerns. Hiro turned his gaze towards Harry if you hadn't come here to visit now and haven't decided to take the scenic route while visiting our friends I dread to think what would have had happened Harry. Harry shrugged this sort of thing happens to me often enough that at some point I thought my presence was the cause for these sorts of events to happen but it turns out that no, I'm in fact this lucky. Kinda wished I had a different kind of luck though but oh well the Potter curse strikes again. Hiro chuckled and shook his head. He then turned to Yangus and Red who were silently digesting everything Harry told them about what he had been doing in other worlds. Both of them were shocked by everything Harry told them and Hiro couldn't blame them. The sheer scope of Harry's adventures was enough to give anyone pause but right now the King of Trodane had more pressing matters to deal with Yangus. You should have come here when you first heard of these rumors. Yangus turned his head towards Hiro and sheepishly grinned sorry Kf. I just wanted to confirm things before I came to you. I was also sort of hoping they were baseless rumors you know? But luck wasn't on my side this time. Hiro sighed but still smiled at his friend next time come here first and we'll think about what to do alright? You almost got yourself and Red Guild. Yangus grinned and then nodded to Hiro you got it Kf. Everyone smiled at both friends while Red turned her head towards Harry say. You mentioned something about a natural dungeon that's full of treasure and that's available for everyone right? Harry grinned already knowing why Red was asking that that's right but you do need to join a guild in order to get an adventurer's card, that card acts like a bank for your money and allows access to all of the facilities in Kyoto. Red looked down you don't suppose Neo Kyoto would need the services of two thieves right? Harry chuckled which made Red raise an eyebrow at him, Jessica was the one to answer her question though Kyoto accepts all talents Red, we even have a thieves guild in Neo Kyoto. Red and Yang escaped while Harry continued on sometimes in the natural dungeon, buildings and structures take form and we need people capable of infiltrating places like that, there are also locked chests found all over the dungeon so parties usually tend to take a thief with them when they go dungeon diving. Red happily grinned while Medea hummed but don't you have ninjas? They should be able to do everything a thief can do and even better no? Harry smiled at Medea sure but ninjas are usually used for scouting and infiltration missions not only in the dungeon but out in my world as well so we rather not have to use them for something that other kinds of talents can take care of just as well as they can, plus ninjas are usually used for assassinations. Medea nodded and looked to be thinking about something for a little while I guess a big community like Neo Kyoto has to have a lot of enemies, so a unit in charge of shady things like spying and assassination is needed. Harry nodded yes and given the fact that our so-called enemies are supernatural in nature we can't really send weak people to spy or take them out which is why we either use our own Anbu core or as we have been doing as of late, hire ninjas from Konoha and Suna. Yangus, Red, Medea, and Hiro nodded but before anyone could further comment about all of this the living quarters door slammed open startling almost everyone in the room except Jessica and Harry who had sensed who was coming their way. Harry turned his head towards the doorway and smiled as he saw Lily standing there with a big wide smile on her face, as soon as Lily saw her godfather she took off running and jumped towards Harry. Harry widened his eyes and caught the excitable princess of Trodane in his arms, Lily, however, was loudly laughing as Harry caught her papa Harry we won. We beat Malroth and Hagen. Everyone in the room smiled as Lily happily celebrated her victories while Harry chuckled and hugged Lily we sure didn't you fought wonderfully Lily. You truly gave it your all against two monsters known as demon lords. Lily brightly smiled but then shook her head I was only able to fight like I did because I had everyone with me. I was really scared at some point. And there were times I doubted that I could do anything. But I still tried my best. Harry smiled there's nothing wrong with that Lily. This world taught me that you don't have to always deal with things by yourself. Here I learned that together with those you care about and love there's nothing you can't pull off. Lily looked up to her godfather and gave him all of her attention while Harry went on that belief only grew as I continued with my adventures and over time I made it my symbol. You don't have to do things alone and you certainly don't have to hold the weight of the world on your shoulders by yourself, not when you have so many friends and family willing to carry that weight and the world with you. Everyone smiled at Harry. Having been there as Harry grew and learned in this world they knew that he lived a very lonely life before coming here so he was used to always relying on himself but little by little as he spent time with Hiro, Medea and later Jessica he came to learn that he didn't have to do things by himself. Sure saying goodbye when it was time for him to leave was always difficult but as he traveled the multiverse he came to learn that the bonds he made stayed with him throughout his adventures. As silly and as embarrassing as it sounds Harry truly believed in the bonds he made and he cherishes each and every one he has made with all of his heart, and it is something that he always passes down to friends, family, and students.
This is why he has always been willing to share his knowledge and power with his loved ones, not only for them to be able to defend themselves but also be able to stand with him. Lily smiled at Harry and nodded feeling reassured now but there was one more thing Lily learned out of this whole adventure and she needed to voice it at Papa Harry. I want to be stronger. I want to be the most powerful dragon in the multiverse. Harry chuckled in amusement you have a little bit of competition there Lily, there are plenty of powerful dragons in my world and that's not counting Hope, Morgan, and Eric. But Lily just grinned I know. But like you said, I can count on my friends and family to help me plus a good dragon needs a good rival right? Harry grinned as long as you don't become destructive and annoying like Drake and Albion then you're right. Lily giggled, she had heard of the heavenly dragons Albion and Drake from Morgan when she met her, and even though she felt they were being silly causing so much trouble she still was awed at the fact that it needed the devils, angels, and fallen angels to work together kill them, to her that was very impressive. Medea smiled and stood up from the couch she was sitting on and walked up to both Lily and Harry, once she was close she grabbed Lily into her arms from Harry and smiled at her daughter. Lily brightly smiled at her mom mom, did Papa Harry tell you about everything we did? Dot. Medea giggled and nodded yes and I'm very proud of you Lily, not only were you smart throughout your adventure but you also were very brave. Lily blushed feeling a bit bashful at being praised by her mom like that but then she still had a big wide smile on her face, Hiro stood up as well and walked up to his wife and daughter. Once he was close to them he gave his daughter a head pat which made her giggle you're a hero Lily, your actions saved the world of light from a horrible fate. Lily widened her eyes as the weight of what she had accomplished finally hit her, at the time she didn't think too much about it since she was more worried about stopping Hagen and then Manroth from doing whatever they were planning. But the fact of the matter was that she and everyone who fought by her side were heroes though most of them already were already considered heroes though both Eri and she weren't. So Lily sheepishly smiled at her dad who chuckled in amusement didn't think about it until now huh? Lily shook her head while the adults laughed a bit confusing her but her dad explained, we know what it's like, at the time our only concern was stopping rat turn but when we did and people began to call us heroes it finally hit us that what we did was an amazing thing. Lily awed at her dad and then looked around towards all the adults who nodded and smiled at her, Hira then continued on you should be proud of what you have accomplished my daughter but I'm also so proud of you as well. Lily teared up a bit but then reached out to her dad and gave him a hug while her mom still held her in her arms, Hiro smiled and continued speaking which is why we decided to do something very important for you Lily. Lily let go of her dad and listened to what he was going to say next, Hiro smiled I'm glad that you yourself are aware that there's still a lot for you to learn, that you want to get stronger and to help you your mother and I decided you should go live with your godfather for a little while, that way you can train with him. Lily's eyes widen in surprise. She then turned towards her mum who smiled and nodded yes, we think this would be the best for Lily, plus your father and I can come to visit you whenever we want so there's no problem there but when we see just how much you've grown not only in strength but in maturity during this small trip you took we can't help to think that this is the best for you. Lily stared at his mum for a few moments completely surprised but before she could say anything her dad spoke first I've said it before but this castle is too small for you Lily and so is this world as well. I'm sure you will grow even more learning from your godfather and the rest of the Potter family plus you'll get to a friends your age as well something that you can't find here in Trodane. That was true, in Trodane there weren't any children her age and the older kids didn't want to play with her because she was the princess and other such stupid reasons. It used to really bother her but she then found her passion for the sword and focused on that instead but she had always wanted friends, she now has a best friend in error but having more would make things even more fun for her plus she really did like both Hope and Morgan too. To her, they were the coolest girls ever and they treated her like a little sister which was awesome to Lily, so Lily nodded to her father with a happy smile on her face. Hiro grinned at Lily I would tell you to behave and not get into trouble but since you're going to be living with the Potters that's almost impossible so instead I'll tell you to have fun. Everyone shared a laugh, though Harry's eyebrow twitched at the verbal jab he just got from Hiro the King of Trode knew that Harry will eventually get even with him with a prank but it was worth it to see the expression on his old friend's face. So Lily, the Dragon Knight and Princess of Trode would be moving to the Potter household and she couldn't help to be excited about all the amazing and fun adventures she will have in the future. Dash. Harry and Jessica stayed in the World of Light for two more days since they still have some time before they had to go back to Kyoto thanks to Harry's time manipulation and during that time Harry kept quite busy. First, he continued to train and teach Lily all sorts of dragon skills and sword techniques among some other things, Jessica helped her with her magic since Lily grew very curious about the spells both she and Dara used against Hagen and Magroth. 
though Ella would also help her friend learn and understand the concepts behind the spells and how to control the flow of her energy since Lily's power would always explode outwards. This would sometimes cause her to overcharge her spells increasing their power and the amount of damage they can cause but that made it a problem for her to use them in populated places. It seems like her awakening of that hybrid form of hers did all kinds of things not only to her energy but power levels and her body as well. So Harry also focused on that as well and it was something he was going to have her work on later when they go back to Kyoto plus once she gets a good handle on her own abilities Harry was also going to give her all the perks he gives to all his loved ones. But first, he wants her to have a bit more control of her power on her own. Besides training and teaching Lily, the Dragon God also chose to go around the world in search of anything weird that might hint at a situation similar to what happened with Hagen and Mulroth. This time it was only the adults who chose to investigate and check a few places that could serve as a location for a resurrecting powerful monster or even a demon lord. Lucky they didn't find anything of the sort but Hiro promised to keep a vigilant eye on anything that might point to something like what happened in the dark ruins and waterfall cave, he was going to make sure nothing like what happened in those two situations catches them off guard again. He also sent letters to the rest of the kingdoms and friends across the world letting them know of what had happened and the seriousness of the situation. The plan is to create a sort of information net that will allow the kingdoms to deal with these sorts of situations as they happened. They all agree that they couldn't allow something like what happened with Hagen and Malroth to happen again and right under their noses, it could have ended being a horrible situation if Harry hadn't come to this world to visit and Hiro knew it. So he took steps to prevent this sort of situation from catching them by surprise, of course, Harry also offered his help and that of Kyoto so Trodane will soon have access to the guilds and technology that will help them in case a dire situation happens again. This made both Hiro and Medea feel at ease knowing they can trust Harry to come to their help if they needed it. But the time for him, Jessica, and Eric to go back home soon arrived which meant that Lily, Yangus, and Red were also leaving as well. Yangus and Red were very interested in joining the Thieves Guild in Neo Kyoto and having access to the natural dungeon, adventuring, and making money by finding treasures was their livelihood already so to them moving to Neo Kyoto was the smart thing to do. Lily was also excited and happy about her moving to the Potter household, she had spent the last two days asking her godfather and Dare everything about their world, and from what she heard, she knew she would be getting into several exciting adventures soon enough. She of course couldn't wait and was the first one to wake up when the day of departure arrived, which made Harry chuckle because she went to immediately woke him and Jessica up not wanting to wait any longer. So Harry and Jessica got ready while Lily went to wake up her as well as her parents, Yangus and Red, soon enough everyone was ready to leave the world of light and so they met up in the room of Castle Throdane's portal chamber. Dash. Everyone had gathered to see their friends and family off with a smile, both the king and queen of Throdane hugged their daughter, and told her to have a lot of fun and to learn everything she wanted. The little princess smiled at her parents and hugged them back just as tightly. She was very happy that she was allowed to do this and she was going to take full advantage of this opportunity. Harry smiled as the royal family of Drodane said their farewells and as soon as he saw Lily run up to Arian grabbed her hand in excitement he walked up to Hiro and Medea don't worry guys she will be safe. Both Hiro and Medea smiled and nodded at Harry, Hiro then grinned we know you will keep her safe and we also know that this is for the best, besides we will be coming over often enough so it's like she never left. Harry chuckled plus I know she will be coming over often too, my daughters and Morgan use the portal often so don't be surprised if you see them and Lily roaming around the castle. Hiro chuckled and Medea smiled we actually welcome a little chaos in here, the goddess knows that the castle needs a little bit of excitement now and again. But Hiro and Harry grinned at Medea knowing that she always complained about how boring things could get in the castle which to them was hilarious, most of the time it was her and her ideas that would get them into trouble when they were younger but they didn't mind it since they always had fun. Jessica walked up to the king and queen of Drodane and gave them a hug we'll be seeing you later guys. And make sure you come to visit often okay? Both royals nodded and smiled at Jessica while Harry grinned and patted Hiro's back and gave Medea a big hug we'll come to visit often as well and Hiro I'll be sending Tony later to get your office updated and to give you a couple of smartphones so you can also call us and whatnot. Hiro nodded and smiled excitedly about all the cool new stuff he'll be getting, with that said Yangus and Red also gave their farewells and promised to come over with all kinds of stories. After that, the king and queen of Drodane watched as their daughter and their family in all but blood left this world to theirs, but both of them were smiling knowing that they will see each other soon enough. Dash. 
Harry and company arrived a day before the rest of the Greek gods and hunters were meant to arrive which gave him a whole day to get everything Yangus, Red, and Lily needed to be able to move around his world. So with the help of Pepper and Yasaka, he created for them whole identities as citizens of Japan and Neo Kyoto, plus he also got them all the documents they will need as well. Meanwhile, Jessica along with the rest of his girlfriends began to create a room for Lily and the Potter household and buying her anything she will need and would want for her room. Of course, this meant that Lily was taken shopping with everyone for clothes and other things plus this was also the girl's way to teach her about the new world she will be living in from now on. The little princess of Drodane had a lot of fun, especially because the rest of the kids of the Potter household also went with them, this also included a new addition to the Potter family. A little girl known as Sherry who was adopted as a little sister by Morgan and Hope during one of their adventures and that, of course, meant that Harry and his girlfriends adopted her as well. Sherry was a little odd to Lily compared to everyone in the Potter household, unlike the crazy and chaotic members of the Potter family, she was calm and shy though Lily liked that about her. But despite the calm and shy nature Sherry projects, Lily can also see a fire in her eyes and an inner strength that made her very curious, it was like she had seen some really horrible things but instead of wallowing in sadness and despair, she decided to instead grow strong. So when she asked Sherry about her, the little blonde girl told her that she would tell her about how Hope and Morgan had met her later, though Lily did ask her if she was a fighter. Sherry just gave her a small shy smile and told her that she was pretty good with the spear and that she would show her later since right now the day was about her and getting her stuff. Lily agreed and stuck close to Sherry for a while since she liked the calm and pleasant atmosphere she brings with her presence something that both Hope and Morgan were very happy with. Sherry needed more friends anyways and who better than a brave little princess, it was too bad that Sherry had been busy learning a lot of things she wanted to learn, which is why she hadn't met Lily and her family until today. But now that she had more free time they can have more fun together, especially since both Morgan and Hope themselves were almost at a high level with everything they wanted to learn and soon enough they will go on a new adventure, and perhaps for this one they will take Sherry, Eric and Lily with them. Dash. Meanwhile, Harry built a new home for Yangus and Red in Neo Kyoto since they both thought it would make things easier for them, Harry didn't minutes since they knew that the both of them were really independent. Though that didn't stop him from making them a big house and filling it with all the cool stuff they would ever want, this is how Yangus met the boys since Harry had gathered them to help him fill his and Red's home with all the modern toys. Something he enjoyed, Red just rolled her eyes and laughed while saying something about boys but she also quite enjoyed hanging out with the boys, she wasn't one for shopping or things like that anyways. She was more comfortable drinking, fighting, and being a bro than being a proper lady her own words actually so she hung out and drank with the boy and had fun as they told her about their pranks and project. By the end of the day she was granted the title of honorary boy which made all the girls of the Potter household gape in shock and demand answers from Harry about how come she got the title and they didn't. Harry of course being the brave dragon god he is immediately threw his friends under the bus and said that they all decided amongst themselves and he didn't have anything to do with it. In any case, all the new members of the yokai faction and the Potter household were now fully ready for their new lives in Harry's world and they couldn't be any more excited about it. Dash. The next day Harry was already ready to welcome the new minor gods and Olympians that decided to join the yokai faction for a chance to spend time with their children, of course for this, Amaterasu who came to welcome them along with Yasaka and Rhea. This also meant that today Harry was also going to have a talk with Artemis and her hunters, depending on their attitudes and their responses he might have to deal with them harshly but he was hoping it wouldn't come to that. Thanks to Hestiaki, Yasaka, and Amaterasu who had the names and energy signatures of everyone who wanted to join the yokai faction so he and Lefei had already added them to the wards around Kyoto so they weren't surprised when the Greek deities began to arrive. Most were minor gods that wanted a better life and treatment, Amaterasu who was happy to welcome them into Dakumagahara where she would give them a place and a shrine representing their domains as well as some responsibilities and a voice in meetings and important events dealing with Dakumagahara. This made the minor gods very happy and content since they already had better treatment than what they got from Zeus and the Greek pantheon. Next were the titans who chose to leave the Greek faction. When Harry, Yasaka, and Amatras who read their names on the list Hestia had sent, they were very surprised that they were willing to leave the pantheon they were born from. Rhea however had told them that to her it wasn't very surprising, since most titans were treated poorly by the Olympians and most of them like her just wanted to live in peace, of course, Zeus being the horrible person he is instead would seal, punished, or restrict them in fear that they would raise up against him someday. 
Apparently, both Hades and Hestia had helped them escape where they were sealed or restricted and told them about what had happened to Zeus and the plans to leave the Greek faction. All of them jumped at the chance and immediately agreed to join the Yokai faction, all of them didn't want any domains or responsibilities though, instead, they just wanted to live in peace in Neo Kyoto. Something Harry and Amatrice were loud and so Harry welcomed the Greek titans that decided to join the Yokai faction. First were Rhea's sisters, Thea, Themis, Nemesine, Phoebe, and Tethys. These titanesses decided to join their sister Rhea as caretakers of the demigod children and the big house where they live. Though Nemesine also brought her daughters the Muses to join the Yokai faction as well, like their mother and aunts they just wanted to live in peace and just sing which was perfectly fine with Harry, he even pointed them to Seraph all who can definitely help them get a career as singers. With all of these titanesses now taking care of the big house Harry was quite happy that his new children were going to be well taken care of, after these came three more titans Osnus, Creus, and Prometheus. These old and very tired titans just wanted to live a quiet and peaceful life and Harry granted them that by building them houses away from civilization where they can spend their days just enjoying their retirement, though Prometheus would have to spend some time in Kyoto's healing temple since he wasn't in the best physical and mental condition from the many, many years he spent being tortured by Zeus. Next were the actual Olympians that had come to join the Yokai faction, both Harry and Amaterasu who were quite surprised with how many actually came though in hindsight they should have expected this since most of the Olympians really wanted to spend time with their children. It was only because of Zeus and his unhinged reactions to the laws being broken that prevented them from actually doing something about the whole situation, no one wanted war and conflict after all. The first one to officially join the Yokai faction was Hestia and she was welcomed with open arms by both Harry and Amaterasu, both had decided to give her a higher ranking seat in Takamagahara since she had more than earned it and Harry was also going to build her a shrine in her name right beside his own temple. His dragon priestesses were also more than happy to maintain and take care of her shrine as an extension to their lord Harry Potter the dragon god, which made Harry a little embarrassed but he knew that Hestia deserved it and he was happy to do this for her. The little goddess was very moved by this gesture as she cried, Harry smiled and gave her a hug and told her something that everyone had neglected to say to her you did a good job, Hestia, thank you for your hard work. Hestia couldn't help it and began to sob and cry, no one had ever thanked her for everything she does nor was she expecting any thanks or recognition but to her, it felt amazing for someone like Harry to thank her. So Harry continued to hug the poor goddess and let her cry as he smiled at her. She was truly a goddess worthy of respect in his eyes and he was glad to be able to do this for her. After a little while Hestia calmed down a bit, at least enough to go to her mother Rhea and cry in her arms instead, much to her amusement. Harry was now ready to deal with the rest of the Olympians who looked rather nervous as Harry stared at them, he then calmly spoke to them all well let's get started with what to do with all of you. I hope you knows that things here in the Yokai faction work differently and I expect each and every one of you to follow the rules here otherwise you will share Ares' fate. The Olympians who chose to come to Kyoto and join the Yokai faction couldn't help to nervously gulp as they heard Harry's words, they knew they couldn't blame him for being harsh on them. All of them were aware of the horrible things they have done but most of them were already trying to change even before Harry came to Olympus and took care of Zeus and Ares. So they were hoping that coming here to be able to spend time with their children would also allow them to start a new life and perhaps help them atone for some of the things they have done. Chapter 118, Chapter 118 The first Olympian to approach Harry was Hermes who looked rather sad but hopeful as well, Harry sighed a bit at seeing him here since Hestia had told him about how out of all the gods in Olympus he was the one to try and help his kids the most. Though he also didn't show himself often to them not only because of his job as a messenger of the gods but also to prevent Zeus from bringing his attention to his kids plus he also allowed the unclaimed demigods to stay in his cabin. Hermes approached Harry and looked into his eyes I want to start by thanking you for taking care of the children, not only mine but the rest as well, their entire situation was a horrible thing. Harry nodded why didn't you do anything about it? I'm sure you never agreed to all of this, so why let Zeus do as he pleased? Hermes frowned and looked down there was not much choice, you saw how unhinged Zeus is. He wouldn't listen to reason and would threaten with war whenever someone spoke about his rules. It's not like any of us never tried to say anything you know, it's just that every time we did it would just make things worse and most of us didn't want to risk our children becoming targets of his rage. Poseidon walked up to Hermes' side you saw how he singled Percy outright? Harry nodded that wasn't the first time he's done that either and no one wanted to give him reasons to do that again. 
Harry closed his eyes and nodded as he pondered on what he just heard, so they weren't afraid for themselves but rather of what Zeus would do to their children. Harry opened his eyes and stared at all the gods he noticed Aphrodite looking rather bored but the rest of the gods seemed to have shared the same fear, Harry then noticed a goddess he didn't expect to see here Hera. The Queen of Olympus, what brings you here? Hera tensed up at being called out but then began to fidget a bit. Hestia who was done crying walked up to Harry's side and spoke up Sister Hera didn't want to stay with Zeus any longer, so she was hoping to get a fresh start here in the yokai faction. Harry sighed and rubbed his forehead which made everyone flinch since they thought he was annoyed now, but in reality, Harry hadn't expected Hera to come here. The fact that Hera doesn't have a good reputation either and has done some very nasty things to demigods in the past made Harry want to punt her on her ass and away from Neo Kyoto. But he also noticed the heartbroken look in her eyes and the weariness on her face. This hero had all the fighting driven out of her. In fact, she looked like a beaten puppy now and that made Harry pause. Suddenly Harry felt someone pull on his sleeve making him turn towards who had pulled it. Harry then saw the worried face of Hestia who seemed to be afraid that Harry wouldn't let her into Neo Kyoto and join the yokai faction but Harry just smiled at her easing her worries. Harry then turned his head towards Hera and stared at her in silence for a few moments. Hera of course felt very nervous about the look Harry was giving her but then Harry began to speak Hera, I'm willing to let you join the yokai faction and live in Neo Kyoto but know this, I won't permit you or anyone to ever hurt my children. Do I make myself clear? Hera nodded you don't have to worry about me Lord Potter, I don't intend to cause any trouble I. I just want to live in peace, I want to be able to live a quiet life from now on. The sheer tiredness and sadness in Hera's voice made Harry frown. He turned his head towards Ryu and Hestia who were staring worriedly at the ex-queen of Olympus. Harry sighed and nodded I'll leave you in the care of your big sister and mother Hera, may you find the peace you're looking for. Hera nodded and quietly walked over to Rhea who hugged her tightly while Hestia fussed over her. Harry smiled and then turned his head back towards Hermes who nodded and then spoke Lord Potter I also heard that you brought May here to Kyoto. May I ask how she's doing? Harry sighed but then smiled she's recovering pretty nicely actually, my girlfriend Luna and I are helping her get her mind repaired while Tsunade and Asia who are healers are fixing everything wrong with her body, I even restored some of her youth so soon she will be able to join Luke, she is going to be fine. Hermes sighed and looked like a massive weight left his body, in fact, he got weak in his knees but Poseidon caught him, and even though Hermes was tearing up he began to laugh. Harry smiled seeing a man who did the best he could but had the bad fortune to have things work against him all the time. Harry then took a serious expression on his face Hermes I welcome you to the yokai faction and Neo Kyoto but you have a lot of work ahead of you with Luke. Your other children seem to be okay with you thanks to the fact that you actually cared but take things slowly with Luke okay? That kid has gone through a lot. Hermes nodded and after he recovered a bit he walked up to Amaterasu who smiled and began to tell him what his role in Takamagahara was going to be, which in all honesty wasn't any different from what he did in Olympus. Hermes will still work as a golden messenger but instead of being the messenger of Olympus, he will now be known as the heavenly messenger of Takamagahara. Poseidon walked up to Harry next and extend his hand to him. Harry tilted his head but grinned at the god of the seas and shook his hand. Poseidon then spoke up I didn't get to thank you for what you did for Sally and Percy so, thank you, Harry Potter. Harry smiled and nodded Percy is a good kid and Sally a good woman so you're welcome. Now I know you're very different from who you were in the past but let's keep it that way okay? Poseidon nodded of oh course, all I want is to spend however long Sally lives for with her and get to know my son. Harry chuckled then you'll get to live with Sally for a long while, I extended her life for Percy so she'll be around for a long time so I welcome you to the yokai faction. Poseidon brightly smiled and then moved to Amaterasu who was just done with Hermes and began to explain to him what she and Takamagahara expect from him, which was to help Sujin with taking care of the seas while he focuses on freshwater bodies like lakes and rivers. Hepha Estus was next and Harry actually smiled as soon as he walked over, out of all the Greek gods the god of the forge was the only one to actually try to spend time with his children and help them with anything they need. Hepha Estus grinned and Harry having taken a liking to the dragon god after he humbled Zeus and got rid of the idiot Ares Lord Potter, it nice to meet you. Hepha Estus extended his hand towards Harry who took it and shook it with a smile on his face it's nice to meet you too, your children spoke highly of you so Amatrasu and I have a proposition for you. 
Hephaestus raised an eyebrow but nodded intrigued about what sort of proposition someone like Harry would ask of him. Harry immediately began to explain well most of your children joined what we call here in Neo Kyoto the craftsman guilds, all of them are things like forging, enchanting, alchemy, programming, and even engineering but all of these guilds are actually under the research and development departments headed by Tony Stark and I so we were hoping you would join the R&D department and work with Tony and me on some of the projects we're working on, of course. This also means that you will be spending a lot of time with you children as well. Hephaestus' eyes widen with everything Harry just explained, for one he was surprised that Harry was an inventor, a creator of things rather than a warrior in Neo Kyoto. This information actually surprised everyone else as well. Which Harry seemed to notice because he chuckled in amusement I see that you're surprised to hear that I'm an inventor, I bet you thought I was a member of a battle-oriented guild or something like that. Hephaestus nodded well yeah. No offense but everyone in the supernatural world knows of your power and well. It's easy to see you as a warrior rather than a grease monkey like myself. Harry grinned while it's true that I fight, when needed, most of the time I spend researching and developing new things for Neo Kyoto and the Yokai faction. Yasaka giggled which caught everyone's attention that's putting it mildly, Harry has had a hand in everything here in Neo Kyoto and the Yokai faction, things like forging, enchanting, medical research, and technology development and research, he and the ones who work with him are the reason Neo Kyoto and my faction are hundreds of years more advanced than both the supernatural world and the mundane world but what's best about him is that he's a teacher at heart and he had taught many in the art of crafting allowing many to be able to create and improve other things as well. Everyone who hadn't had a clue of what exactly Harry did in Neo Kyoto and for the yokai was speechless and seemed unable to say anything until Apollo somehow snapped out of it and raised a question but I thought you were a leader of the yokai faction. Harry huffed and scratched his head in exasperation I'm really not the leader but everyone here just acts like I am, Yasaka is the leader of the yokai faction, there's no way in hell you will ever catch me doing paperwork damn it. Everyone that knew Harry shared a laugh since they knew just how much he despises paperwork, he might not accept it but everyone in Neo Kyoto and the Yokai faction considers him their leader. He hasn't even noticed that nothing gets done around Neo Kyoto without his permission or input which was hilarious to everyone because Harry was just clueless about the fact that he was the true secret leader and boss of the Yokai faction. Harry sighed and decided to ignore everyone laughing at his expense so what do you say Hephaestus? You will still act as god of the forge of course but I think this would be something you will enjoy doing more. Hephaestus laughed and nodded you don't have to twist my left testicle to convince me, Lord Potter, you had me at spending a lot of time with my children I have always wanted to make things with them and get to know them better and this is perfect so you can count on me. Harry grinned and nodded and with that decided Hephaestus walked over to Amaterasu who smiled at him and began to let him know a bit about the R&D department and what they work on most of the time, which was actually a lot and Hephaestus was actually very excited about all of this. Apollo walked up next and was feeling rather nervous, Harry stared at him in silence for a few seconds before speaking now I don't personally have anything against you and I really just want you to spend time with your kids but I'm telling right here and right now. I despise prophecies, here in Neo Kyoto and the Yokai faction, we believe in building our own futures so if I hear you're going around spouting foolishness about prophecies, you and I will have a problem, do I make myself clear? Apollo nodded, and Harry narrowed his eyes if you have a prophecy that seems important you will let Amatrasu know and she'll take care of it or decide to ignore it but only her. Apollo nodded once again and Harry then waved at him to walk over to Amatrasu, Apollo immediately did so and Amatrasu began to explain what was expected of him. He can no longer go around divulging prophecies to anyone, he was only allowed to do so with Amaterasu, and then she would decide if they're important or not. Or rather she will let Harry know who as a fate breaker can easily destroy any prophecy with his presence alone, he might hate prophecies but Harry wasn't stupid, and he knew he couldn't ignore a clear warning. So instead of allowing something like what happened with him and Dumbledore or Percy and Zeus, he will instead control the flow of information and deal with it himself. Demeter was next and this was another deity Harry didn't have a problem with, through Hestia he had learned that Demeter hated Zeus' rule of not getting involved with their children because she loves them all a lot. She had suffered a lot watching her children suffer but she would always make sure to look after them and make sure to send them snacks and healthy food all the time which included cereal of course. So Harry smiled at Demeter who brightly smiled back at him. Having heard good things of him through Hestia had made her like the dragon god and she was also very happy that he rose up to protect her children something she was very thankful for. Harry nodded at Demeter I have nothing bad to say to you Demeter, Hestia only has good things to say about you so I welcome you into Neo Kyoto and the Yokai faction, oh. 
and Persephone is going to be visiting often too so I hope you enjoy that as well. Demeter brightly smiled and excitedly clapped her hands which made Harry chuckle. She then quickly walked over to Amatrasu who smiled at her and began to explain her job. As a goddess of agriculture, she will be in charge of taking care of the many medicinal herbs, plants, and other ingredients that are grown in near Kyoto. She will be working alongside Side Neville Longbottom as well who was in charge of the agriculture guild. Aphrodite walked up next and Harry frowned seeing her here. Out of the Olympians she was the more debated, and quite frankly not many had good things to say about her. Even most of her children didn't want anything to do with her since she had a habit of only claiming the most handsome and pretty of her children. Plus she had the worst reputation out of the rest of the Olympians and that said a lot on her part. So when she walked up to Harry with a big flirty smile on her face Harry already knew he was going to have to be rough with this situation Aphrodite. I'm going to be really honest here. I didn't want you here and neither did Yasaku and Amatrisa but some of your children want to meet their mother and at least try to get to know her but be warned, you will not be permitted to do anything you want here. Aphrodite tensed up as Harry's voice told her that he was completely serious right now. Meanwhile, Harry continued to speak if anyone catches you doing anything like you've been known to do you will be killed on the spot. Here in Neo Kyoto and the Yokai faction do not appreciate your brand of troublemaking, do I make myself clear? Aphrodite looked down and seemed to be lost in thought for a while, before shaking her head and sighing all right I'll behave. I know I was not the best mother and was an even more irresponsible goddess but I do want to change, so don't worry I'll stick to the rules here. Harry stared at Aphrodite for a few long seconds before nodding to her. The Greek goddess of love walked over to Amatrisu who also gave her a warning about behaving in Takamagahara. Amatrisu who didn't have anything important for her to do in the Japanese heavenly realm but she was going to help Kiguriheim with her duties and that's it, which was fine with Aphrodite who really just wanted to spend time with her children. Athena was next and she was visibly nervous, Harry tiredly rubbed his eyes Athena. You also don't have a good reputation but you're smart enough to know what will happen if you're caught doing anything remotely close to what you have done before, so I expect you to live a good peaceful life here okay? Athena nodded yes. I'm just glad I'm able to get to know my children, I'm so very proud of them all and I would like to spend time with them. Harry smiled yes I know, Hestia told me about you, and your children all spoke highly of you, despite not seeing you they knew you were always keeping an eye on them plus I know you had spoken against Zeus rules before. Athena sighed, she was happy her children thought highly of her yes, I always thought that the way my father was handling all of this was wrong. There were other ways to go about preventing chaos and destruction but then again he withheld information from all of us. The fact that he was able to hide this knowledge even from me is quite telling. Athena looked down and seemed very disappointed, Harry could understand her sentiment like Hefa Estes, me and Amatris to have something else planned for you, if you accept that is. Athena tilted her head and seemed rather curious about Harry and Amatrisu's plans for her while Harry continued to explain here in Kyoto we have a grand library, in this library. We have records and information about every spell, technique, ability, skill, monster, technology, and pretty much everything available in Kyoto is recorded there. Athena's eyes widen in surprise upon hearing about the Grand Library while Harry went on of course. We also have knowledge not of this world there, and most of your children, including Anabeth, decided to work there. But having a goddess work there will also help a lot plus my girlfriends Hermione and Lefe would appreciate the help as well. Athena stared at Harry in silence for a bit but then she nodded I would be delighted to work in this grand library but can anyone have access to its knowledge? Harry smiled and nodded for the most part, some of the books and knowledge there are available only to guild members while other more general knowledge is available to everyone but yes, anyone looking to learn something is welcome to come into the grand library and do just that, learn. Athena brightly smiled and Harry had to cover his face with how bright and happy she seemed, it seems like Athena fully approved of Neo Kyoto's way of sharing knowledge, but Harry also had one more thing to say some time after graduating from college, Suna Saitri will be opening a school here in Neo Kyoto and we would like for you to become a teacher there as well. Athena now looked even happier and vigorously nodded in excitement, Harry waved her over to Amatrisu and Athena immediately walked over to her. Amaterasu spoke to her and explained a few things about the Grand Library while the next person who had come here walked over and Harry was already frowning again. Artemis walked over to Harry feeling rather scared and hesitant, like all other deities she had heard of Harry's power and abilities but the thing that had her very scared was the way he ruthlessly deals with enemies. She knows her reputation isn't the best in the supernatural world and that her attitude towards men has been viewed as a risk, no one liked her in the supernatural world and now she was beginning to regret her past actions. 
or rather she regretted being so open with the way she dealt with males but even then it might not have mattered since Harry seemed to know pretty much everything going on in the world, it really had her feeling nervous knowing that the dragon god before her might just choose she's not worth the effort and deal with her the way he dealt with Ares and her father's use. She still has nightmares of how he had shown up in Olympus and brutally killed Ares and crippled her father permanently and that was a shock in itself. She always thought that as a goddess she was eternal but Harry Potter was able to permanently kill Ares with ease and leave her father as a shadow of his former self. That scared her as she has never been scared in her life especially when he called her out personally, so now that she was right in front of him and she couldn't help but feel very nervous. Harry suddenly turned towards everyone in the room they chose to meet all right everyone, follow Amatrisu and re-enter the areas that were prepared for each and every one of you, afterwards you may go visit your children but remember to behave okay? Everyone nodded and then left following Amatrisu and Rhea leaving only her and Harry alone, the dragon god turned towards her and Artemis felt like he was staring directly into her soul with those bright green eyes of his. Harry stared into Artemis's eyes for a few seconds but he then spoke up where are your hunters? I believe I told you to bring them all with you didn't I? Artemis nodded and looked down I left them in the outskirts of Neo Kyoto, some of my oldest hunters don't take kindly to males and I didn't want them to attack anyone here. Harry sighed they would have died if they did Artemis tenses up knowing the truth behind those words Harry then walked up to her come on take me to them but be warned, I'm not one to let anyone insult me for no reason so keep them controlled. Artemis nodded and decided to really reel in some of her most wild members, both Harry and Artemis left soon after and didn't take long to arrive where Artemis had left her hunters to camp. Both walked into the camp area and many of her hunters already were beginning to narrow their eyes at Harry though she was proud to see that they were smart enough not to raise a weapon towards Harry. Soon Harry looked around and watched as many of the women around looked at him with distrust while others stared at him with curiosity. He also noticed many animals around as well like all sorts of hunting birds and wolves. It was quite interesting to see these so-called hunters but the hostility shown towards him from some of the girls was disturbing to see, especially for Harry who could see the darkness in people's hearts. He could clearly see some darkness festering inside the hearts of some of the girls here, some of these girls are going to need therapy. He hasn't even said anything yet and he already knew that this situation with the hunters was going to be a complicated situation to deal with, Artemis suddenly walked up in front of him and began to address her hunters listen, everyone, here with us is Harry Potter a dragon god and he has something to say, do listen to him and mind your tongues, for even I cannot protect you from his wrath. All the hunters stared in disbelief at Artemis upon hearing her warning and some began to get nervous for they knew if she herself is wary of this dragon, then that meant that he was far more powerful even more so beyond even their goddess though someone the hunters seemed both insulted and wary. Harry stepped forward I'll be brief but clear to all of you. Things are changing and the Greek faction is no more. Ares is dead by my hand and Zeus is nothing but crippled now. I did that as well. The hunters gasped and stared in shock as Harry announced what he had done. Harry just continued on as of now many of the Greek gods have officially joined the Yokai faction and Neo Kyoto, they will all follow the rules imposed on them or they will die. I'm very well aware of the horrid things they have done. They will no longer be allowed to do so. Many of the hunters were now intently listening to Harry now, they had of course heard of the Yokai faction and the Neo Kyoto and their power so they knew they weren't to be underestimated I have adopted all demigods and they're all under my protection and care. I'm sure many of you felt the change so I'll say this once. I'm very well aware of some of the circumstances some of you joined Artemis hunting party but as your new father, I felt that I also needed to offer the same thing I offered to the rest of the demigods. Any of you who wishes to leave the hunting party and come join your fellow demigods will be welcome with open arms. You will have a safe home and be allowed to live the life you want. But if you chose to stay with Artemis know that things will change as well. Artemis watched as many of her hunters were really considering Harry's choice, she sighed feeling a bit of sad but she couldn't really blame them. Some of the demigods only joined her because they felt safer with her than in the camp and that was fair, so she decided to speak up if you're worried about me don't. I won't blame or begrudge anyone that wants to join Harry Potter. Some of her hunters looked more at ease and even began to walk towards Harry who smiled at them, most of the ones that decided to leave her hunting party were demigods who only joined her out of fear for their lives, others joined her because they didn't want to fall victim to the Greek gods lust or machinations and others because she had threatened them. Harry accepted them all with a smile and began to speak with all of them all right to my new daughters welcome to your new home, don't worry I will take care of all of you. The demigods smiled at him, 
Harry then addressed the nymphs that decided to leave Atomus hunting party I have created a home dimension for all nymphs and elementals where all of you can live in peace so welcome to the yokai faction. The nymphs all cheerfully smiled and seemed very excited. Harry then waved his hand over everyone who decided to join him and the yokai faction and Artemis felt the connection she had with them disappeared and she couldn't help but feel a bit saddened about it. Harry then waved another hand and opened a dark corridor and then addressed the girls who chose to leave Atomus's hunting party with a smile on his face All right, step inside, and once on the other side you will meet your new mothers and some friends of mine that will help you get everything you need. The girls looked happy and excited, one by one all of them walked through the dark corridor already looking forward to all the new things they will experience. Harry smiled one more time and then closed the dark corridor as soon as the last girl walked in. He then turned towards the rest of Artemis's hunting party and the goddess of the hunt herself so, I take it all of you chose to stay with Artemis then? The hunters all nodded and Artemis found herself smiling at the fact that all of these girls still decided to stay with her, Harry nodded alright, but know that if you need anything do not hesitate to come here, I am the father to some of you and I refuse to abandon any of you okay? Many of the demigods who decided to stay with Artemis smiled and nodded, some of them were very old by now but something about having a doting father made them feel giddy for some reason. Harry then sighed with that said, I have to give you all a warning and tell you about the changes all of you have to abide by. Everyone including Artemis gave Harry their attention while Harry went on unfortunately your actions against males of all factions have earned you the hate and anger of many beings, let's be honest here. You all deserved all of this hostility. I know of some of the things you girls have done in your hatred against all that is male. I don't condone it nor agree with the way you decided to handle it but the truth of the matter is that many factions might just begin to hunt you down and with the fall of the Greek faction you guys are no longer protected. The hunters and Artemis frowned noticing that their actions brought this upon themselves, though all of them looked rather nervous including Artemis who was the main instigator in some of these reasons for the other factions to hunt them down. Harry however grinned and then spoke up but I have a proposition for all of you that will offer you the protection of the yokai faction and all of its allies. The hunters all looked towards Harry with interest clear in their eyes, Harry continued on explaining here in Neo Kyoto we have something called the natural dungeon where anyone can go in and find power, riches, and knowledge however the deeper you go the more dangerous the place becomes. Inside you will find all types of ecosystems and structures along with all kinds of monsters as well. The hunters were awed at everything they were hearing and seemed rather excited about the existence of such a place, even Artemis looked interested, Harry smiled and then went on what I would like to offer you Artemis hunting party is to have you join the hunters guild. This guild specializes in hunting certain types of monsters for materials and all sorts of other things, with this, you all would be protected by the yokai faction and you will be doing something you love and getting paid for it but be warned I won't accept or forgive any sort of behavior that this hunting party is known for. Everyone seemed excited but that changed when Harry began to warn them though they can't really blame him for it but it did make them feel like scolded children, Harry sighed that means not hunting down any males, not turning anyone into an animal, and hunting them down or turning a man into a woman and threatening them into joining this hunting party. That last one had Harry deadpanning at Artemis who looked down ashamed, Harry just shook his head this, of course, is optional, I'm not about to force anyone to join the yokai faction so I'll leave you to think it over. Harry then turned his head towards Artemis that's all I really wanted to say but do contact Hestia when you decide on what to do, take your time and think about it as long as you need but I do recommend you lay low for a while, news of the fall of the Greek faction is bound to hit soon and many will be frothing at the mouth to get to you and your hunting party. Artemis nodded to Harry and the dragon god waved and smiled at everyone before disappearing right before everyone's eyes, a hunter walked up to Artemis and spoke to her, my lady what are we going to do? Artemis turned her head towards the hunter and smiled as she saw that it was her oldest hunter and friend Zoe Nightshade not much we can do Zoe. I'm afraid that my actions have finally caught up to us. Artemis sadly frowned while Zoe shook her head you were just trying to protect us Lady Artemis and yes. Thinking about it now we were rather cruel but none of us blame you for anything. Artemis smiled at Zoe thank you, hearing you say that means a lot but I think it's time we change. It's time to do better, I don't want to fall into the pit of madness my further and Ares fell into. Zoe smiled will follow with whatever you decided to do Lady Artemis. The rest of the hunters nodded and called out to Artemis who smiled and decided that she wasn't going to waste this chance to change. Chapter 119, Chapter 119 Took a few weeks for everything to calm down in Neo Kyoto and the Yokai faction plus many of the Greek gods that joined needed some time to adapt. 
but overall everyone helped and all them were able to get the hang of both their new environments and the way things work in Neo Kyoto. Of course, Harry helped everywhere he was needed but most of the time he was busy helping the Greek gods connect and spend time with their children, it wasn't a surprise to see many of them hesitant or even hostile to their godly parents but that was expected. With Harry's involvement, things worked out even more smoothly and things eventually calmed down, though many demigods like Luke will be needing more time to accept their parents, the Greek gods were disappointed and sad as they finally got to see just how much pain and hate their inactions and decisions had brought upon their children. It was a hard pill to swallow but Harry, Rhea, and Hestia were there to make sure they kept at it and didn't get discouraged, it certainly was hard for both parties but things eventually calmed down and the demigods began to understand and believe that their godly parents really just wanted to connect to them. It will take time and some grudges and sadness might never go away but Harry was confident that over time the gods will be able to connect and care for their children, in the meantime being the father of many children has become very fun for him and his godfather Sirius and Remus especially when they dragged them to join in their prank wars, the first massive prank war that befell Neo Kyoto had caught many in the crossfire, there were downs, many tears pepper spray induced of course, chaos, and destruction. Even the leaders and guilds weren't safe from the pranks, it got even worse when Hope, Morgan, Lily, Eric and Sherry joined in the fun, the end result was a day that the yokai faction and Neo Kyoto would never forget. It was so big that even the gods got dragged in, Amateurus who ended up with a silly frog cap glued to her head, Eershkigal got caught by a cloud of itching powder laced with Morgan's pierce ability, and poor Yasaka ended up with one of her tails completely shaved pink. The result was that there were no winners in this prank war only casualties and even though many yokai, humans, gods, and even the Digimon Alphamon ended up turning completely pink not that she minded though were caught by the pranks, but in the end, everyone had a good time though. Harry ended up dressed and painted like a clown of all things by Eris which surprised everyone not expecting him to fall for a prank but Eris one of his weaknesses and he didn't expect it from her, though he laughed finding it funny how she got him good. But what really made him happy was that his children including the demigods were all laughing and having fun. They were acting like the children they are and that made Harry and the rest of the adults feel happy that they were able to do this for them. It took a few days to clean up everything and regrow the fur on Yasaka's tail but in Harry's eyes, it was worth it. Even the Greek gods had fun and had the chance to play and spend time with their children and that was what really mattered, though Harry vowed to be careful when a prank war was declared caused it was pure unadulterated chaos and no one was safe from it. But these few weeks had given him a chance to relax and be lazy which was something he had hadn't a chance to do since he had been busy with one thing or the other, because of this Harry was often found taking a nap all over Q or Neo Kyoto and more often than not he had company. When he took a nap on his temple grounds his dragon priestesses took advantage of him being asleep and cleaned him off, he woke up and panicked a bit when he saw his scales shine so brightly from the scrubbing they got. But then he saw the dragon priestesses sleeping all around him still holding all sorts of cleaning tools which caused him to huff and not say anything about it, he went back to sleep surrounded by his happy and proud dragon priestesses sleeping beside their dragon god. Sometimes he would sleep on the grounds of the big house, his demigod children would always join him for a nap and get on top of his back and head to lay down and take said nap with him, it was a sight that would always bring a smile to Rhea and Hestia whenever the court sight of it. At times he would take a nap with the Digimon Knights who were more than happy to nap with their leader and friend and would all sleep around him peacefully, though Alphamon would always lean back against Harry's side and sleep like that, this was something she always did when she was a Doryuman during their adventures. Everywhere he took a nap someone would always join him in being lazy something that seems that everyone enjoys doing, from watching Harry they all knew that taking small moments to rest and be lazy was very important and thus always sought to join him whenever he was being lazy. It was heartwarming to everyone in the yokai faction, their leader was a very powerful and wise being but the fact that he enjoyed the simple things in life made them all feel they can connect to him. Harry even began to take naps, in Konoa, Suna, UA School, and Castle Trodane whenever he felt like doing so which at first surprised a lot of people but they soon got used to the presence of a massive gold and silver dragon taking a nap in their villages, town, schools, and kingdoms, well except UA since they were already used to that, to begin with. It certainly has been a while since Harry was able to relax like this but eventually, as any other dragon would, he began to feel a little restless and bored with so much free time and even though he also spends a lot of that free time with his girlfriends and family, he still began to feel that little itch of a good fight and adventure which got him to where he was right now, at this moment Harry was spending time relaxing in his backyard as he watched Morgan, Hope, Lily, Eric and Sherry have a little spa. 
blasts of magic, booms as the girls moved at speeds that broke the sound barrier, weapons clashing and the all-familiar sound of screams and roars of battle echoed all over the Potter household backyard, as Harry watched the girls go at it full on in an attempt to beat each other silly. Kanu, Milim, and Lefe were sitting on his head watching the battle with proud smiles on their faces, suddenly a massive explosion went off that blew everyone's hair back, while Morgan, Hope, Sherry, and Lily were sent flying all over the place screaming. Sherry landed in front of Harry unconscious and out of the battle. Harry gently picked her up in his claw and put her on his head where Lefe began to heal her while Milim rested her head on her lap. Kanu was gently rubbing her head as Sherry slept and smiled. Being the newest addition to their family and having lived a very normal life up until the events of Raccoon City, had left her behind the other girls in power and skill but she still tries her best regardless of how much she still had to catch up. She was on the verge of reaching low ultimate class which was saying a lot but hope. Morgan, Eric, and even Lily were already beyond Super Devil in power so there was a long road for her to follow still. However, Harry was proud of how far she had come in such a short time, especially since she can put up a big fight against the other girls who were on a very high rank as it is. Hope was on the Dragon God rank and was on a different level by herself, and Morgan was on the Dragon God level in all but name since she still had not awakened to a conceptual domain though. Harry and the rest knew it was only a matter of time. Era was on heavenly dragon rank and has been steadily raising in power since she now spars and battles with her sisters and cousins all the time. Lily was a very special case, Harry noticed that her status as dragon knight was similar to a Saiyan in which they get stronger the more they fight and the more they get beaten to a pulp. So with all the fighting and training, she's been getting these past few weeks she had reached high super devil rank in power. However when she uses her hybrid form which is a multiplier like the super Saiyan form she can easily reach high end heavenly dragon in power. Though that form still burns energy like there's no tomorrow and leaves her very tired afterward, she can hold it up longer thanks to the medicinal gels but that only increases the fatigue she feels when she powers down. So right now she's doing heavy duty training and physical conditioning in order to increase her basic stats and make her body strong enough to resist the fatigue of using her hybrid form. Thankfully she gets plenty of sparing partners with the girls and his students so she's also learning a lot from all of that fighting. Harry looked up when he saw the explosion and smoke dissipate only to see a very smug Eris standing there after having used the spell Megiddo against the girls, that spell is perfect for targets with high resistances like Morgan, Hope, and Lily. Still, that spell must have hurt a lot and the girls weren't going to appreciate the fact that they just got blasted by it, Harry idly thought about that as Lily roared out from underneath the trees she had been buried under after being sent crashing through them. Lily then pointed at Harry. Not fair Eris, you can't just nuke us like that. Era just giggles but I couldn't help it, you were all so perfectly grouped together and I just had to take advantage of that opening. Harry watched as Lily sweat dripped since more than likely she couldn't argue Era's point. Suddenly Morgan crawled from under a big pile of dirt and stones that she got buried under after crashing against the barrier around the fighting area and bouncing off it right into the ground oi. I felt that one in my bones, even Drake is howling in pain. Hope floated down from the top of a tree after crash landing on top of it and getting caught in its branches for a while, she huffed and shook her head I really wished we didn't nuke each other all the time but our sparring seems to always escalate to this. The girls nodded and all them began to look around, Harry smiled and then spoke, if you're looking for Sherry she's on top of my head, she got knocked out from Era's spell. Era winced and looked very worried since she forgot that Sherry was still not as powerful as everyone else, she suddenly took off flying and landed on Harry's head where she caught sight of Sherry being tended to by her mom's canoe, Le Fay, and Milim. She sighed when she saw she was okay and was just peacefully sleeping, soon Hope, Morgan, and Lily joined her and also sighed in relief, Morgan scratched her head okay. Let's try to hold out on big attacks like that until Sherry gets a bit stronger okay? The girls were about to nod in agreement but Sherry suddenly woke up and spoke up I hope you don't, I can't get stronger if all of you are holding back in our spas plus dad and mommies will make sure I am fine. The girls didn't look too sure since they didn't want to accidentally hurt Sherry too much but Harry suddenly spoke, Sherry is willing to fight and learn to get stronger, if you hold back then you're holding her back as well. The girls got pensive for a few moments but in the end. They nodded to Sherry's request of not holding back, Sherry sat up and smiled at her new mommies, she misses her mom sure but her new mothers were everything she had hope in a mom. They take care of her, spend time with her, play with her and listen to her, sure they were busy with work and other things but all she had to do is ask and they would drop anything they were doing to be there for her, not that she would do it but the fact that they would do it meant everything to her. Her new dad was just as awesome, 
He was single-handedly the coolest and kindest dad ever and she was quite happy with him. She was even getting spoiled a lot by him which was something new for her but she enjoyed it quite a bit. Sherry got up and then looked at her clothes and her appearance. She was a mess and needed a bath not surprising since she had been sparring with her sisters and cousins since early in the morning but she really didn't like being this messy uck. I feel like when we were in that research lab. Morgan and Hope giggled knowing what she was referring to, by the time they had investigated the research lab Sherry was already taking an active role in fighting which meant that she was getting pretty dirty with blood and all sort of other liquids. By the end of the whole ordeal she was in very dire need of a bath which she took after she had arrived in this world, Harry chuckled well why don't you girls go take a bath and relax? You certainly earned it. The girls cheered and then ran towards Sherry picked her above their head, and then jumped down from Harry's head while Sherry screamed her lungs out in surprise as they carry her back to the house to take a bath. Millen, Lafay, and Kanu giggled at seeing Sherry get dragged into shenanigans like that while Harry chuckled in amusement, however, that fight had made Harry feel a bit of excitement since it reminded him of the fights he used to have when he was with his friend Goku's world. Which gave him a great idea, he hasn't gone and visited Goku and all his friends in a while so he might as well go and see them. Perhaps even have a good old fight with Goku and Vegeta while he's there. Those two are some of the few beings in the multiverse that can put up a good fight against him. Besides, he really wants to see how they're doing and what's been happening since the Tournament of Power. Harry stood up on his forelimbs and then spoke to Kanu, Lefei, and Milim who were still sitting on his head. Hey girls, you guys aren't doing anything today right? Kanu widely smiled not really, my party and I in the guild finished exploring some of the new deep floors in the natural dungeon. It was reported to have some odd monsters so we decided to check it out. Harry raised an eyebrow new monsters, but I haven't gone to any new world. I mean doubles of Gracos, Hagen, and Maroth are expected to appear as floor bosses for new monsters? Lefay was the one who answered Harry's question No, I read the report. One of the new floors is a bit unique in appearance but I think we in the Potter household will recognize it. The report had described this floor as very vivid and full of fun stuff like blocks that drop cool power-ups when hit, cute monsters like turtles and brown mushroom-like creatures Tilda. Harry hummed for a little bit it sounds like the mushroom kingdom the girls visited a while ago. How interesting, anything else? Milam then decided to pipe up into the conversation oh. That Ghidorah and Rod and Caillou that hope. Morgan, and Hima-chan beat in their first adventure have begun to appear as floor bosses. I fought against both of them and I can say that they're really tough, not for me though but for other guild members and parties it is. Lefay nodded yeah those two have been categorized as S-rank difficulty bosses and the guilds are trying to come up with some rules to fight them as they had for all the very strong bosses in the natural dungeon. Harry silently pondered everything the girls have told him it seems like the natural dungeon is also connecting with the world's hope and Morgan visit. Everyone keep an eye out for those B.O.W. the girls encountered in Raccoon City. We have to make sure they're not infectious to us. Lefay nodded are ah, you right. Morgan and Hope had said that supernatural beings seem to be immune to both G-Virus and the other virus they heard of the T-Virus I believe. Plus Morgan did bring the antiviral agent as well and Tsunade has been studying it since the girls got back but it's a good idea to be cautious. Everyone nodded in agreement. Though they doubt the natural dungeon could recreate the effects of the virus. It was still a good idea to be careful just in case, though it made Harry feel better to know that the virus didn't affect supernatural beings. Lefay then took out her smartphone and looked at the time. Looks like I have to go now, Jessica, Hermione, and I are teaching our demigod children how to put away skill scrolls and where to put new books while we decide where they belong in the library tilde. Harry smiled and watched and Lefay jumped down, he then leaned his snout towards her and rubbed it against her which made her giggle a bit. She then gave Harry a small kiss on his snout I'll see you late to Harry. With that said Lafayette turned round and skipped into the house to prepare to go to work. Milim stretched for a few moments I have nothing to do so I decided to laze around a bit with you Harry. Harry chuckled and nodded well I was planning on visiting an old world I've been to and visiting some friends. Do you girls want to come with me? Milim and Kanu grinned in excitement. Milim fist pumped let's go. Hopefully there's something going on and I get to fight someone strong. Kanu giggled knowing Harry's luck I bet we'll find something happening and we'll have to save the world or something like that. Harry huffed knowing that he really couldn't say anything to defend himself, he just has bad luck when it comes to situations like these I blame the Potter luck for that one. Both Milam and Kanu giggled at the expense of the dragon god which just made Harry slump in defeat. Kanu then patted Harry's head it's alright Harry, it's always fun to land right in the middle of things with you. And besides I'm also looking forward for some action. 
Harry smiled and then nodded all right then let's go see what my friends are up to. Harry then used telekinesis to gently lift both Kanu and Milam off his head and put them on the floor in front of him. Both girls then watched as Harry took on his human form and grinned at them, Milam and Kanu then walked up to Harry and grabbed hold of his hands while Harry began to prepare for the world jump. It didn't take long for the world around them to crack like glass and then shattered as they moved to a whole new universe, it didn't take long for the dimension to repair itself and for Harry, Milam, and Kanu to be in a different world. Dash. Harry, Kanu, and Milim arrived right in the middle of Central City scaring a few citizens when they arrived as the air around them shattered like glass, and a few citizens turned towards the new arrivals and gaped as they saw them begin to float up. Now, these citizens were already used to all kinds of weird things happening in their city, especially when they were taken over by Piccolo Daimu years ago. But the sight of three very distinctive individuals appearing out of nowhere really caught them off guard, especially when they immediately floated up to the sky though Harry gave them all a wink and a grin as he rose up with Kanu and Milan. Once high in the sky, Harry looked around and smiled as he sensed all of his friend's energy signatures, however, he suddenly felt a massive energy signature somewhere up north what the hell is that? Both Kanu and Milan also felt the energy signatures and frowned, Milan tilted her head and hummed for a few seconds it keeps increasing, and it's already massive as it is. Kanu then narrowed her eyes it's fighting two other massive energy signatures but these feel different divinity, there are also a few more energy signatures, one is human, the other one. I don't know what that is. But there are other multiple ones that feel odd. Harry closed his eyes and began to focus, that's Koku and Vegeta. They're fighting someone really powerful. Bulma is there too? Jeez, Bulma that's dangerous. Wise as well. Now I know this is serious. And Freezer? What the hell is going on here? Harry opened his eyes and looked a bit worried for his friends, Kanoa and Milim understood why since they have heard of Freezer too and they knew how dangerous he is, but the fact that Weiss was here too made alarms go off in their heads. Harry had spoken about Weiss the angel multiple times since he had trained Harry for a while and taught him a few things before he left this world but they also know that he's even more powerful than Beerus the god of destruction of this world. He wouldn't be here if Beerus didn't allow him to be here which meant that something is going and it was big enough to have the attention of Beerus. Suddenly the massive energy exploded even higher which shocked Milam and Kanu. Harry, however, narrowed his eyes knowing that things just got more dangerous for everyone on this planet everyone gather up I'm taking us there right now. Kanu and Milam nodded and immediately floated up to Harry as the dragon god opened a dark corridor where he felt everyone's energy. He knew that both Vegeta and Goku were going to need help with whatever is going on. So the trio immediately flew through the dark corridor in hopes of being in time to help. Dash. Bulma watched as both Goku and Vegeta began to fight the bigger Saiyan together which was telling of how dear the situation got, both of them wouldn't team up against someone like that unless it was necessary and as she watched them struggle to keep up against the bigger Saiyan she began to get worried. Everything around them was destroyed. What was, once ice cold tundra was now an active volcano and the only reason she was safe was that Weiss was protecting her but things were getting quite dangerous and she was beginning to get a bit nervous about all of this. Especially when Goku and Vegeta suddenly teleported away who knows where and the giant Saiyan began to pummel Frieza, she knew that both her husband and Goku were planning something but things weren't looking good. Suddenly Frieza transformed into his golden form and began to try to fight back emphasis on try because he was still getting treated like a dirty rag but suddenly Weiss turned his head towards his side and smiled him. Well, isn't this interesting Tilda? Right beside Weiss, a very familiar pillar of darkness erupted from the ground, the sight of it brought a happy and excited smile to Bulma's face which only grew when Harry stepped out of the dark corridor with two other girls Bulma hasn't seen before. But right now she didn't care about any of that, her good friend Harry Potter was back in this world and he couldn't have arrived at a better time, Bulma suddenly launched herself towards Harry who grinned and caught her Harry you're back. Harry smiled at one of his oldest friends in this world Bulma. Always in the middle of trouble huh? Bulma rolled her eyes at Harry while the dragon god turned his head towards Weiss and gave him a grin. The angel grinned back at Harry and stared at him in silence for a few seconds before cheerfully speaking if isn't Harry and you're far more powerful than the last time I've seen you. You feel like Xeno-sama now, how curious Tilda. Harry chuckled I'll be happy to tell you everything that has happened to me during the rest of my travels Master Weiss but I think we have some other issues to deal with no? Wiz chuckled and nodded, the old angel was certainly curious about Harry right now but he did make a good point, Bulma then jumped down from Harry's arms that's right. 
we have an extremely powerful Saiyan that showed up with Frieza but he turned out to be far more powerful than expected and he even turned into a Super Saiyan. Harry moved his gaze toward the so-called unknown Saiyan and frowned as he followed his movements as he fought against Frieza he doesn't seem to be under Frieza's orders or at least not anymore. Wiz chuckled the Saiyan lost control the moment he became a Super Saiyan now he's more beast than anything. Milim began to follow the fight with a grin on her face hey Harry, can I fight one of them? Dot. Everyone turned to look towards Milim who was now bouncing from foot to foot in excitement, Bulma looked confused while Wiz who had already felt her power just smiled, Harry chuckled and then nodded leave the Saiyan to me, you take care of Frieza. Milim nodded and was very excited about having to fight someone strong. Wiz then spoke to Harry Goku and Vegeta seemed to have something planned. So all you have to do is keep the Saiyan busy for a while. Harry nodded and then turned his head towards Kanu Kanu you stay here and keep Bulma safe okay? Kanu nodded and summoned her Keyblade which surprised both Bulma and Wiz. Bulma more than anything since she knew about the Keyblades thanks to Harry and was very surprised someone else could wield one. Kanu then smiled leave Miss Bulma to me, Harry. Go and have fun. Harry smiled at Kanu, he then turned his head towards Milam and nodded at her, suddenly both took off flying at high speed towards their targets, while Bulma walked up to Kanu knowing that she can trust her because she came with Harry. Kanu smiled at Bulma so you're Miss Bulma. Harry told us a lot about you and your adventures looking for the Dragon Balls Bulma smiled remembering those days of crazy adventures with both Goku and Harry. Meanwhile, Wise focused entirely on the fight that was about to take place. Harry wasn't the same young man he met a while ago, no he had become something akin to Zeno-sama, perhaps not on the same level but he seemed to be catching up to him. So he was very interested to see just how powerful Harry has become and what sort of surprise he might hold now he sure is full of surprises after all. Dash. Broly was about to slap the gold annoyance that got in his way out of the way but suddenly a pink blur crashed against it and took him far away from him, Broly of course, was a bit confused as to what happened but suddenly somebody blurred right in front of him. Broly barely had time to lean his head away from a kick this new opponent just lashed out at him, but the black haired guy suddenly spun at high speed in midair and suddenly lashed out with a back kick that hit him on the chest sending him flying and crashing against a mountain of molten rock. Harry looked down and soon enough the unknown Saiyan suddenly shot out of the mountain he just sent him crashing against and headed his way while being engulfed in a greenish aura, as soon as the Saiyan reached him he began to lash out at Harry with a multitude of punches. Harry blocked and dodged them but he growled as he began to feel some pain in his arms, shit. No wonder Vegeta and Goku were having a hard time. This guy is adapting and getting stronger by the second. But. It still isn't enough. Harry dodged a kick by flying down and then pointed his hands toward the Saiyan Ha. Harry roared as he began to shoot a multitude of kid blasts at the Saiyan from below. The Saiyan didn't expect such a counter and was barraged by Harry's rain of kid blast from below him. Harry then suddenly stopped and whipped his hand back and began to charge an enormous amount of kin into his hand that began to lash out with arcs of lightning. The Saiyan suddenly rushed down towards Harry and roared as he tried to punch Harry but the dragon god disappeared in a flash of twilight and reappeared behind the Saiyan let's see if you can tank this. Light grenade. Harry waved his arms then pointed his hands towards the Saiyan's back and blasted his technique right onto his spine, a massive explosion engulfed the Saiyan and sent him flying back screaming in both rage and pain. Harry immediately raised a hand up and then black clouds above him began to gather, crackle, and boom with lightning and thunder. Harry used chakra and mixed it with his ki and then whipped his hand down towards the Saiyan who roared towards him in rage begone with the thunderclap. Kyrin. A massive dragon of lightning chakra and ki suddenly roared and shot down from the black clouds. The chakra construct crashed against the Saiyan who howled in pain and he found himself trapped inside the lightning chakra and ki dragon until it exploded in a giant pillar of lightning and plasma. Dash. Bulma gasped in shock and surprise while Kanu raised her keyblade and raised a barrier to protect Bulma from the lightning storm created by Harry's techniques detonating. Weiss, however, grinned amazing, such power and control. For a second there I sense him mix two sources of energy and take control of the forces of nature themselves. Kanu giggles you sound like Harry couldn't already do this when he was in this world Mr. Weiss. Wiz chuckled my dear child, Harry was capable of many amazing things back when he was in this world but the speed and skill he's showing right now not only with his techniques but the movement has vastly improved, that lightning dragon technique he just used would have taken him charging it up for a few seconds maybe a minute before but now? Now it was almost instant. Weiss grinned excitedly and Kanu pondered at everything Weiss just told her, 
it seems that Harry still wasn't at his peak when he was in this world which means sometime later he was able to go even further beyond in both power level and skill. Wise then smiled as he saw Harry prepare another technique knowing that the Saiyan wasn't even close to being done and it seems that he's more cautious as well, powerful and cautious. My what a terrifying combination, though. I wonder if he has mastered what I taught him yet? Now that made Kanu very curious since even when Harry had arrived at Kyoto he had been training to master a certain type of technique meant to help him face even the gods of destruction of this world. He had hinted at his super secret training and had been trying to master whatever it was for a few years now, but he had never revealed what it was and it seems like Mr. Weiss knew about it, and as Harry blasted a massive red kid ball at the Saiyan that seemed okay even after tanking Harry's Chiron to the face, Kanu couldn't help but wonder what sort of technique an angel like Mr. Weiss has taught Harry. Chapter 120, Chapter 120 Freezer was completely and utterly shocked at just how powerful young Broly is and even though right now he faced him in his golden form he was still overwhelming him by a large margin. A surprise since even those two monkeys Goku and Vegeta had a bit of a hard time the first time he unleashed his golden form. But Broly was beating him senseless so easily that it was getting ridiculous and so Freezer was losing his patience and was about to explode in rage when he was suddenly tackled by a pink blur that not only pushed the air out his lungs but made him feel quite a bit of pain as well. He couldn't even do anything when he was suddenly thrown off by the pink blur and sent flying towards the ground, but he twirled in mid-air and landed on his feet before he could crash against the ground. He then glared up towards the sky and saw who was the insolent mongrel who had manhandled him. A petty pink-haired girl floated up at the sky with a cocky smirk on her face as she looked down at him. The girl then suddenly spoke so you're Freezer. I heard quite a bit of you from Harry but honestly? You're not that impressive. I wonder why Harry is so cautious of you? Freezer's eyes widen in rage, not only is this girl speaking to him like he was nothing short of a hindrance but she had mentioned that damn lizard as well, Harry? The hairy lizard is here? I see, so he must be back from his so-called travels, that's perfect. Now I have the chance to pay him back for all the humiliation I have suffered at his hand. Milam raised an eyebrow and tilted her head you weren't a match against him and Goku on Namek and you weren't one when you came back to life, what makes you think you can beat him now? especially when he's hundreds of times more powerful than he was when he last was here. Freezer gaped at the words that this girl just spoke, that damn lizard got even stronger? How? How does he keep getting stronger and stronger? It makes no sense. That growth is unnatural. Milim suddenly grinned at Freezer besides you shouldn't worry about Harry, it's me you should worry about. I'm not very good at holding back and all my toys always get broken but I hope you will at least last a bit. Milim then roared and her body exploded with a pink aura. Freezer widened his eyes in surprise but then Milam disappeared and appeared right in front of Freezer shocking him first. Milam grinned and then got ready to punch Freezer my name is Milam Nava, one of Harry's girlfriends and a true demon lord. Do try to last some time Freezer. Freezer barely had time to react and block a punch from Milam but he soon regretted it as he felt the bones on his arms vibrate from the blow, but he didn't get any chance to even absorb that information as he was forced to suddenly block and dodge a barrage of blows from Milam. Meanwhile, Milim was excited, Freezer didn't die from her punch in one blow in fact he was dodging and blocking most of her attacks and that doesn't happen often. She now knew why Harry was cautious of Freezer, he's not a pushover and is as tenacious as herself and so for the first time in a while Milim was excited about a fight. That was bad news for Freezer, who was struggling to block and dodge Milim's attacks but what was really getting on his nerves is that she was smiling and laughing like she was having the time of her life. Dash. Broly roared towards the person who had attacked him so powerfully and watched as he created a massive orb of kick. The power behind that attack had the hairs on Broly's body stand up and he knew what was coming was going to be big so he got ready. Harry watched as Broly began to charge up his kin response to his attack, I see. He's not completely out of control, there's a bit of consciousness in his mind. The way he adapts and learns is impressive as well, but what kind of Saiyan is he? Harry had used his Renegon and his Observe skill on Broly the moment he felt his attack hurt even a bit. He learned all his information as he watched as his stats continued to increase as time went on along with the amount of ki he had which has been increasing as well. It was perplexing to Harry who had only seen this sort of thing in some of the most powerful beings he has battled before. It's not only that. It's like he's in a constant loop of increasing and healing as well. It's like he's constantly receiving Zenkai boosts for just surviving the influx of his own power. Throughout his fight with Broly, he watched as he healed and got stronger by the second, it was like the Saiyan genes in Broly were tailored towards battle and survival, it's like he was born to be nothing but a beast. 
Harry frowned at this and even more so when he learned everything Broly had gone through thanks to his observe skill, the abuse from his father, the betrayal of King Vegeta, and the years he spent surviving in that desolate and dangerous planet he called home. It made Harry understand one thing and that was that Broly wasn't a bad guy but just the result of circumstance and bad people seeking to control something that was way out of their ability to control, it was all very sad to Harry. But it also brought about a bit of excitement in him since Broly could pose a fight against him in his base form, and that's saying quite a lot since not many can boast to be able to do the same. So with a smile on his face, Harry waved his hand toward Broly. The massive orb of ki he had formed above him suddenly began to spin and shot a multitude of smaller orbs of kit toward Broly. Broly in response roared and shot off towards Harry engulfed in his green ki while tanking the orbs of ki raining down on him, this caused Harry to chuckle in amusement and as soon as Broly appeared in front of Harry he caught one of his punches with one hand you're certainly strong Broly and quite talented in battle. Broly growled and began to violently pull on his hand to try and set it free from Harry's grasp but the dragon god just smiled and continued speaking it's been a while since I felt pain, especially since my scales are very strong but I felt that punch. So how about we have a little fun while we wait for Vegeta and Goku to arrive. Broly despite being out of control calmed down a little bit hearing Harry's tone of voice and Harry seeing he had relaxed he let him go, he then nodded I know Broly. What it feels to be alone and being treated as a freak. I know how it feels to be mistreated by family when instead you should be protected and cared for. I know how it feels to have that beast inside you roar and flail about wanting to be free, so, let it free, show me what you got and let's have some fun. Broly stayed in the air and stared into Harry's eyes for a few moments in silence, he didn't understand why or how but Harry's voice was reaching him from deep within his mind and he understood that Harry was like him. Dash. Wise chuckled as he watched Harry connect to another person on a deep level, it was something unique to Harry something that perplexed him quite a bit, Harry has always been a very unique existence his growth, his power, and his ability to connect to others. At first it might not seem important but even Lord Beerus has been affected by Harry's ability to connect to others. It's a power that not only makes him stronger but also those he connects to. Wise turned his head towards where the pink-haired girl was beating Frieza left and right with a fun-filled smile on her face. He then moved his gaze towards the girl with animal features who was watching Harry fight with a big smile on her face. These two are also connected to Harry and both of them could give Lord Beerus a run for his money. Fufafu just what have you been doing all of this time Harry? Wise closed his eyes with a smile on his face as he reminisced about the time Harry participated in the tournament of power, back then Harry wasn't this powerful or skillful and he hadn't become a god yet. That was another surprise to Wise as well, Harry had become a god, a true god that is not like the Super Saiyan god both Vegeta and Goku have mastered. No Harry had become a god with control over various concepts and that was impressive in itself, sure he had the seeds of divinity back then but he and Beerus never thought he would actually become a god, but then again Harry Potter is just full of surprises. He even somehow become a Saiyan too. Dash. Broly stared at Harry and growled before nodding letting Harry know that he heard him, Harry smiled and watched as Broly roared and powered up once again. Meanwhile, Harry was also watching what Vegeta and Goku were doing with a monitoring spell. He watched as both argued and then eventually danced around and fused into a fat fusion of themselves, fusion huh? Makes me curious what the result will be, both Trunks and Goten are extremely powerful when they both fuse after all. Harry nodded and then grinned at Broly we have at least one hour before my friends come here to join in on the fun Broly, so let's make it count. Broly in response only roared and then shot forward towards Harry who yelled and engulfed his body in a green and black aura and received Broly's barrage of attacks with his own. Every blow sent shockwaves everywhere further destroying the area and causing everyone in the area to stare up in surprise at the sheer destruction caused by just both Harry and Broly clashing against each other, both Kanu and Milam smiled as they watched Harry fight with a smile on his face. Despite his peaceful nature and the fact that he was an inventor and a creator didn't change the fact that, Harry enjoyed a good fight and it showed right now with how happy he seemed to be fighting against Broly. Dash. Frieza stared towards Harry in shock and anger as he watched him fight Broly and match him blow for blow, something he was unable to do even in his golden form how? How does he keep getting so strong? It makes no sense. Milim turned her head away from Harry's fight and giggle wouldn't you like to know? Frieza growled at Milim who just shrugged I'm afraid that Harry's source of power is a secret to everyone who isn't family or friends, besides you knowing that information wouldn't change a thing, after all you will never catch up Harry. Frieza glared at Milam in pure unadulterated rage as his body exploded and engulfed itself with a golden aura, Milam just smirked oops. 
I just pushed the Harry button huh? Frieza roared and then shot himself toward Milim and tried to hit her but no matter how hard he tried he couldn't touch her, that only served to feed his rage further. Milim easily dodged all of Frieza's attacks wow. You are really prone to getting very angry but that just makes you sloppy. Milim suddenly dodged a punch to her face and twirled around Frieza's arm. Frieza's eyes widened in shock and couldn't do anything but receive a chop to the neck by Milim that sent him flying back. Milim then shot forward and followed Frieza's flailing body and appeared in front of his flying trajectory. She then lashed out an elbow that struck Frieza on his spine making him scream in pain. Milim then swung around and back heeled Frieza in the ribs sending him crashing down towards the ground. Milim then pointed an open palm toward Frieza while her body was engulfed in a pink aura as she began to charge her next attack let's try this one. Grand Ray Zero. A massive beam of black and pink energy shot forward from Milim's hand and raced towards the still recovering Frieza. The frost alien only had time to widen his eyes in both surprise and shock as he was blasted by Milim's spiritual and chemixed Grand Ray Zero. Dash. Bulma screamed from within Kanu's barrier as a massive explosion and boom shook the planet, Wise however smiled oh oh ho. How marvelous. What sort of strange and unique technique is that? I believe I've seen Harry use it before but I've never thought to ask about it. This one was mixed with Kay and something else though, Tilda. Kanu smiled and answered Wise's question that was a grand ray zero and it's using the power within the negative side of the soul to bring about a massive beam of destruction, normally it wouldn't have much effect on powerful living beings but by mixing it with Kay, well, you saw the result. Wise nodded and smiled interesting so that energy I felt before is the power of the soul. Yes it is quite powerful but it didn't have much effect when Harry used it in the tournament of power, why didn't he mix it with Kay then? Kanu shook her head perhaps he couldn't do that yet or since it's Harry who is using it, it might have been far more powerful than necessary so maybe he held back as well, you know about his title right? Weiss nodded the master of death was it? Kanu nodded yes that's right, the title makes spiritual type techniques and attacks extremely powerful, plus with Harry, it actually damages the soul so maybe he didn't want to hurt anyone like that. Weiss hummed I see. So he was limiting his skill set so as to not kill anyone, it's true that the tournament of power had limits placed upon the participants so that might have forced Harry to hold back quite a bit. Extraordinary, to think that he might have been holding back even then. Wise chuckled in amusement, Harry was a menace in the tournament of power and that earned him the respect and fear of the contestants but to think that even then he was holding back because of the rules set by Zeno Sama, now I'm even more curious than ever to the extent of your power Harry. Dash. Milam looked down towards Frieza and watched as his golden form dissipated and he became white in color as he laid there on the ground injured and unconscious. Milam huffed and crossed her arms so much for the Emperor of the Universe. Then again he was beaten around by that big guy for a while before we arrived. Milam turned her head towards where Harry and the big Saiyan were fighting at full force or at last Brolias and smiled as she watched her boyfriend smirk as he dodged a punch and retaliate with one of his own towards Broly's body only for the big Saiyan to block it with a knee and then try to grab Harry by the head. Milim grinned while she watched Harry disappear as a blur only to appear behind the big Saiyan who disappeared and reappeared in a blur beside Harry, both fighters then began to do that non-stop looking for an opening wow. That big guy's catching up to Harry in his current level of power. Not bad Tilda. Dash. Harry blurred out of the way from a kick only for his eyes to widen when Broly suddenly waved an arm at him where he had reappeared and blasted a kiss shock wave towards him. Harry covered his body with his arms and the energy shock wave crashed against him and exploded. Broly shot off towards Harry immediately and punched towards him while he was covering his body with his arms. Harry growled and moved to the side and whirled around Broly. He suddenly jumped back and then shot forward toward Broly and hit him with a high kick to the head, but Broly caught it and began to whip Harry around while dropping from the sky towards the ground at high speed. Intending to slam Harry onto the ground Broly roared and whipped him towards the ground while Harry growled, suddenly Harry's body exploded in smoke and Broly found himself slamming a log onto the ground which confused him. But Harry didn't give him any chance to even ponder what had happened and appeared behind Broly and jumped while twisting his entire body in midair. Broly didn't notice until he was struck in the back of the head by a spinning knee which made the big Saiyan lurch forwards while grunting in pain. Harry cupped his hands and suddenly roared came a mere. Harry shot his cupped hands forward directly on Broly's opened back and blasted him with a massive blue beam of ki that dragged him away from the dragon god screaming in pain. But Broly suddenly roared and engulfed his body in a shroud of green ki that caused Harry's blue beam of ki to explode, Harry chuckled finding Broly's stubbornness amusing well, you're certainly tenacious. 
Broly suddenly appeared in front of Harry engulfed in green key and launched a barrage of punches forcing Harry to backpedal and dodge them all. Harry's green eyes suddenly glowed as he pointed his opened hands towards Broly Shinra Tensei. Broly was caught off guard by the sudden and violent force and was pushed back a bit but the big Saiyan suddenly smashed his hand on the ground and stopped himself from being pushed away. Harry grinned you stopped that with only brute force, pretty cool Broly actually grinned a bit and suddenly shot forward on all fours while Harry continued to try and sent him flying with his Shinra Tensei but Broly eventually caught up to Harry forcing him to stop his technique in favor of dodging a kick to the chest. But Broly immediately moved forward and lashed out an elbow towards Harry which caught him in the chest causing him to grunt, he suddenly roared and pointed both open hands towards Broly Ha. Broly found himself right in front of a barrage of ki blasts. the ki blasts crashed and violently exploded all over Broly's body causing him to grunt in pain. Meanwhile, Harry took a big breath and suddenly belched the stream of red hot flames that engulfed Broly's body. Broly roared as he felt the flames of Harry's fire breathing begin to burn his skin, it said a lot that magma didn't bother Broly but Harry's flames were actually beginning to burn him. Broly not wanting to burn into ash suddenly took off flying away from Harry and the flames. Harry followed him with his fire breath for a bit before stopping and staring at Broly who continued to fly forward. Dash. Kanu smiled and shook her head even though Harry is holding back he seems to be having a lot of fun, I think this is the first time I've seen him get damage too. Too bad his healing factor is healing everything that big guy is dishing out so fast. Bummer Harry is holding back? Just how strong did he become? He was already pretty strong and could fight and beat both Vegeta and Goku but you make it sound like he's not even trying now. Kanu smiled at Bummer it's because he isn't trying right now, the fact that he hasn't taken on another form or powered up is a big sign he's not going all out, in fact, I'm sure he's just having fun. Bummer nodded and stared at Harry, she still remembers when she met him so long ago along with Goku in Mount Bozu. According to Goku Harry someday just suddenly appeared sometime after his grandpa died and stayed with him to take care of him and train, it was later during their adventures to find the Dragon Balls that she and Goku learned about who and what he was. At the time he was just a dragon lord who was going around different worlds learning and growing stronger, Goku of course accepted it right away and was happy to learn from Harry. Her though, she was flabbergasted at what Harry had said, his existence proved the multiverse theory, and that just tickled her scientist brain. She did a lot of tests with Harry after they finished their first adventure and while Goku and he were training with Master Roshi he would sometimes come to visit her, from all those tests she found a lot of new things. She learned about other sources of energy, about supernatural physiology, and what it meant to be a dragon for Harry, over time he became a good friend and one that always visited her and her family something Goku wasn't good at. But even though Harry liked to train and get stronger he also liked spending time with his friends and loved ones, the fact that he always took time to check on her and their other friends is proof of that, plus he was also very smart and liked to learn from her and her father. Now that same powerful and intelligent boy she met had become something beyond whatever she had predicted, she can feel it in her bones after all. She knew that Harry had become something extraordinary and she couldn't wait to hear all about what he's been up to in his travels. Dash. Broly suddenly roared loudly and then pointed an open hand towards Harry and shot forward a massive orb of green ki towards him. Harry widened his eyes a bit and frowned at the massive orb of ki huh? So I can't dodge because this would blow up the planet. Pretty smart but unfortunately for you, this tactic doesn't work on someone like me. Harry waved his arm in front of him and opened a massive portal using his control over space and then opened another one in front of Broly who could only widen his eyes in shock before being blasted by his own massive orb of ki that exploded soon after, shaking the planet from the force of the blast. Dash. Weiss raised an eyebrow and tilted his head how peculiar, to be able to rip space itself in two places simultaneously and so fast. So he really became a god. Weiss watched as the explosion subsided and Broly seemed a bit shaken by what had happened, and Weiss could understand why, having your attack flung back at you so fast and so easily is disturbing enough as it is. But the fact that Broly actually felt that must have brought some apprehension in his heart as well, lucky for him it seems both Goku and Vegeta are finally done with what they're doing. Weiss smiled knowing that Harry can now tag out since Vegeta and Goku were ready and he hoped that he can now answer a few questions. Dash. Harry looked up at Broly and smiled but he suddenly felt a new kiss signature that made him sigh he then teleported right in front of Broly and grinned looks like we're done playing for now big guy but don't worry, someone else will play with you now. At that moment a new individual teleported right beside Harry and gazed at him from his side. He then smirked at Harry well if it isn't Harry, it is nice to see you but do you mind if I cut in? 
This guy and I have some unfinished business to deal with. Harry chuckled so you did fuse huh? What's your name then? The new individual pointed a thumb towards his chest and with a grin, he stated his name I'm Gigata. Harry nodded and then smiled alright Gigata, go have your turn. Let's see what you can do. Gigata nodded and Harry teleported away from the area, the Saiyan fusion turned towards Broly and smiled sorry to keep you waiting, but let's have some fun now. Broly now that Harry was gone roared and engulfed his body with his green key and launched himself towards Gigeta ready to fight once again, Gigeta smirked and launched himself towards Broly to fight him with everything he has. Dash. Harry teleported right beside Kanu and soon after Milim arrived as well as both Gigeta and Broly began to fight at full force, Milim jumped on Harry's back and laughed looks like you had some fun Harry. Harry chuckled and nodded definitely. It's been a while since I had a fight like that Harry raised his hands up to his face and grinned if I had fought Broly back when I was here I would have lost. He's stronger than Jiren. Wise chuckled you're right Harry, it's a good thing you've gotten stronger and wiser as well to have noticed that Harry looked over at twice and nodded. Bummer smiled as she watched Gigata fight against Broly R. Ah, they did a fusion. Wise tilted his head fusion. Harry was the one who decided to answer Weiss's question while Bummer was distracted by watching the fight Yates a technique where two individuals fuse together to create a being far more powerful than the originals individually, the downside is that it only lasts an hour. Weiss hummed as he looked towards the fight and watched as Gigatu and Broly flew all over the place while raiding powerful blows against each other so like the Potara earrings I see, how marvelous. Harry nodded and then sighed so can anyone explain what happened here, and where Broly even came from. Plus what is Frieza even doing here? Suddenly Gigatu and Broly crashed against the ground and began to fight underground and inside a giant pool of magma, Harry was using his Rinnegan to keep a close eye on the fight while he spoke with everyone. Bumman unable to see the fight anymore decided to answer Harry's questions well apparently Frieza had a few of his goons steal the Dragon Balls from my lab, we don't know why though but when we found said goons Frieza appeared here and he brought that big Saiyan and an old one with him. Harry nodded and was a bit worried about the fact that Frieza came looking for the Dragon Balls, I'm going to have to do something about that. Bulma continued while the ground shook from the fight going on underground, suddenly Harry felt something shatter reality but decided to actively begin to fix it while Bulma spoke we still have to get the Dragon Balls back, Frieza's men still have them. Harry turned his head towards Kanu and Milam do you girls mind looking for them? There these orange orbs these stars inside them, there's seven of them too. Milim and Kanu smiled and nodded, soon after both took off flying while Harry began to protect Bulma now that Kanu left don't worry, the girls will find them soon but why did you have the dragon balls Bulma? Bulma blushed and stuttered a bit uh. But Weiss chuckled and answered the question instead of Bulma apparently Miss Bulma, has been collecting the dragon balls on and off to wish for a few years off of her so she could look younger and of course, just in case they're needed. Harry deadpanned at Bulma which made her blush crimson red. Bulma couldn't take it and exploded you don't understand Harry. It's hard to be the wife of a Saiyan, when they don't age. I have to do something to keep you ouch. Bulma grabbed her forehead after Harry flicked her out of her rant and glared at him while Harry just continued to deadpan Bulma, you can't just use the Dragon Balls for something like that, what's wrong with you? Bulma slumped defeated and looked down making Harry shake his head and sigh, Bulma then looked up at Harry sorry Harry. Harry just chuckled and nodded you haven't changed one bit Bulma, still the crazy and short fused woman as ever but don't worry I can actually grant you eternal youth, so please stop using the dragon balls for things like that okay? Bulma's eyes sparkled while she nodded vigorously while Weiss chuckled, suddenly the air cracked above them like glass, and both Broly and Gigeta appeared in the sky still fighting. This time however Gigeta seemed to have turned into Super Saiyan God Blue and was beating Broly around now. Harry looked up and watched as Gigeta blasted Broly with a few interesting kit techniques. Dash. Meanwhile, both Kanu and Milam arrived where Frieza's ship was located. They followed the energy signatures from the beings inside to find it and wasted no time in blasting themselves into the ship to look for the Dragon Balls. Of course, Frieza's men attacked them and tried to kill them but they were no match for the true demon lord and the nine-tailed fox, both took out and killed many of Frieza's men and eventually found two aliens running with the Dragon Balls. A female alien, with white hair and green skin, stopped and pointed her gun at the girls who just stared at them, her partner who was behind her and holding the dragon balls also stopped and glared at the girls. But both Kanu and Milam just smiled, Kanu then spoke up I'm going to have to ask you to hand over those dragon balls, they don't belong to Frieza or you both for that matter. The green skin female alien shook her head and glare at both girls no way. 
we have to help Broly before he gets killed fighting that other guy out there. The green-skinned alien suddenly shot her weapon and fired a laser at Kanu but the nine-tailed fox summoned her keyblade and easily blocked the laser. The green-skinned female alien growled seeing her weapon be useless against her. Mill and grinned look, you both don't seem like bad guys, or at least not like the other guys we found in here so just hand over the dragon bulls and we won't hurt you okay? The green-skinned female alien frowned, looked down, and began to tear up. The other alien beside her looked at her worriedly Chi Lai. The now revealed Chi Lai shook her head Lemo we have to help Broly. Both Milam and Kanu turned their head towards each other and stared into each other's eyes for a few seconds. Milam shrugged letting Kanu know that she didn't care what happens and that she could do whatever she wanted. Kanu smiled and then turned her head towards Chi Lai and Lemo look maybe we can help you. I'm sure we can help Broly if only because my boyfriend had fun with him, so how about you come with us and we can do something about all this okay? Usually, Chi Lai wouldn't trust someone she just met especially when said person seemed to be very dangerous, but right now she just wanted to help Broly so she nodded. Lemo walked up to Kanu and handed over the Dragon Balls, Kanu then put them within her fluffy tails for safekeeping and then teleported everyone back to Harry. Dash. As the fight between Broly and Gigeta continued to escalate, Harry took advantage to learn a few key attacks and fighting techniques from both fighters, Gigeta then began to blast Broly with a massive key blast which shook the area and unleashed a massive shock wave. Wise smiled and stared at the explosion intently wonderful. Harry nodded in agreement, that technique was very powerful and he knew that even he would have felt it. Suddenly Kanu and Milam teleported back to them with two new additions, Harry raised an eyebrow as he watched the aliens panic as soon as they saw him. The female alien even pointed a finger at him you're the one Broly had a hard time fighting. The other alien glared but seemed more afraid than anything. Harry turned his head towards Kanu who just smiled and began to explain I didn't feel any darkness in their hearts so I knew they weren't bad guys like the others we found in Freezer's ship, they want to help Broly so I decided to bring them to you and see if you can and want to give them a hand tilde. Harry smiled at Kanu and then turned towards the female alien alright, mind telling me your names? And so both Chi Lai and Lemo would soon get to know a dragon god, one that will change both theirs and Broly's life for the better in the future.